From the studios of WFAN, this is Mike Zahn, Francesca on the fan on this. Uh, rather chilly. I mean, it's almost like uh, November today. Uh, May Day, the 16th day of May. And as we uh, told you for a long time, uh, a special guest. I don't think I don't think anybody's ever spent, other than Dog, or the people who we ran through the first couple of weeks after Dog left, who were, which was a big mistake on my part to even think I was going to have a, a co-host. But I don't think anybody else has ever sat in for five and a half hours. But wow. uh, I don't. I really don't. Uh, over all these years, I can't. I was trying to think of someone. Today we were talking about it on the way in, and I don't think so. So Bill Simmons is with me. Bill, welcome. How are you? What an honor. That's it. You get here for the whole day today. So five and a half hours on a day where I get up this morning and showing what a master of this uh, universe you are. The first thing I wake up to is Mons calling me and saying, HBO announced the show this morning. Here's the dates. And I said, <laughs> oh, all right. Simmons is on a tour today. So he, yeah, he stopped by. No, this is not a tour. Yeah, I uh, I just I wanted to come back. I promised you we we agreed yeah. we were going to do this, yep. and I had a chance to also do Howard Stern this morning. That's not so. Bad. This is the not first ever Stern full time five hours with Francesa Daily. Do I made there history. You go. How good is it's that? It's like hitting four homers in well, one game. Yeah, that's that except is... for the New York New York icons. Hey. Uh, this is great. Thanks for having me. My pleasure. And tell me, uh, ja it was it June twenty second? Is that the date? June twenty second. Right. HBO Wednesday night. Any given Wednesday. So what's the deal? What, tell me. Yeah. What the show us half hour right um very conversational gonna have uh two long conversations and then some other bells and whistles anybody but you, with you or are you just by yourself no by myself that's it yeah. and you're just gonna have do interviews yeah but but be geared to but stuff, not geared like to a topics. whole interview show no it's right. gonna be a big chunk of it but i like talking to people so you know? you're gonna do is it gonna be topics is it gonna be hard hitting is it gonna be more light what is it gonna be I think it's going to be all three of those things. So it's I, going to be stream of consciousness, whatever's in the, wherever you're in the movie. Yeah, for. I mean, okay. we're, the way we're booking the guests, we want to put people together that are on for a reason. I think one mistake some of these shows make is they just book people and they throw them together, and there's no reason for them to be together. So I think with this show, one of the things we're going to try to do is, if people are there and it's two celebrities, well, why are they there? What are we going to talk about? What's, so. What do you want to what, what do? You want to, You could have pretty much done anything you wanted. What did you want to do? What do you want to do with the show? I mean, what's the, what's the thing that you say, this is what my plan is? This is my vision for the show? Well, one thing for me, just trying to figure out what I was going to do after ESPN, I, I'd become more and more intrigued by TV just because there's so many people online. Like, I've had my columns since 1997. And there's so many people who write blogs and write columns and write features and are on Twitter and have podcasts and things like that, that there's just a lot of noise right now. And it, it was becoming harder and harder and harder to stand out. And with TV, TV's always going to matter, you know, and so few people have a chance to have an HBO show. They've only had, I think, Bill Maher. Right. John Oliver and then the uh, the aborted Joe Buck show. Those I think were the only three yeah. talk shows. They were smart to abort it. I mean, that was awful. <laughs> that was the worst thing I ever saw. Wait, you told me you don't watch Game of Thrones. I don't. You know what? I, I would have loved to have heard you talk no. about the dragons I and Khaleesi you know last night. First of all, I don't love gore. And the day the blonde was eating the heart, I was done. I that had to watch out? that show, okay? <laughs> and I said, this is disgusting. I mean, I don't like bloody stuff. It's not my thing. I don't watch monster movies. I don't watch horror movies. If so it, you're out on Goodfellas and the, and the oh, Godfather ones oh, of that? No, that's, that's, no, that's, that's So you classic. only like gore with, it, with no, that's Italian not gore. movies? No, but that, listen, Sonny at the, uh, Sonny at the toll booth is not gore. I mean, you can live with that. You got shot 175 that's times. Right. But I mean, uh, 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 you know, but cutting people open and, oh, you know, you the cat Capitations and eating somebody's heart. I mean, that, that I can't. But Goodfellas yeah. had a couple, that, that, listen, couple tough scenes. It, it did, but I, 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 the great Goodfellas was great. I mean, that was great. But listen, I can get around that stuff. But I don't like bloody stuff, and I don't like horror stuff and stuff like that. But no, I love those stuff. I love w that. Wait stuff. a second. Speaking of the Godfather, yes. Have you watched the Godfather saga yeah, on HBO you know, with the, the deleted scenes, scenes that and are everything? In there? That's great. It is unbelievable. It's great. I happened to catch it one night and realize it because what happens with the Godfather is the same thing all the time. Yeah, you see it's on, and you say, "I right, uh, just watched this scene," and then it's three hours later, and you haven't moved. Yeah. And it doesn't matter if you've seen it. Eight, like my wife will say to me, "You've seen it eight hundred yeah. times." And I say, "I don't. Yeah. It's still better." Apollonia's going to get in the car. She's going to die. It's going to blow up. It's still better than. It doesn't matter if you can recite the lines. It's still better the next time you watch it. That's what's so great about it. I mean, you can watch it that many times, and you can watch Gone with the Wind the same way because it's that good. I mean, it's just that well done. I mean, so. But there's so little that's well done now. And 
I've seen some good stuff. Like, I think The Affair is really good. I think that show is good. I love that you watch The Affair. I like that show. It's a it's good, good one. I thought it got better and better. I almost junked it after like four shows. I was almost done with it. And I stayed with it. And I stayed with it because of my wife. But now the show's great. I think the show got so much better the last couple of years. It just got better and better. Billions I watched. Okay, now those are good actors. Giamatti's great. I mean, yeah. they're good actors. The guy who played in Homeland, I don't know his name, but the guy from Homeland who, you know, Damon was, Lewis. Yeah, he's good. He's yeah. really good. Now he has the accents down pretty good. He Axe. even did a good job. Yeah, acts. But I thought the show could have been so much better. It was, it was too cliched. It was just too predictable about the way we perceive or the way, and I know the, the we know the guy, I, I watch CNN all, uh, all the time. So, you know, I watch C, I mean, CNBC all the time. So I know who he is and I watch him. So I know the whole deal, but I just thought it could have been so much better than it was. I thought it had the chance to be really smart and really great. I thought they left a lot where it was just too cliched, way too cliched. I'm pro yeah. billions and the guys who wrote billions did the Jimmy Connors 30 for 30 that I know you've seen. Uh, and they yes. did rounders, and they've done a whole oh, bunch of stuff. Oh, I like rounders. Stuff. Yeah, I yeah. rounders is great. So those are the same the, guys. The, hey, the, the card scene at rounders is unbelievable. Rounders I mean, is one, another one like The Godfather. It's, it's just rewatchable. Yeah, it's you like, see, all right, yeah. I'll and watch people don't know minutes. rounders, but the scene. With Malkovich, when he goes back and plays Alligator Bud, it's, uh, with the with the Oreos, yeah, is, uh, is unbelievable. <laughs> I mean, that is a great, great. Although scene. the more I watch Rounders, and I've probably watched it over a hundred times. How good of a poker player could you be if your tell is it, I eat the Oreo if I have a good hand and if I don't I don't eat the Oreo and he thinks he's a great player you know yeah, yeah. so it didn't matter you know he's KGB he's got enough money so it didn't matter but the bottom line is you know there he is he's got his tell and I mean it's uh, that but it was you great. know Rounders two is coming is that true they're working same on guys it. I think they're working on it and it's, they get Norton and they get him in there and Damon it's too it's at least Damon. And Not I, Norton, they need Norton though. He's such a he's such a I think screw Norton up. might have. You could go either way with Norton. Either it comes back or you just say I he like got him killed. though. You could say you could kill him off for, for sure. You could kill him off. I mean that that, that goes without that saying. That movie did pretty much more for the poker boom than anything other than the cameras under the cards. And listen, so I'm I not know, a, I didn't know Holden Poker until I saw that movie. I, listen, I and I know a lot about gambling. I'm not a I am not a poker player. I've never been a card player. I'm not a card player. Never was. But I'm uh, still fascinated by that. That movie was just great on a lot of levels. I mean, Totoro's character Totoro. was so great. I mean, he was so he was so Kanish. afraid to play. He, that's it. He's so afraid. He was right about Kanish. He was afraid to ante up. I mean, he grinding he just, at his hands. That's it. I mean, it like, was, he was the Jeff Fisher of, of absolutely. card players. Absolutely. That's it. At that's the it. Eight, eight eight seven and nine every year, and happy to do it. I get a check. That's it. I get it. I don't need to play off. I'm seven and don't nine. Don't fire me. I'm that's it. Five hundred every absolutely. year. So that that is a. See that's that movie I could watch. Matter of fact, I saw Rounders last week. It was on. It's on all the time lately. Yeah, yeah. I always get sucked in. That that is very good. So I agree on Bill. I I, I love the fa the affair. So you Homeland the affair. I love, except Homeland's gone really up and down. So you're pro Showtime. Years. It sounds yeah. like. Maybe well, no, I, I mean, leave. no, I like some of those shows. No, listen. Yeah, it, it bothers hey, listen, me that you don't I watch like Thrones. HBO. Which Thrones is the most important show. right Veep now. is funny. Veep is the best Veep comedy is funny. right now. Veep is laugh out loud funny. When she had the zit on her face, how funny was that? How about she, Silicon Valley? And I never watched that. No? I didn't, didn't get into it. But Veep I watched. I, I love political stuff, too. You know, I'm a big political guy. So you so. like political stuff yes. and shows about people and having an affair in the Hamptons. And gangsters. And gangsters. I love my, I love the Godfather movies. Any Godfather movies. Any I've seen every you know movie. Every every you know any one of those I've seen. Well, you know, I'm, I'm half Italian. My mom's whole right. side is Italian. Right. And I don't think people who aren't Italian realize how much the Godfather movies, Goodfellas, and The Sopranos resonate with the entire Italian American community. And just there hasn't been anything like that since The Sopranos that I feel well, like. Well, The Sopranos just, but, and was, Bronx Tale. I'm going to throw in The too. Sopranos was so good, and Chaz obviously is a, a big listener, and Totoro's a big listener too. Bronx Tale, you yeah. put in that group, absolutely. right? Like I totally, hundred percent. And right. how many movies have seen Chaz in anyway? We've seen Chaz in every, yeah, everything. Yeah. I mean, and it, but the point is. You know, Gandolfini was one of, I, I was a, I admit, I was a Sopranos groupie. I mean, I was, I started with it the first day, I got dog into it. He wasn't in it at the beginning, I got Couple, dog into it. Some tiny yeah. Tony Soprano parallels with you uh, dominated I don't know the about New York, that. you I don't dominated know. the New York but sports you know what? media scene. He, we actually, dog and I actually went down there. To the to set? Watch, yes. We went down there, so we talked to the people and we knew a couple people who were part of the crew. And we were at, our place in Astoria, 
so you know when dogs when we came to New York is about the same time when Mike and Mayor broke up at the same exact time. Okay, so tragic, we've been here eight years. We've been here eight years. So yeah. we, we, we we it was rumored we were coming for year after year, but they never got the place ready. So we had heard we were coming, and it took about five more years to come. So we were in that in Astoria, which was a great old building. It was beat up, but it was classic in that you had a lot of great stuff that in that building. You know, uh, yeah, you know the old Cosby Show was shot in there. Sesame Ooh. Street at the time, yeah, he used to be. At the there. time, that meant something. It was a big deal. Now then. it's awkward. Sesame Street was in there and still is in there to this day. That is awkward. You know, so, yeah, and they were on the same floor with us, and you had a lot of different stuff in there. It was a great old building, and so we decided to come in here. So, but they're shooting Sopranos around the block at Silver Cup. That's where they shoot it, okay? It's, it's really a couple blocks away. Yeah. So we go over one day. And whose idea is this? Is this your idea? My or idea. No, idea? But my idea. But Dog was loving it. He loved the show. Dog's so he wanted in. to go over. So we wanted to go over. We go over to. We're going to go sit and talk with Gandolfini after yeah. we finish the scene. So when we get there, they show us. They're taking us through the house, which they're showing us the whole of sets and everything. Right, we're walking through each of the rooms, which right. are there, and they said they're shooting a psychiatrist scene. So they take us in, Doctor Melfi. They were shooting the scene. And Chase was so committed that he said, listen, he will not address you. Don't be offended. He will not know you're there. And we were watching the scene for a half hour with Dan Lafini and Lorraine Bracco. Chase was in the, in the camera, in, in his machine. He never, ever came out. The entire, took his head out the entire time. The entire time we were there. And even when the You're scene about ended, Gandolfini. yes, no, no, I'm saying oh, Chase. Chase. Chase was shooting, was actually in, he was inside the camera there shooting the scene with them. And he was so focused, he didn't know anyone was there. He, they said, you, he will not acknowledge you. And he didn't. He never said hello to us the whole time. And then Gandolfini finished the scene, came out, and we sat in his trailer with him for like an hour. We, and we got to know him pretty well. And he said, listen. Did he uh, listen to the show? We asked, no. He said, I know the show well because I have a Teamster driver and it's on every day. So I've gotten used to listening to the show because my driver asked me, can I listen to it? I said, yeah. He says, I'm not a sports fan. He was not a big sports fan. He, he supported Rutgers football because he was from Rutgers. Yeah. And he said, I got to listen to the show a lot because my driver said, can I put the show on? So I started to listen to you guys, and then I got to know him pretty well, and I'd see him at events, and I'd see him at some charity events, and I got to know him pretty well. I mean, to where we would sit and talk for a couple of minutes, he'd give me a big hug, he'd say, almost break your back when he'd hug right. me, he was such a strong guy, you know, and he was always such a big, burly guy with huge arms, you know, uh, and he was the nicest, quietest, modest guy, you know, what, what we'd like, would you come do the show? And all the other Sopranos had done the show. Every one of them had been in our studio at one time or another. Okay, every one of them, from uh, Chinese to every name them, they were here. Okay, yeah. so but he would never come. He says, "I, I don't want. I'm boring. I don't want to talk about myself. I, you know, I, I have nothing to say. Uh, I'm just a. Ca I play characters. I have nothing to talk about. I, I I'm not important. I don't want to talk. That's how he acted. That's that's, that's what he said. Uh, and he was that kind of guy. He was, you know, he loved to play the characters. That's all he cared about. He was not big on celebrity or anything like that. He knew, listen. He knew he was making money. He held out to make Make money, you know. He held out a couple of times. I'm not saying he and Chase didn't hold out for money. They did what they're supposed to. They were marketing something. But the point is, that's not how he acted. But he never came and did the show. But he could not have been nicer to us. The day we spent in the trailer with him, uh, we took a bunch of pictures with him. Uh, he sent stuff over to us. I saw him probably six or seven other times at different events. Came over and talked to me. Charity events, we'd sit and talk together. I was at a concert he was at. We sat and talked for 20 minutes backstage. So he was, you know, it was sad that he, you know, and, and a guy who played Bobby Bacala is, yeah. is a good friend. So, you know, he and he and, he and, uh, and Jimmy were very close. You know, Steve Schripper and Jimmy were very, very close. They had a big so fight in the last he came, season. Yeah, he came in the la day about a week after he died and came in here and sat for like an hour. And Did he, he really? Oh, and poured his heart out. I mean, it was unbelievable because they, he loved them. Those guys, Love them. He made those guys in that crew so much. He was so good to the crew. He made the money. Yeah. He got the, he wouldn't do appearances unless they all were involved. I mean, he was so good to all those people. It was unbelievable. They loved, they worshiped him. They, uh, you rarely see a crew or, or a group of ensemble that worship someone as much as they worship Gandolfini. They loved him. They really do did. Do you think Tony Soprano is alive or dead? Alive. You're removing the Gandolfini thing. Alive. I've gone back and forth. My I've thing changed was, my mind first of all, times. I know everyone hated the ending. No, okay? they, if you watch the ending now, it's fantastic. But the I, ending is so underrated There was now. nothing that you were going to do to end that show that anyone was going to like. 
First of all, people hate last shows almost. Yeah, it, the only show I almost ever heard always. that people critically acclaimed was the la Mash last show. It's the only p show anyone Larry ever liked. Larry Sanders and The yeah. Wire, I think right. people are pretty happy but with. But the bottom line is, no one ever likes the last show, right? So, But I always came away with the optimistic viewpoint that he basically decided, let's get out of here. We'll go to Phoenix. I'll play golf, and we'll take it easy. That kind of thing. Oh, that's see, that's a yeah. different. Yeah. My take was let's get out of here. We'll get out of the business. We'll get out. We'll take our money and go. We'll my clean take out the was attic and go. They were trying to establish that this was going to be the rest of his life is always being jumpy. Just over that his, you over never knew who was yeah. over your shoulder, and that's right. what it was establishing. But then the more I read about somebody on the internet. I know you don't do a lot of internet deep dives. Somebody did a great deep dive on that final scene. And either David Chase is one of the all-time geniuses who's ever walked the earth in any forum, and like every piece of that scene has a purpose, or it just was ambivalent. And I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what the answer you is. You and your I really deep dives. Don't. That's what you're about. You know, it's funny. I'll tell you how before we break. I'm talking with Bill Simmons. He's going to be here with me the whole show today. Uh, we got to talk about a lot of different things. Oh, we got to talk about Odor's Punch. Oh, we, we got, got the we basketball got playoffs. Listen, we got a lot to talk about. We, we got to talk about we how you even, never really respected the Islanders four we straight even, Stanley Cups. We, you no, never I did. totally respected no, it. No, I, I actually do do that. I really? Actually, yes, I think Al Aub is one of the great coaches of all time. The Islander fans feel like yeah. you've, you've kind of dismissed the four straight Cups. No, that's not true. Tiny bit. They just think that. It's only the recent Islanders who are just, there's no connection. You I put mean, the 94 no. Rangers over the four cup run. Oh, no. no okay. Not even close. All right, just not clearing even close. that up. Not okay. even close. Um, no, you're not going to get a feud going with that. That's not a. That's not, we but, did the Islander fans? Yeah, nah, no, nah, it's, not, it's, not, it's not real. It's not real. It, four it, it straight cups real. is pretty great. Incredible. Okay. And that team was so good at being who they were in the playoffs. And Al Arbor was so, I mean, maybe the most underrated coach, in the definitely the most underrated coach in the history of New York. One of the most underrated coaches of all time. That's how good he was. Four I mean, 19 straight playoffs. Oh, insane. insane. Especially insane. back then. When but they, here's how I, f I heard about you. Yeah. I used to do a show uh, with, at, at night, uh, a show we created on NBC called Mike, uh, Mike Up. Mm -hmm. Okay, we did it for seven years. I started doing it in the beginning with a guy named Jim Bell, who worked at NBC. Was yeah, a big protester who then became the became a famous the dude. boss of the Today Show, yeah. runs the Olympics, and everything. Well, Jim Bell, who was in in every technical thing, you know, because he's a Harvard guy, he was an All League Harvard tackle, you know, captain of the team two years in a row, never done at Harvard for football players, captain two years in a row. You know, one of those guys with a great career. Uh, met up obviously uh, as a youngster, went as an intern. Uh, for Ebersol and and started this worked great his way career. Up. Right, started started driving for Ebersol and then worked his way up at the Olympics. Well, bottom line is he was into every technical thing you could think of as a guy who would be fifteen years younger than me. Okay, yeah. And we're sitting in the, in the room one night in in the green room, over for the show, and he go he's laughing out loud. He goes. This guy writes about you all the time. I said, who? He goes, you ever hear this guy, Bill Simmons? I said, no. He goes, this guy writes about you and dog all the time. He is a fanatic. I said, no, I've never heard him. He goes, he does the best. You got, you got to. So he gives me this long thing you did on us once and sends it to me. Well, it was laugh out loud funny. I mean, and, and I, and, and I showed it to dog and, you know, and, but then he was, he was always into your stuff big time. And then, I, I got into it because I, I, and then obviously we met up one year at the Super Bowl when you came on with us. Remember coming I on did, with us? I the did, I did impromptu. You were so nervous I, that day. I never I saw nervous. anybody that nervous. You were unbelievable. Was, like, what are you being nervous I with think us? It was, I think I was more hungover than nervous, but I was <laughs> a little nervous. I think I was super well, hungover. Well, that's, uh, that's the first <laughs> we time. We were in I, South Beach. That's the first time I ever <laughs> heard of Bill Simmons. That was it. So it was Jim Bell who was, I remember on a Sunday night sitting in that room and, and it's funny because we used to, just to give you another thing, we used to, in the, when, we, when we'd finished doing everything, that very rare, this is before NBC got Sunday Night Football. Yeah. Which then I hated doing mic'd up because it came on too late. Because in the beginning, we used to be on right at 11.30. And the funny thing was, The Apprentice was on till 11. So we used to watch the last, from like, we would watch it from 10.30 because we'd know what time. I had to do a, I had to do a promo live into the, into the uh, news at 11.12 every night. Yeah. And then walk out and get ready for my show at 11.30 because it was live, my show. So I'd step in in the last break into the set and they'd flip the cameras and I'd be right there. So I had to walk in and do a live 30 second pop of what I had coming on that night with the newscasters. So I had to wa we always would watch the last half hour at da right where the room was so we could be near the, st the studio. So we'd see the Trump scene at the table every night. And I'm telling you, that is where this started. Because what people don't realize is this guy was in everybody's house with a show that was pretty popular.
Yeah. And middle America is watching this guy. And all they do is see him at the start of a show, do a stand up and come out of a helicopter and get into a limousine. And he never was fallible on the show. And he would always fix the problems. And he'd get on you for not doing this right. And his kids would be flocking him and everything. And this is how this person was was branded to America. So you and knew reality TV was finally going to ruin the United States, and now it's going to happen. Bingo. That's how he got to the point where they didn't have to sell him or brand him. He had already been branded to America. That was a really good show. I mean, it tailed off, but the yeah, first it, two years of that show were excellent. People it got big ratings yeah, and stuff. It was yeah. a very smart show, and it's hard to do a good right, reality show. You ready? We'll get rolling on everything now that we've done the intro. We'll get it rolling. Bill well, Simmons will be the whole I, show. Go ahead, bud. Later on, I'm going to give I'm going to give the listeners my entire history with your show. Oh, good. We'll yeah, do that. All right. Good. Uh, back after this. this. I dipped tobacco for 18 years, and now that's 1-800-426-6186. All right, we're back uh, chatting with Bill Simmons, who will be with me the uh, entire show today. So we got, and uh, Bud Selig joining us later on. And uh, uh, we tried to get Adam Silver because Bill, you know, is a uh, NBA fanatic. But um, you're not an NBA fanatic. Where do you see? Are you an wait you're fanatic? An NBA fan. you, no, yes, yeah, I am. I'm but it's fanatic. not my first sport. I well, wouldn't put it first. Basketball, I, I got football the idea tie. that you were first, that NBA would be first more than anything else. I, NBA, NFL tie. Although okay. the concussion stuff with the NFL is starting to push me toward football <sighs> a little more. I don't like the way they've handled that stuff, but you know what's going to happen eventually? These guys are just going to sign waivers when, when they enter the league. You can play or not play. You're going to have a lot of money to play. It's going to be like a rodeo rider. Basically, you, you know what you're doing. You know, but you're you're, yeah. you're taking a risk when you do it. It's up to you. They'll it's, still play. They'll still play. It's half that, but it's also half just the experience of watching the games. And I feel like I'm a concerned little league parent when I'm watching gotcha. these games half the time, which is weird because, like, I watch boxing. Yeah, same thing. I love Listen. boxing. Alvarez cold cock see, it, Amir Khan, and, that's and I'm like, oh, what a that's punch. a concussion it's, every time yeah, they hit the mat. it's the mark. same thing, and I don't know why I'm such a hypocrite about it. Yeah, but that's okay. But so you wouldn't put NBA first automatically then. I, it's one A. Football's one B. I to me, it's like there's nothing better than than uh, first of all when your team's good in football. And then second, the football playoffs. Like, what's better than round one and round two? And you get eight games no. in, in Listen, two weekends, the, basically. You know, we knew a long time ago the marriage between television and football. You know, we became a, a TV-crazy country. And the only sport that was able to capitalize on that to any enormous extent was the NFL. Because yeah. it's made for the box. It's made for, te it's better on television than it is been live. Because it's instant replay. I mean, you go to a game, well, I don't know if you feel the same way. If I go to a game and I sit in the stands, I'm looking around. If they don't replay the play, I'm dead. I mean, I'm waiting for them. I hate I'm going waiting to football for, games yeah. now. I, I like watching four games at once. Yeah, and I you like want to replay the play. Yeah. Well, if you go on I'm a Sunday you. afternoon, you feel like you're missing everything. You're watching one game, and if it's ever a bad game, you're saying, wow, look at that. I'm missing that other game. I could be watching that right now. We watch football now. In, in, in total. We watch the NFL as a, as a day. It's basically exploding in front of you. You choose what you want to watch. We watch a little everything. That's what I always do. You have fantasy, you have daily fantasy, you have the gambling aspect of it. And I just like knowing what's going on. And when I go to football games, that's when you really notice the breaks. Kickoff commercial, three downs punt commercial. I, it just, it just feels like there's no flow when you're there unless it gets super exciting. I mean, playoff games are great to go to. The Super Bowl is amazing to go to. But if it's like some average, you know, Jacksonville at New England game, New there's England's nothing up worse than a bad football game. No, it's the yeah. worst. It's boring. Right, I'm going to interview you for a couple of minutes. You yeah. ready? Okay. That, I was I'm so excited to interview you. Like interview a, you too. Wait, no, I'm going to treat you like a guest for a couple of minutes. Okay. All right, you it. ready? Here we go. Um, but number don't one. forget that you interviewed me. I came on. I did come on a few months ago. And you I know I did, but I, you did. But I want to get. I want to get final on some of this stuff that we're gonna. That I want to get through. Okay. First of all, how would you, as you get ready to embark on? You've done a couple new things. You have a new website, right? You have the yeah. New, the Ringer is going to be launched When is that soon. start? Um, hopefully it's in the next couple of weeks. Is that going to be different than the Grand last Land? one? Yes. Um, or is it going to be the same? No, it's it's going to be a little different in the sense. How that so? A little more reactionary. We're going to have tech this time. Um, we're a little younger this time, and we have to react a little bit better. Because, and we're going to use social a lot better. The Do internet you, really changed this decade. What now? Now, when, this is—they're all your hires. These people, right? These you hire them. I yeah. mean, you might have someone that you delegate the hire, but you basically hire these people. I, right? After I left ESPN, I created a business. 
Right. And uh, and that business is going to have the podcast network, which we already started, right. and the website, and a whole bunch of other things. And then separately of that, um, I'm doing the, the show with HBO and all the stuff I'm doing right. with them, which is dominating my time now. What do you want to, what is going to be different with The Ringer than was, say, ESPN? Did ESPN have any editorial control over the, over the site? They didn't. Um, I mean, they did and they didn't. I obviously will have a little more. Did editorial. you clash at all with them? On just what from was a on content, the site? From a ca- content standpoint, no. I okay. think the clashes that we had were resources and also as stuff started to move on the internet, being able to move with that and clashes with their ad sales. I mean, fundamentally, we just didn't make sense for ESPN because their ad sales model is to spend lot, uh, to get advertisers to spend lots of money and then they take that money and they put it on their biggest properties, right? Yes. So they go to, I don't know, Chevrolet. Mm-hmm. They get a big check from Chevrolet and then they put it on their biggest properties. And their ad sales people are, are um, incentivized to get the money to go that direction. So then you have us and, you know, we're trying to operate like a little business within ESPN and it just never really fit. It was always rocky and sometimes we'd have sponsors that were already sponsored by, you know, sponsoring ESPN stuff and they would be like, hey, can you move our money to, to Grantland? And they would say, no, we, it, that has to be new money. And like, well, we're already giving you X amount of dollars. Just move. So it never really fit. You wind and, up fighting them for the own, your yeah. own business. Yeah, so that we, happens all the time, especially with corporate big companies. Yeah. yeah, and I think for and we were, it was never a directive from ESPN to us that we had to make money. Um, but then when you start battling with them and you need more resources, that's when they start pointing to the budget and things like that. So. You know, I, I, I'm super grateful to them for all the chances they gave me. Tell me, me about the on air. Let's Land. just talk to forget Grant. Let's just talk the on air experiences. Uh, did yeah. you like doing the, the the stuff that you did for basketball? I enjoyed where we were going in the first season because you know the bottom line with me is I had only been on TV like 15 times. So that right. first year, I was actually learning how to do television and little and things doing like TV. I could tell folks in a live arena yeah. is it, that's the hard part because sometimes you can't the crowd can be so loud you can't even hear the person that, next I mean to that's you. the final stage yeah that's yeah. a hard thing to adjust to is doing it in in a live arena is very different than being in an antiseptic studio where you just got basically five people in there in the arena is very hard to do and I got the thing I never wanted to do was be on a traditional ESPN show that had a host that was run by the producers. And the reason the basketball show appealed to me was it was built around the four people that were on. It wasn't quote unquote hosted, right. wasn't overproduced, and it was more conversational. And that's what I wanted to do. And by the second year, we had drifted toward. What did you like about the show? What did you when you liked it? What did you like about the show? I loved. I thought we got to a good place in the last two rounds, and it was the ball was moving around. The ball has to move around on TV, especially because you you only get like four or five minutes at a time, right? So well, if you have TV, a host, you have to talk in headlines. It, it, you, do. You, you do. You cannot. Well, that's talk, what I didn't like. Yeah, is you that, have to talk in headlines. Like our first year, a lot of times that they would be like, you know, the Lakers always get eyeballs, ratings, whatever, and they'd right. be like, talk about the Lakers again. I'm like, we just talked about them last week. Can we talk about the Grizzlies? They're no. The, no. no. Talk about the Lakers. No. Um, but I thought we got to a good place. I. I love being with Magic. Like I really just like being around that guy every day and Jalen and Wilbon. It was really fun, like just sitting there. We'd be in this room with like eight TVs, watching all these games, and it's very Magic Johnson. He's one of the five best players ever. And you sit there and you just talk and, basketball. Yeah, yeah, and if it was boring, we'd just start asking Magic questions That's about it. the eighties. Like, games. Yeah. did you ever go to Studio Fifty Four? Like, <laughs> and he's the best. And and uh, so that part was really fun. And I, I re- the most fun I had though with anything I did with them was the draft. The draft is amazing. The draft was perfect for me. It's just going in 90 directions. You never know what's going to happen. The first draft we did was the Anthony Bennett draft. Right. And they picked him first. Nobody saw it coming. I actually made a noise. I didn't know my mic was on. I was like, whoa! <laughs> and it was on the telecast. And now he's out of the league. But that was fun. I like the energy of that. Like, there's trades. There's, like, all kinds of stuff. That was the most fun. What I've was had. the worst part? The worst part was the second playoffs that we did when they were freaking out about Sports Center and just the Sports Center Rangers were going down and they had moved into this model of the games and get us right to Sports Center because they wanted Sports Center to get that rating. Right. And they were doing it at you know, at, at the compromising and, of their and show. They, and they know the audience after a big game tails off immediately, they leave and go to the places. They want to get that first few minutes. Bingo. Yeah. So we would have this post game show that was run by the Sports Center producers, right. which are never people that we didn't work with normally. Right. 
and we'd have to cut away so at the press conference. It was a clash. It just wasn't what I signed up for. Right. And it became more and more frustrating. But I, there was stuff like the first two rounds, we would be doing a pregame show, and yet there would be a playoff game on another ESPN channel. And we would literally be doing these pregame shows that not one basketball fan was watching because everyone was watching the basketball games. So there was like a lot of common sense stuff, but that's the thing at a big company. See, I we, through. You just hit on something. I never liked being on against games that I want to watch. Yeah. Who's so gonna, I always would say, I don't want to I don't want to work. And it, it, I always didn't want to be on a show. If I was going to be on a show that was against a big game, I'm saying I would be watching that game. I'm watching that game. So, you know, the bottom line is no one's watching us. That's my theory. And when I always felt I wanted to be on TV when no one had a chance to be watching something else where I knew they had a chance to be watching me. Because right. I know if there's a big game on, what sports fans not watching the game? I mean, well, let's be honest. You know, tonight, you want to be on during that game? You don't want to be on during that game. You want no. to be watching the game. Well, and the other problem is you have the ESPN's NBA show is basically a pregame show, right? Yep. And then you have four minutes at halftime and then sports centers right after. Um, TNT is a post game show. Now the TNT show is the best show ever. I think I think it's the best studio show. Of Very all time. good, except they brought Shaq and ruined it. Well, I see. I like Shaq on uh, the show. I, I like the he, vibe. You know of what the happened? Floor. He stifled Barkley, though. That's what I. Nah, know. it's I like fine. It. If you watch closely, though, they, it, they, but they I don't figured like, out the balance. Yeah, but I like, see. I'm but talking, the game ends. I, I liked it better when he wasn't there because I think I, I think you they love the tried Barkley to Kenny. play. Yeah, and I thought they played too much to to, to Shaq because Shaq's there and they're going to play to him. And to me, Shaq to me makes it a little sillier. Yeah, and he gives you half. I have Shaq's yeah. grown on me. I don't know if I have Stockholm uh, syndrome. Uh, yeah. I don't, I don't, so, I'm not, I'm not a so the TNT, it. the game ends. You have this awesome game, like like Game 5. OKC wins in San Antonio. Yep. It's a big moment, and Westbrook has this awesome thing. And then right afterwards, those guys are on, and they let them go. Like they, If you watch, they're on for 13 well, minutes straight after the game. That's what I liked the other night, when they actually had Howard in the studio, and Charles actually turned to him and said, you know, why does nobody like you? And they just yeah. went on for like 12 minutes. Now, he spun it back on Charles, classically, and said, you're the one who knocked me the most. Right. Yeah, and you could tell Charles was a little taken aback. But the bottom line is, they actually let him talk about, and you could see he was uncomfortable talking about why people in the league didn't like him. But you know what's funny about that? And this is, I love Barkley. I think he's one of my all-time favorites. But I think the longer you get away from having played, you kind of forget the, the story of your own career. Barkley was just as polarizing oh, in that era as oh, Dwight Howard was. Yes. Oh, uh, you know, and he got traded Except in his prime. He was known to have heart, and a, he was a right. gamer. He was a big game player. When he got in a big game, it wasn't going to be him who lost the game. He was going to get unless unless the years in Houston, he was done. Here's, but if wait, you went wait, like even my, the Phoenix series, I mean, he played great. In the, here's you know, my in counter that, to that though: wasn't always in shape. No, but to he could still gamer, score. It's like, yeah, he but could it's still like, score. But no one could stop him. You know, that really... series, I went to every game in that series. Dog and I went to that yeah, series. Yeah, it was amazing. I mean, he and Richard Dumas were the only guys who scored. They scored every time. I mean, but that was But he was, was it. in his prime and in shape that season. And that, that whole season that he had makes me wonder, like, so what happens well, if he's in shape his whole hey, career? He's he one was of never. the 12 best players ever. Go to where, I'll tell you a story from Bob Knight who told me, hey, I told him. He was the best player at the Olympic trials that yeah. year. And Bob cut him because Bob said, you have to come back. And he says, I went inside with the other coaches and said, listen, try to talk me out of this. Mm. I told him he had to come back at this weight. He came back 16 pounds over. Right. I'm, I'm cutting him. Tell me not to. They said he's been the best player here by far. And he said, I'm cutting him anyway. And he cut him. He told him, you were the best player. And I'm cutting you. And he cut him from the team. And I, I'm lucky enough to have seen every great player from the last 40 years in person, like with good seats. Young Barkley, even though he was heavy, that guy was a force of nature. Oh, he I mean, was there's unbelievable. There's only like four or five guys in my life, rebound, fast break. I and saw he was him play over ninety pounds. Like yeah. that guy was terrifying when he was the round mound of rebound. Yeah, the round mound of rebound. But yeah. you know, you didn't take a charge for Barkley. Oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> and he could always score because yeah. he used his body so well. The only other guy I saw who used his body like that at that size was Adrian Dantley, who I actually saw in high school play. So he was like that in high school. Adrian Dantley, he just right. he was like the same person his whole life. Yeah, yeah, fast man. But it's, it's funny amazing. that TNT has three guys that I'd really be interested to know if they would do their careers differently. C Web. Who, who was the second most naturally talented oh, power forward ever, other than not Derek a favorite Coleman. of mine. I know, and his career didn't go the way Bad it should have gone. Bad career. And then Shaq admits that he wasn't in shape a lot of times. Still had a great career though. Three titles. You had Shaq and Kobe. 
Like that's had, over you know unders. If we did over unders in 1999 on titles, still we had, go like six. Still had a great career though. He, I, mean, I had him number here, eleven in my book. He'd come here and he would just destroy you. And, oh yeah, you know, he would, and he loved to do it to you. And he didn't matter what shape he was in. He would, yeah, he kill owned you. you. Oh, kill him. Just he was, killer. but he's in that force of nature conversation. Oh, absolutely. But you know, by 2004, wasn't really in shape anymore. Went to Miami, got in shape for another year, and then kind of drifted away again. And I so wait, let's get back. Right, so let's get back. All right. So, yeah, yeah. um, as you go forward here now, yeah. okay. So you finish up with with that. What's the what's the last thing as you close the box on ESPN? What's the last thing thought you have on ESPN as you go forward? Like, what, what do you, do you mean, think about now when you think about that that time of your life? I mean, it's honestly like going, like having, it's like we got divorced and there's the natural bitterness you have afterwards. And now it's like, I look at it and I'm in an awesome place. That place is still making a ton of money. I learned a lot. I got a great, a lot of great opportunities. And you know, the bottom line is now I get to work with all people that I love working with. I get to work with HBO, which is treats their talent better than anybody. And it worked out great for me. So it's really tough for me to be that bitter about it at this point. All right. Uh, we're talking with Bill Simmons. Back after this. There has never been a better time to experience... 800 294 Call now. 1-800-294-2339. All right, we're back. We're talking with Bill Simmons. We'll be here uh, all day with us, and Bud Sealy's going to join us a little while, and uh, we'll do some other things. And uh, Bud gets the Sports Business Journal Lifetime Achievement Award today, and he asked to come on. So, you know, we'll see what's going on. I mean, I, you know, we'll we'll chat with Bud uh, after four o'clock. Should be interesting. We were talking about the thirty for thirty that's happening with you and you and Dog. Yeah, during the commercial, we were. Yes, and yes. So for me, like the key is the summer of '94 for you guys. And I happen to be living, I, my parents got divorced, so my mom was in Connecticut. I spent a lot of the summer there in Connecticut that year. And you had the Rangers, and you had the Knicks. Unbelievable. And you had OJ. I think you and Dog Four had been together like two to th three years at that point? No, we'd been together five years. Five years? Yeah. And that was like, it was just this perfect storm of New York, national. There were 49 playoff games between the two teams. It was and the and strike we was to, coming. You know, we went to dog and I. Dog figured, you know, dog with his lists. Yeah, he'd yeah. sit here and figure everything. Like dog would figure out every, you know, always like trains and planes. And he was he he was sitting there one day and he's writing them down. He figured out that we went to thirty nine live out that's of forty. So you'd finish the show and go. Yeah, that's it. We went to no, we were at the games. We went to the, the remotes from the stadiums. Thirty nine wow. out of forty nine games. I mean, there's we never went to Indiana. We went to Vancouver. I went to Vancouver twice. Dog went to Vancouver three times. We split up once. I went to Game Seven, Knicks Indiana. He was with the Rangers. They were pl he. We left Vancouver after Game Six. Went to Houston for the Sunday night game, which they lost. They had to stay in Houston three more days. Remember when they had to play Game Seven? So we were at every game at the Garden. We had we did a remote there. I did a show after every one of those games live from the play by play. I did a show every night. I did seventy shows that year. I was supposed to do fifty. I did seventy because all the playoff shows. There were forty nine games, twenty five uh home, twenty four away. Forty nine playoff games with those two teams in one year. Is that unbelievable? I, if you look at like just the Rangers not having one since 1940, the Knicks getting to a game seven, all the tortured oh. history they had. And the game six ending. Then you have oh. OJ, which is the biggest On American cultural event of the last 35 years. And you know what I think about? And then about? you guys are like, you're really hitting the peak of your powers, and it all happens in the same summer. And you know what I think about more than anything in that series? Sam Cassell. Because if Sam Cassell doesn't go off in game three, they win that series in five games. They win all three games. Do you games. think that Knicks was a championship team, though? I mean, there's no MJ that no, year, so no, it's a listen, big asterisk anyway. Neither one of them had a great team, and Olajuwon was... Was slightly better than, than everyone Ewing. Else. Yeah, yeah. He I'm was better you. than Ewing. And, you know, Kenny, I walked in that day, it was like 100 degrees in Houston. And we walked in to do our show in Houston. We were going to be on from like 3 o'clock till game time. And we were walking into the building, and Kenny's walking in with us. Now, I've known Kenny since high school. And Kenny is shooting like 20% in the series. Yeah. And he said to me, be careful, Mike, and we'll make a lot of shots tonight. Mm. And I said, really, I'm telling you. And I said, you've been awful in series. He says, I'm going to make a lot of shots tonight. Well, Kenny went off in that game, if you yeah. remember. And they killed him. After game six, where they should have won the game five times. And it would have been over in six games. But what people don't re realize in that series, they lose game three when Sam Cassell kills them in the second half of that game. And they win four and five easy. Five is OJ game that Friday night when everybody's yeah. out in the lobby watching the game. I think that's now the OJ game. Yeah, that's the OJ yeah. game. And, you know, what people didn't realize was I'm sitting there 
And I'm like, what the heck is going on? Finally go outside and realize the Broncos going down the street and everybody's watching that. And they, right. they went to a, every went to a split screen. I'll never forget. He went it. to a split screen. Yeah. And then he went to, I don't know how much he went to OJ because I was at the game, but he went to more OJ than I guess to the Knicks. And he went to split screen, I guess, at some times during the game. But think about that as the whole thing. They're playing in their a final game in New York, the last game in this city that year because game six and seven were in Houston. Yeah. And they know they can't wrap the series up that night. So this is not a final game of the series. And they're wondering, the players like, what's going? Why isn't nobody in the stands? Where are the players? They're, I mean, where are the fans? They're wondering where the fans are. The fans are out in the lobby watching, you know, above watching above the the counters, watching on the TVs as OJ Chase is going on. They're they, watching that. They don't realize that this is basically the JFK assassination moment of the nineties. It's unbelievable. And it's happening during Game Five of the du- Finals. During the it game, is an and insane it's funny it, it, if somebody could ask Eversol how he decided what he was going to do. He's got an NBA Final game and he's got the OJ thing, yeah. and he had a great sense for that stuff. I mean, he was a genius. His TV guy, and I gathered that night because I was at the game. I only went out for a minute. He, I guess, split the screen a lot of the night on NBC. You could watch yeah. OJ on any channel, evidently, but you could only watch the, the basketball on their channel. But I gathered on their network they split the screen a lot of the night. And then you the had Costas there, who was like really the perfect guy to have as like your studio host slash MC for the weirdest night it's TV. Crazy. Ever. Well, that year was was just unbelievable. And then we went into what was really almost. The the opposite. Yeah, the scorched earth. Because we went into the worst year of our history. But you know what, though? Because of the strike. That's when I loved when you and Dog, that's when you guys were at your best. I felt the same way about Grantland. We were always at our best when there was nothing going on and you had to kind of create content. And that's when you and Dog would get your silliest. You had no baseball. You had like, what, four weeks with... Just uh, talking about movies and TV and we Seinfeld had, we episodes. We used to have and- to make up everything. I mean, it was unbelievable. I mean, Tennis. you realize, oh, you had so much. Talk you about had, the, uh, the, the... Think about that. You you know, people Wimbledon. don't realize how that... That almost destroyed baseball, as you remember. You oh, know? Yeah. yeah. I mean, you know, which is the Thank whole... Thank God yeah. for steroids. Yeah, steroids well, brought them back. Bingo. Everyone blames Cal Ripken. It was the steroids. Hey, the, the home run... We should ask Bud about that. Yeah, well, that's what... Come on, Bud. Bud that's, you that, know. that's what part of Bud's feud with me is always... I've always pinned that on Bud, which... <laughs> is what he's never liked. Is that you know, like, I was at the 99 home run derby and we thought the balls were juiced. Like, oh, people were so naive no back question. then. We were like, wow, they really hey, souped the up balls these baseballs. Were juiced. Yeah, the players were, were juiced, the balls were <laughs> juiced. They moved the walls in. They did everything they could do. Oh my God. All right, 2 o'clock, an hour down with Bill Simmons. He'll be here the entire show as we approach 2 o'clock. Got tickets to give away. Let me give away tickets, Chris, right now before I get to, my, uh, to Mink. Let me give away a pair of tickets right now. Here we go. Time for the uh, Monday Blitz. The pair of field level tickets for the Rockies, who just swept the Mets on Tuesday, June 21st, Yankee Stadium. First pitch, 7.05. It's all from Jersey Mike Subs. And the fan, your chance to win tickets each and every hour today, right here on The Fan. As we approach 2, here's the McMahon. Tony and Affiliates, price and coverage match limited by state law. Mike's on. He's ready to go. On The Fan, New York Sports Radio. All right, we're back. I'll get back to Bill Simmons in a second. Now, let Red Katina show you the way to affordable luxury driving, whether you're looking for a newer certified pre-owned Mercedes-Benz, Lexus, Audi, Porsche, Land Rover, Jaguar, Maserati, BMW, Mini, Infiniti, Smart Car, or Sprinter. Red Katina has the right one for you with the most competitive lease and finance offers. Visit a Ray Katina showroom. Call 1-800-NEW-ORDER or go to RayKatina.com. You'll understand why customers keep coming back and referring their friends. Go to Ray Katina for affordable luxury driving. Tickets selling fast for the Belmont Stakes. Their racing festival, three days of world-class racing, $10 million on the line, $1.5 million in the Belmont Stakes, the third leg of the Triple Crown. Preakness is this Saturday, then the Belmont comes three weeks after that. Special three-day festival includes a $30 pass for all three days, plus concerts by Daughtry and Maddie and Tay, and an uh, interview with Triple Crown trainer Bob Baffett. Plus, limited seats available. couple remain. Don't miss out. Go to BelmontStakes.com for all the action. Bill St- uh, Simmons in studio with me the entire show. We have an hour uh, under our belts as we uh, head to the two o'clock hour. Maybe we'll squeeze a couple of calls in later. Now we got through the, we got up to the current stuff. Yeah. Um, why? Why HBO? Why? I'm sure you had more than one offer. I mean, you you've been a hot property. Uh, you've been thanks, you, Mike. Well, you have been. I mean, gotta be honest. I mean, if you if you stunk, I'd say so. But you've been a hot property. <laughs> you know, you're you're out there. You got a big following. You've been yeah. a hot property. Uh, and 
So you got places that, you know, you're a guy now who's going to be, you know, how old are you now? What, what's your, uh, what I'm are you? 28 years old. No, you're not. You're, you got gray hair. So I'm what 46. Are you? You're 46. I have white right. hair, not gray hair. Not gray, uh, you and I yeah. both have the white going. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But, I, but all right, so you got, you know, you got a good 20-year run left in you, you know? So, yeah. so all right. Thank you. What do you want to do? I'll I mean, what is it? First five of all, years. Yeah, no, yeah, but, but you're going you're to be working. You're not going to stop working. You like no, working. No, I'm not. So the, the I love bottom, working. Yeah, so the bottom line is... Uh, well, HBO, to me, is like, yeah. it's... Now, the Gumble show, I don't like Gumble. I don't oh. like Brian Gumble. Listen, Brian Gumble. Joe Frazier no, no, he's not a good guy. But oh. listen, he's just not a good guy. He's not a good guy. Oh, he's not a good guy. He's just never been a friendly guy. He's, he's not like, a good you're guy. You're talking about my teammate. Listen, listen I, 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 let me knock him. You don't have to knock okay. him. Listen, he's in the studio, he's the best ever. Wow. Flawless. Best ever. Flawless. Who's your Mount Rushmore? In the studio? Yeah. There's only four guys. Yeah. And I've worked with a bunch of them. Brent. Mossberger, great in the studio. Yeah. Gumble, technically flawless in the studio. The best disseminator of information I've ever seen. Okay. Costas, Nance. And the other one I would put there. Nance. Nance is great in the studio. Top Absolutely. Four. You can give him anything. He can handle anything. Absolutely flawless. And then the next guy that I would put on just studio, I'm not talking about play by play now. Play by play is completely different. I'm just talking about in the studio. Other than those four, the fifth guy is Lampley. Underrated. Very good. I quirky. Had him. Weird. Quirky. All right. Jim, Jimmy's different. Jim, I, go, he's different. I go with quirky because Lamps is a good guy. He's, yeah, but he's quirky. I mean, I had he's him different, on my podcast. But he's great in the studio. What I'm talking about is those guys have to be. I'm talking about doing a football studio, doing NFL Today, yeah. doing those kind of shows. You have to be able to. Handle three things coming in at once, different audiences coming in at once, and be a cold, talented disseminator of information. Those guys I gave you are, and I've worked with Nance, I've worked with Musburger, I, I've worked a couple times with Costas, uh, I've watched Gumble, uh, I've worked with Lampley. Those are, that, that would be the guys. I'm just talking about studio talent, and I'd say f just technically. Technically, I think Gumble was the best I've ever seen in wow. the studio. That's how I good had Lampley on a podcast, and his recall was like nothing I've ever He's seen. Gone, like he, he actually yeah. has like what's that memory you had yeah. when you had photographic memory? Yeah. I think he has a photographic and he, memory. Of his and life. these guys, you can't rattle these guys. No, you can give them ten things to do at once, and they can handle it completely. And they're so good at it. And I'm telling you, every one of those guys. And Musburger has been lost in this because he's never. Because when I work with Musburger, and I was part of the what they called the Musburger Mafia, he. He that sounds like a great mafia. Well, was, is there T-shirts for that? He had he had a team who traveled with him all the time. You know, oh, this was CBS. when you were like a researcher CBS, slash yeah. info guy. I was guy, kind right? of the info guy for yeah. him. So he had his own team. I was part of his team, and he at that time was the biggest guy in the business. Yeah. And he was, and he, that's been kind of lost in in years of how big he was. But he was really really big. So and he, he was really good on the NFL today when it was him, Brent. Irv, Phyllis, that was must watch. Everyone watched the NFL today. There was no other show. It was like CBS's the first show great was a joke studio compared to show. That. Yeah. But then when you think about it, like Phyllis barely knew what she was talking about. Yeah. Irv, and Irv was like a mannequin, basically. basically Brent was carrying Irv, the whole team. And, and, and basically what you did with Phyllis, because I, I, I worked that show, and, I, and what you did with Phyllis was you try, she would do a feature every week. She's yeah. America. She's Phyllis George. She, she was the best. It. She'd sit there and smile, and everyone loved her. Yeah. And you'd sit there and give her two questions to ask. She'd have to do two questions out of her piece. And you'd give her two things that made her sound good, and then that would be on your way. That's how you do it. Jimmy, you had to keep organized. He'd have his live segment. Once in a while, he'd be taped, usually live. And you had Brent, and you had Irv, and I tell you, they were just, you know, you are looking live. I heard somebody do You Are Looking Live the other day. I can't remember who it was. You and I said, you can't live. do You Are Looking Live. That's Musburger. So, he started that. Remember, the National was around when uh, when Musburger got canned by CBS. I was in Denver when like it happened. And that felt like a cataclysmic oh, moment. I remember. Like, I, was, what? I was there when Brent it happened. Musburger, he is CBS. How did he get rid of this I, guy? I Mr. Lawrence Tish. Yeah, I was there. I was there when it happened. I remember very well. I remember when the news came down, we were in Colorado for the Final Four. But what did we learn about that? All that, these guys are dispensable, no matter how dispensable. great they are. Nance comes in, and they have another guy for the next 20 years. That's like, why if, this is a better job, and that's why I learned that from Don Imus, and that's what I, I learned. I you wanted learn to show. Howard Stern? I never, I never worked with Howard okay. Stern. I never was around. You know, I've never, been, I've never met Howard Stern. 
That would be quite a meeting. I've never met him. I, I never I hope bumped I'm there into that him. I've never bumped into him. I've never had a conversation with him. I've never met him. Uh, but what I learned was you wanted to be somewhere where you could be responsible. See, here's what happened with, Ted, with Lawrence Tess. This is a true story. He asked the people there, what are the ratings for the game if Musburger does it? And what are the ratings if he doesn't do it? And they told him the same. They said, explain to me then why I would pay him. And the answer is, play-by-play -play guys get paid because they're signature guys and they're the face. But the ratings are the same no matter who does the game. We're all going to watch. It doesn't matter. If I put Iron Eagle on the game instead of Al Michaels, there's not two people are going to tune out. They're all going to watch the game. No one watches the game for the announcers. You watch the game. But if you have a show like this, it's yeah, you. It's, it's you. you. And, it. and then you can say, hey, here are my ratings. Pay me. Right. Or, or I'm out the door. Do you it's say that? Do you actually say, here are I, my ratings. Pay me. I've said it once or twice. <laughs> Not in a long time. But what you just Man, I might out. have said that 25 years ago. But my point is, I wanted something where I was responsible for whether people watched or didn't watch. Sports guys, guys who are play by play guys don't have that. They're watching the game. They could care less who does the game. So I have two thoughts on this. Do you ever watch the game because the announcer was doing the game? Well, that's one of my two thoughts. I like when Michaels and Collinsworth are involved. Like it? Would you I, not watch the game? It's a, no, it, I would still watch it. Of course but you would. I, when when they're there, I just feel better. In the old days, Madden and Summerall, everyone loved having Madden and Summerall yeah, on just, their game. There's certain guys that's that fine. make it feel bigger. I'm not saying that one team isn't better than the next team, but the business end of it, if you're paying their checks, there's not a lot of difference between one and four in terms of what they no, bring in. First of all, there's zero percent difference. Yeah. Second, like this is going to be my second thought is that. Like, I think Joe Buck is good. I actually think Joe Buck gets he's, too much crap for... I think he's a very good play-by-play -play guy. I if think Fox, he's good on... First of all, I don't think he's as good as his father. Secondly... Well, I, that's not fair. I'm just being honest. Yeah, yeah, yeah his father's honest. one of the greats. Though. I think he's good on baseball. He's good on baseball. I think he's okay on football. He's fine on football. I think I think uh, Nance is good on football. I think uh, very good on football. I think uh, Al Michaels is great on football. Can I have a controversy? Nance yeah. has slipped on football. I don't think Nance so. Nance and Sims really slip. But I, I think Nance is good. No, that. I think Nance is good. I'm being honest. I think because Nance is very well prepared and he's a very good technical Those guys had a lot of trouble in the last playoffs. The but Al Michaels, I think... Al's the best. I think Al's the best. on uh, As a play-by-play -play guy, I think he's the best. I'm being so honest. I think Fox he's the best. if Fox could get rid of Joe Buck tomorrow and put in Kevin Burkhart, who's excellent, and the rating would be the same. Now, that doesn't mean they right. should do it. Burkhart's not ready to take that job, though. But yeah, he I, needs some more work. But your point is it doesn't matter. No, it doesn't. Now, Iron Eagle I'm going to watch do, the game right. either way. But Iron Eagle could do the job right now. Iron Eagle could do the flawless. job right now. He's flawless. Kid so, started on that board right, sitting right there. But right there. The, the problem for networks but is... But Iron is flawless now. He's as good as anybody. Iron right now, he's calling the game, three. is as good as anybody. He's never going to be a leading man because he's five foot three, and So he's <laughs> never going to be their leading guy. He, you know, he looks like Poindexter, whatever that Come kid on. was. Whatever the kid was. What was the kid's name? It wasn't Poindexter. Whatever the kid was who was next to Poindexter. What? I don't know what show. It was show. a dog. There was a dog that was a, a kid what, with glasses. I don't know what era we're in right now. Uh, we're, we're too old. <laughs> Someone will know. There was a show that had a kid and a dog. I think the dog was Poindexter. But the kid had glasses. That's what Ryan looks like. The little you know, kid. The only so, time the point it, is that he doesn't look like a leading man, but he's really good doing the games. The only time but it's Peabody, mattered, that's it. Peabody, that's it. P he's Peabody, point Dexter nice. and Peabody was the dog. The only it. time it's really mattered in the last 15 years was when Brad Nessler got the ABC NBA job when they got basketball. And it just didn't feel right. And they knew it, and they made the change to Al, and that didn't feel right either. No, Al and was then terrible doing a basketball. And he's, he's, still mad. he's mad at me that I wrote that. But he was. You know, how know, about, how said. about, listen, how about owning, of, when you get 9,000 people give you compliments for how good you are on the NFL, if somebody then says you were bad on a basketball game, suck it up and realize you were. He was terrible on a basketball game. <laughs> he wasn't terrible. No, no, he, he was wasn't, terrible. He it's wasn't like Kurt brain. Gowdy at the end of his career. Oh, come on. He's calling the wrong players. No. You know what? It was terrible. It wasn't like that. It wasn't no, great. I, I didn't say Al was doing it. I said Kurt Gowdy at the oh. end of his career. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, I, Kurt I mean, the guy, he's Kurt Gowdy. We all grew up with him, but he's, he's doing games. I don't know who's playing. That's the last stage of great announcers, though, because yeah. that happened at Emberg the last year, too. It does. You get, the game goes the too fast wrong, for you. Yeah, Plus, I'll tell you what they can't do. Guys, when they get older and their names, doing that NCAA tournament, four games one day, players you don't know, very hard to prepare for. You got to be young and sm and really yeah, tuned be a in. Snapper. Yeah, because you're doing four teams in one day and you don't know any of the players. That happened to Summerall, too. It happens to all of them. And what they all just, the play-by-play -play It, it happens to all of them. They should not be put on those NCAA tournaments. It, 
it's but this too helps hard. the Al Michaels case though because he's in his seventies now. Hey, I thought he, but had he was his best not good on the best on football. I Al's thought he was the, a lights out last Al's year. Al's the best. Him and Collinsworth, I would pay for. If See, I'm not like, as big on Collinsworth this, as you I'd, are. I'd throw in money. I'm not as big on Collinsworth. I, really? I'm not really worried about it. I see analysts. I'm okay with analysts. I mean, analysts don't bother me one way or the other. Do you think Parcells could have done it? Done the games? Do you think he could have been a lead color guy? Do you think he would have been candid enough to do that job? No. I don't think he don't ever would Because I don't think he ever would have ever taken anybody down. I think he was much more concerned about... Now, he's quick-witted and he's capable of doing it. But I don't think he ever would... I think he was much more concerned about his legacy in the game I agree. and who he is and you know he's a mount rushmore coach he doesn't want to get involved it wasn't important to him he had plenty of money it wasn't important for him to to make friends in that business by attacking people he wasn't going to do that i know you love parcells i have a very complicated relationship with him because and he, i've never met him oh he saved football in new england Hey, he let gave, me tell you he gave something. me incredible patriots team let me again, tell you something. and i still think he screwed up people the Super Bowl. have no idea what he did for that franchise. He saved it. It was the worst scenario. Worst. I went up there with him, and I don't tell a lot of stories like this, but I'll, I'll tell you do. one. Yeah, I'll tell this you is one. what we want. America wants No, this. I'll just tell you one. This though. is a good I one. went up there with him, and he took that job. And he took that job, what people don't realize, he took the job because of Paul Tagliabue. Paul Tagliabue was off wine, was going to sell that team, was going to take the team to St. Louis. St. Louis, believe and, me. And I they was didn't there. want him to take the team to St. Louis. Yeah. So they said, listen, Bill, come to New England. Coach this team till we can find an owner that can sell it because with you here, we can sell it. Yeah. And then we can keep the team here because we don't want the team going to St. Louis. And Northwine gave me basically one year to sell the team. So the team was for sale the whole time. Bill goes in there. The facilities were so bad. There was, they had, they had like 9,000 season tickets. I mean, the thing was an absolute, absolute joke. And I remember saying to him, and his agent at the time was Robert Fairley, who died in a plane crash with, and he was Bill's, Bill was yeah. Fairley's first client. He was yeah. number one. They numbered his clients. He was number one on the client list because he was his first client ever. And I said to Robert, I said, Robert, get him X number of dollars per season ticket that he sells because he's going to fill the building. They have no season ticket. They had like 9,000 season tickets. And he didn't do that, but he, I, I, that's what I would have done if I was his agent because I, I knew he was going to fill a place. And within two years, what he had done with that franchise, and you realize all your great players were players he drafted. You look at all your foundation guys, except for Tom Brady, who I understand. But you look at all those defensive players, though, in the beginning, when they won before Brady became Brady. And you know, they, Tom won a Super Bowl before he was great. His first Super Bowl, he was along for a ride, except for one play. Hey, he was a rookie. Yeah, he did nothing. Bledsoe saved the game in Pittsburgh, and he was a, he made one play at the end of the game. That was basically it in, 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 right, in the well, Ram game. Come on, it wasn't he that He did bad. nothing in that no, game. Listen, I love Tom nice Brady. Touchdowns. He did nothing in that game, though. Let's be nice honest. corner pass. Let's be honest, David Patton. He, didn't, he was not the reason. Ty Law should have been the MVP in that game, I always thought. The, the point is, though, but your, your, your Brewskis and your Willie McGinnises and all those guys and Vrabel and, and all the guys. Vinatieri. Vinatieri. I'll, I'll tell you a Vinatieri, great Vinatieri story. Vinatieri, they're playing in, in the year they go to the Super Bowl. They open 0-2 that year. They're 0-2. They're the third 96 game. Pats you're talking right. about. Yeah. They go open 0-2. Their third game. They had the Cardinals, and I knew they were going to win. I just, knew, you know, I, I knew that week they were going to, that they were going to be loaded for Bear that week. They had, they, they were 0 2, and he was nuts. Yeah. Late in that game, someone could look it up. Vinatieri, he made Vinatieri go out and kick a, he was worried about Vinatieri. He was going to cut him. Vinatieri kicked a long field goal. He put Vinatieri out in, in the fourth quarter when he wouldn't have kicked a field goal and made him kick a long field goal in the fourth quarter of that game. Like as a tester? As a test. As a test, and he would have been cut if he missed that field goal. So here's the and thing. he wound up being a, one of the all time great kickers, top four. And find me that game on in '96, game three of the season when they won like 51 to nothing or 48 to nothing or whatever it was, and get me when he kicked a field goal in the fourth quarter. So our best team of that Parcells era was the team the year after he left. Everything was building toward that year. We sneak in in the Super I use we like I'm on the team. We sneak in the Super Bowl the year before because Denver loses to Jacksonville in Mile High. And because Denver Belichick was came back and did a great job helping Belichick coach that up. defense. But here's why I blame Parcells. The stuff with him and Kraft oh, was, should oh, not have come out before the listen, Super Bowl. I've never I think it hurt I, the not, team. I'm not telling any stories. I know, I know you're not, but I, it, I was there. admit that it hurt the team. It was, it was a distraction we didn't need. I think was, we could have beaten the Packers. I don't know if they, they were not as good as that way. team. 
They were not as good as the Packers. We could have beaten them. They the could football. have beaten them because they you could move play. it. Yeah. yeah, and 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 they had made and they had said. I mean, one of their one of their big things that week was no kickoffs down the middle to Desmond Harris at all. It yeah. was a rule they put up that week. And yeah. what they do after they had the long drive. They kicked it right down the middle. I wonder, him. 20 years later, I wonder if he regrets not just putting a cap on anything about that story until after the playoffs. Because that was one of the messiest well, Boston see, media stories ever. They, McDonough was I don't, involved. I like, think they, let me just say this about that, because there's been a lot written and a lot said, and yeah. I've never said a word. And I can tell you right now that uh, there's stuff that only Will and myself and... Craft and Bill saw because I was the only other one there. And Will, yeah. I, Will said he was there. They never mentioned I was there. I was there because I was in the room watching the the uh, Carolina championship game on the TV. I had my feet up on the desk watching yeah. while they're three feet away talking. So they were three feet away while it was going on. I was there. So uh, I, I was at that game. And so, you can't talk about any of this. No, stuff. I've never talked about to it. Club and, Omerta. Yeah, I've no, I've no, I never, I wouldn't. It's not right because I was in a room I shouldn't have been in. And, you know, like I, I can't talk you about You know what? That. The more I'm thinking but about they, this, they were both wrong. Let me just yes, say that. I they were agree. both wrong yeah. in retrospect, but in the middle of that kind of feud, you can't see straight. You know what I mean? It's they such both, a shame because we win the next year. They should have put it away. Yeah. They should have put it away three weeks before. Three weeks before they should have put it away. Now I'm getting upset again. Yeah, but that, I mean, listen, that you happens. Know what? I, but, you know, but he did such a great job. Why is New York guy involved job. in this? I think he, he might have so sabotaged us. I didn't have Did you do a New York it. sabotage on us? No, I really didn't. I really didn't. Why but are you I, I the fourth guy hey, in the room? You're not even a Patriot fan. Well, I was up there to watch the, here's why I was there. The only reason I was in the room, and, and they, I never knew Kraft was coming I in that day. I just put it together. I'm like the no, guy at the end of the usual you, suspects. Let me tell you, you honestly. You're telling Parcells, you got to no, no, get out of here. No, no, just no, tell him before you. Easter Bowl, get out of here. I was up to watch the game, which was a 4 o'clock game, with them in Jacksonville, the AFC Championship game. I remember. I was watching the, I wanted to watch the Carolina Green Bay game. Yeah. Which was the first game. I was watching it when all of a sudden, here comes Kraft into the office. Bill was working. Yeah. He was going, he was getting dressed. He had already gotten dressed. He'd been out in the field once he came back in. Yeah. And all of a sudden, here comes Kraft. Well, how did I know they were both going to come in an hour before? This is at three o'clock. Was this after you poisoned Parcells against all the Boston teams? Not yet. No, not yet. I hadn't done that yet. I but, never no. realized. I never did that. No, I never. I, were, I never you did. weren't there but for I'll the tell you something. Gate, were you? I'll were tell you, you something. Holding the ga gauges let for me the tell you this. No, but let me tell you this. Let me tell you this. He did such an incredible job he building did. that franchise. It was amazing. That was one of the, and the shameful thing, the thing that Except always bothered for me, Butts. the only thing that bothered me was he should have been able to stay there and reap the benefits of that. I agree. For, for so many years, but it just got, you know, some things, and I, like I said, I'm not trying to say pick sides. I'm not trying to say pick sides. Did Kraft change? Yes, he changed dramatically. Because early on, he was like, Bill, I just love being here with you, and I love you. And then two minutes later, he thinks he knows everything. I mean, yeah. that goes on. All right, that, but it's his prerogative. It's his money. By the way, how many sports owners have done right. that? It's Where his, they learn three it's years his in. Money. Like, oh, I but should trust also, these guys. Bill's got to understand he's an employee. As long as one of the guys paying the check, he's an employee. So... I'm not saying there wasn't wrong on both sides, but what what bothers me from it, just from his standpoint, is what I saw him build there in a couple of years was so amazing because it was so bad when he got there, and it was so good four years later. It's remarkable what they built there. It really is. We I don't even know what the modern sports comparison is to how sad the Patriots were. We had the worst owners. Oh. We had the worst stadium. Oh, we had Victor no hope. Kaya, we move. Michael Jackson concerts. Yeah, I mean, it was, the it was whole a thing. catastrophe. Vic McPherson, right? Yeah. Nine and thirty nine. What about Victor Kaya making yeah. Victor Lisa Kayyem. Olsen jokes after the Lisa Olsen and, thing? He's and, making and, jokes about and it. And the team was like nine and thirty nine before he got there. We were there. terrible. I mean, yeah, that's what I agree. And that's why people look what you got as a residue of him it's going unbelievable. in. Unbelievable. Look at the 20 years you got out of that. Thing. We've had like this 22 year run of football. Well, no one ever knew unparalleled. Belichick, Brady, you know, Brady, you know, Dick, you know, Dick Raybon, you know, he was you the know man. Yeah. remember him because he's the one who come up with Tom Brady. Yeah. But hey, at least they were smart enough to draft him. So that's, you know, and, and to utilize him. And Belichick's done an incredible job. Forget all the other stuff. He's just done an incredible job. The reality job. is, and it doesn't matter what sport you're talking about, you need luck. And like Golden, you do need luck. Golden Absolutely. State's Look, in this San Antonio. How about Golden State? Minnesota passes on Curry twice. They take two other point guards. That's the only reason. Sometimes you just got to be decade. lucky. You need you lucky. Know, sometimes you just got to be lucky because let's be honest. Okay, okay, you got to be lucky because sometimes you just don't know. You, you know you don't. All right, all right. Did Jerry West 
pull a fast one when he's strong arm teams about Kobe Bryant that you know and get Kobe Bryant to play along with that draft? Yes. Were they diabolical? Yes. That's how he fell so far. You know, and he was, and that's we're going to take him. They basically got, they were told, they basically spooked, yeah. don't take them. They were told, you're not going to ever get them. You're never getting them. You know, that kind of thing. So, you know, these teams are shrewd sometimes, you know, and sometimes you just got to be lucky. Look at the Sixers, right? Hinky gets, Hinky's out already. If they get Carl Towns last year, which they had the best odds for, he's there for three more years because Towns is going to be incredible. Everybody knows he's a franchise guy. They don't get him and now he's out. Uh, you need luck. Yeah, you do. All right, take a quick break. We'll be right back. I dip tobacco. Now, 1-800-294-2339. All right, right now, box office splits third caller, 866-540-WFN. And win a pair of field level tickets to the Yankee Steak on the Rockies Tuesday, uh, June 21st at Yankee Stadium. First pitch, 705. You can get tickets. Uh, you know where you can get them at the Yankee Stadium box office. This is from Jersey Mike Subs. And the fan will give you a chance each hour. Now, if you've never spent a, if you've ever spent a night on luxury sheets, you know how great they are. But you say, I don't know if I can afford them right now. We're, we're in the markup from department stores. But you don't have to worry about that with Bowl and Branch. Because with Bowl and Branch, you get them directly from the factory. You save because there's no middleman. And you get something that's worth a very good amount of money for a reasonable amount of money. And that's why Bowl and Branch is doing as well as they are. They're 100% pure organic cotton, which means they're soft. And also, that's why Bowling Branch is doing so well. You can check it out. Wall Street Journal, Forbes, CNN. Three U.S. presidents have slept on them. Bowling Branch is so confident you'll love their sheets. They'll give them to you for 30 days risk-free. One night's all you'll need, and it's spring, so freshen up your bedding and check out their new line of undyed sheets and throw blankets. Right now, listeners can get 20% off the entire order at bowl, B-O-L-L, and branch.com. Use promo code WFAN. That's bowl and branch.com, promo code WF. A N. You know, I was telling you before, Bill, before we move on to the game, my recollection in that game was, I just looked it up. Then it, they were up 28 the nothing. Game? Yeah, they were up 20, yeah. 28 nothing. Yeah. With 30 seconds left. And he kicked a field goal. And I remember saying to him after the game, I said, why are you running up to score on the Cardinals? And he said, listen, I've had it with that kicker. And he had missed a field goal earlier in the fourth, in the third quarter. And I sent him out there. And it was a 30-something yard field goal. It turned out to be a 31. I just looked it up. And if he had missed it, I would have cut him. He said, and I told him, you better make this kick before I sent him out there. You better make this kick. And he made the kick, and he gained confidence little by little, and look who he became, Vinatieri. But his career was on the wow. line in that game. So that and was secretly one of the most important kicks in Patriots think history. Think about it. And it was 36 seconds left. Bill would have just, you know, kicked the ball back on fourth down. It was 30 seconds left. They are 28-nothing. You know, or just take a knee on fourth down, run into the line. There's 20 seconds left in the game. He kicked the field goal. And I remember the reason it stuck in my head because I asked him. And he said, I told the kid, you better make this field goal. I don't care. It's the biggest field goal of your life. He went out. He kicked it. And after that, he went on his way. Does he like Belichick or no? Uh, I, not really. I, I, no, I think they. I think they get along be well honest. now. I think be they. Honest. I think they get along well now. I really do. Really? Yeah. I think I they hope so. I think they do. You know, they used to have places in in, uh, in Florida live right on top of each other. They had places recently. Uh, they lived in the same building. So uh, I think they get along fine. I really do. I, I think this. They've had patches through the years, but I think they get along fine. Do you think Belichick is overrated, underrated, or properly rated? Um, properly rated. But I, agree. I, I finally figured it out. It took me a long time in my own mind to figure out who they both were, and I think I finally figured it out. Okay. Belich Bill is a better has a better eye for for talent and defensive talent specifically than Belichick does. And I think Belichick's drafts will show you that. Belichick is a better game planner, especially on defense, than Bill was. Bill's a better motivator. And he was a better talent evaluator. Belichick is a better uh, game planner. He is. He builds, and they used to argue a lot about how to defend certain things. Yeah. And Belichick way was a lot of times a smarter way. And I, I really think that Parcells is strength, and I think they're very close in terms of, I give Belichick one credit for one thing, that Parcells didn't have in his in his DNA, he could never stay put. Belichick's been able to stay put. One quarterback, one owner, the whole thing. 
Bill could never stay put. He was always thinking about the next place. For some, whatever reason, that's just in his, some people are like that. They're always on to the next thing. He was always on to the next franchise. So that's what hurt him because he should have stayed with the Pats. He should have stayed with the Jets. If he had stayed with either one of those, he would have won more Super Bowls. There's no question in my mind. Well, why did he leave the Jets? I forget. Uh, was that an Leon died. Thing? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Leon died. You know, you think about Belichick on that 96 Pats team that had was a year away from making the Super Bowl and made it anyway. Little reminiscent of when Tom Thibodeau was Doc Rivers' defensive lieutenant. Sometimes you just luck out. You have these overqualified guys who are your assistants who should really be one of the best five coaches in the league. And those were like the two of the only times I remember that happening, right? I mean, when you think about the staff he had with the Jets, he had on that staff Charlie Weiss, Romeo Cornell, Bill Belichick, Al Gro, um, uh, Haley. Yeah. Haley was on that Todd staff. Haley, yeah, yeah. He had, he had, I think if I remember right, and I'm forgetting somebody, he had six, I think, head coaches on the staff. Six head coaches on the one staff. So, Romeo Cornell gets an asterisk. <laughs> he was one of the worst coaches of the last 20 years. He's a good man. He I was, like Romeo. I know he's, he's a good, good man. Good coach. You know what else? He was a good man in my wallet because I love, I love gambling against him. He's a good coach. And he had Romeo Cornell was involved. Very good, I had the other Very team. good. He's got a lot of rings as a coordinator. All of my friends wanted me to ask you this. Do you gamble? Yes. Do you gamble on, on team sports or horses or both? Uh, only gamble on horses. You do not gamble on football? Once in a while. A little bit? Once in a while. Tiny bit? Football, that's it. Do you have a technique to gamble on football? Is there a strategy that you like? Do you, I, do you go against the grain? Do you like underdogs? Do you like money lines? What do you like? I analyze games. Matchups. I'm a matchup guy. Do you talk to people? No. So you analyze it almost like boxers, like styles make fights. Yeah, I'm a You're styles just looking guy. at styles yeah, make football it. bets. That's it. Yeah, I'm a styles guy. I'm a, I match team up against team B. That's it. And only only on football. That's it. What was your biggest and proudest football win of the past 10 years that you never talked about on the show? Um, I don't know. I mean, I'm, I'm trying Didn't to Didn't have like a Patriots over the Rams at Super Bowl 36? Although that was more than 10 years ago. No, I mean, you know. I'm not, I had that one. No, I had the I money mean, line. Because um, I'm a homer. Yeah, I had uh, Clemson last year had big odds to win the championship, so I was able to kind of middle out of that against Alabama because I had them. I bet them in May, in in June to win the championship. That's pretty good. Yeah, I had the Warriors last year when they were thirty to one. Yeah, that, Clemson was like twenty. I don't know what they were if I remember right. There was tw 18, 20 to one, something like that last year. So when yeah. you were in the eighties and you were the CBS information yeah. guy for Brent and all those people. Yeah. Oh, um, I got. I did pick ten bowls straight up. In one thing, I picked ten bowls straight up. I got them all right against the spread and straight up in one year. In one ball. In a what bowl year season. was that? That's I mean, it was like nineteen ninety or ninety two. It was in Time Magazine and stuff like that. So I did. I picked them all right, straight up and against the spread, all ten games. So you were you like this whole world? Yeah, the 80s. yeah. So yes, yes. And I did that on the air too. I was on the air. That wasn't like I did it and I said I did it. I but did there's it on no the internet air. back then. There's no, but I yeah, did. I didn't no, but I did it. it on. I did it on the show. That's I did, what I mean. Yeah, I did it on the, the show. Yes. Nowadays, somebody would be going. The internet yeah. would be going crazy about. Yeah, that. Yeah, I did. It was. And they wrote about it in Time Magazine, so they, they thought it was that special. They because I got them all straight up. Against the spread and straight, uh, and straight, I got the right winner, the right loser, and the spread right in all the games. There's three reasons I, I like gambling. One, Pete Axtom's inside sports uh, column. Well, I used to love that. Who wrote I like two he's books my with Pete Axtom? I know. Yeah. Pete, Pete Axtom, Axtom was, the greatest column. Pete Axtom was a the best, an, a, enormous gambler. Oh, I know. And loved me because I give him games. Yeah, and I would give him basketball games during the NCAA tournament because he loved. To wait. So he liked anybody who gave him information for and, and he, I did two books with him, and I I knew Pete very well. Pete was very good to me. I mean, he was like a, almost. And I'd he say was a great writer back in the, the day. Best. The so best. I, the his city column, game is one of the great sports of the books classics. of all time. So his Axel was a brilliant, brilliant. He was never great on TV because he didn't. He well, never he came was, across great on TV. End. But he never came across great on TV because he was so smart. Like if you saw him in Runyons, yeah. he was so witty and so smart. In person, never came across on TV like he did in person. He was great in person. So him, Jimmy the Greek on CBS. I, as a kid, I was always fascinated by this Jimmy the Greek. Well, I guy. worked for Jimmy. I wrote yeah, Jimmy's I column know. since I was a kid. Yeah, yeah, he had a big impact. I mean, then the third one was the Patriots in the late '80s were just horrendous, and it really ruined football for me. And I was like, how do I root for other teams? And one of my friends I used to go to like, Saratoga we should bet on the games. I, was I, used, like, to oh, to, great. I used to go to Saratoga with Jimmy the Greek as a, as a, as an 18 year old and run his bets to the window. I used to have to get up and make the bets. 
and he went betting a couple of bucks. This I was, was a long say, time ago. And I, a long him, and I used to, and he would be on a losing streak, and I'd be like, why am I not booking these bets? I mean, these bets are ridiculous. Oh, you say, say you took them to the window on the Yeah, end. and then just book them myself and just, you know, keep them. But if I lost, I'd have to come up with the money. And he was tough. He was like, he would have like beat the heck out of me. I mean, he was a tough, he was a tough guy. What people don't realize, he was a tough guy. He might not look like a tough guy. He was a, he grew up, he was a tough guy. When your ethnicity is in your nickname, you're probably a tough guy. Yeah. I mean, yeah. you know, so, uh, he used to, uh, he, in Steubenville, he had a tough background. You know, he grew up in the same area with Dean Martin. Yeah. As a matter of fact, Dean Martin used to beat him up as a kid, he told me. Until once he got big enough, we finally beat up Dean Martin, and they became lifelong friends. But Dean Martin used to beat him up in the neighborhood. So uh, the bottom line is, but I used to book his, I used to take his bets to the window. Yeah. And he would bet long shots. And I'm talking about, you're going back into the 70s and early 80s. He'd be betting $200 exact to boxes. Yeah, on his on his bets, and bookies love that. But these, no, you know, you take them right to the window. No, no but no, I'm no, just yeah. saying in general, people right. love the long well, shot parlays. Thinking, man, all this I gotta think about booking. I mean, that's a lot yeah. of money. I'm a kid. I mean, you I'm, ta take I'm taking a, I'm taking basically, you know, half of my salary to the window every race. Right. Okay. At the time, <laughs> until the thought got out of my head when. He bet a twenty-four to one shot over a forty-five to one shot. Had a two hundred dollar exactor on it. And it came back. The exactor came back like two thousand dollars. Oh my god! So times a hundred. You think right? he spent that that night? Yeah, no, but he showed it to every, he showed the ticket to everybody in the whole track. Was he a sad guy? He seemed like kind of a sad. Well, he had guy. a you know a big drinking problem. You know the story? Right? No, yeah. no, no. He never drank a problem. Oh, no. what was his what was his issue? Well, no, no, I know the story about we did the thirty for thirty about it. Well, you know about his mother. I don't remember. His that. mother was killed by the uh, next one, the uncle. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. He killed yeah. the mother and the sister in law. Yeah, shot them both in the head. He yeah. came home to that. Okay, yeah, um, to a, a, a father, to an uncle who killed both his mother and his and his and his aunt. Oof. And he had cystic fire product children which he worked with for all those years right uh he had uh, uh that's why he moved to vegas we moved to vegas for a couple of years he worked for howard Hughes for you know, he's t i can't even tell the stories because i swore the secrecy but he worked for howard Hughes for seven years so how about those stories i've heard them he worked for howard Hughes for seven years jimmy the greek is dead you could tell those no stories. i can't i Both promise i always, I always promised i always you? promised i wouldn't but i'm telling you he was i did i worked with him he, he, my stories with him are some of the funniest stories in my life i tell him once in a while the people that i can trust some of the stories that i mean he was hilarious absolutely not hilarious haha -ha, just hilarious with some of the stuff he did he was a, a, unbelievable Why and he you... had certain people he was incredibly loyal to but he had the best connect like people would think oh jimmy's just making this stuff up okay like you know he'd give like his greek corner and he'd have the, his greek grapevine and they'd think he'd be making this stuff up do you know that on Saturday night sometimes if he had an, had an, a, a, like he had to do something, he had an outing or an affair or something, I'd have to wait and take the phone calls on Saturday night for the stuff for the Greeks Corner on Sunday. The calls would come in from senators, from owners, from Al Davis personally. They would come in from all over the league, and I would take the calls and take the information down. Jimmy's out, it's Mike, blah, blah, blah. Al Davis, be Al Davis, Al Davis, Senator Paul Axalt, uh, I, owners. Uh, I'm telling you, it was legit. It was coming from those people. Wow. Then they might have been playing them a little because they wanted to get the information out that they wanted. Like they wanted to, you know, there was a thing going on which people never realized. Al Davis and the commissioner battled through that show for years. They were at each other's throats forever. One of the great feuds of all time was Al Davis and and Roselle. It was a blood feud. Top four feuds. Right. Roselle would give the information to, to Brent, and he'd put it into the show, and Greek would give the uh, and Al would give the information to Greek, and they would battle with the information right on the show. No do one knew you, it was going on. That, that's how they both would, would give the information out. Why do you think there hasn't been a Jimmy the Greek for like this decade on any of these shows? Somebody, because I think that... The networks are too afraid of it? No, because the, the world changed. Jimmy the Greek was great at one thing. He was great at something that's been very good to like you and me. He became a brand. You're a brand. I'm a brand. 
you know, if you're lucky enough in this business, you get to be a brand. Jimmy was a brand, and Jimmy became who didn't know the word Jimmy? Who didn't know Jimmy the Greek? Right. So Jimmy the Greek, Jimmy the Greek could go anywhere. And Jimmy, think about this. And I never Jimmy could have cashed in. I always say this. Jimmy said to me at the end, and the last couple of years he was very bitter. I didn't have time for him. I was busy. He used to call me up and yell at me because he'd be like, you're big time in me. Now you're in the business. I see you on TV. And I'm like, Greek, what can I do for you? When he was, he was unhappy. He was, he was not a happy man at the end. He was railing about everything. Yeah. And I felt bad when I'd listen to his calls, but like he'd yell at me on the phone and stuff, you know, and I felt bad for him, but I really couldn't help him. There's nothing I could do. You know, he needed a place to go and he didn't have anywhere to go. You know, it's like he had no life at the end. So, uh, he wanted, you know, Jimmy used to say, what's your favorite place, Greek? Uh, what's your favorite racetrack? He'd say the one I'm closest to, that kind of thing, you know? But Jimmy said to me, hey, I'm going off this weekend to uh, an Indian reservation. I'm like, what? He goes, they're paying me to bring me in. This is going to be a real big deal in this country. The Indians are going to have a lot of gambling on their reservations. I'm like, what are you talking about? <laughs> Little did I know that that law was going to get passed where... You have Mohegan Sun and fuck yeah. because of the Indian land and how they've made a zillion dollars. Greek knew about this before it even happened. He knew about it. He was involved in it. I'm telling you, if he had been still well, he would have been, you know, he was very sick at the end. He knew about this. He knew this was coming. He, he and his guys knew this. It was, uh, he had major connections to everybody. Now, you know, he did a lot of blustery things that were a bunch of baloney, you know, that, to create his image. And he went too far in that area. But he really was legit in a lot of different things where he knew every, there was no one who didn't know him. There was no one, like, in, wherever you went, everybody knew him. Everybody I've learned so many him. things during this show so far, but none more uh, illuminating than the fact that you ruined the 96 Super Bowl for me. I, how did I you ruin po it? You poisoned it. I don't know why a New York guy is even involved. You know that? I, was, I blame you and the story's going to come out. Listen, you here's the eerie thing. against Kraft. I, I was heartbroken. Did. I bet on the Patriots, first of all, they pushed because it was a 14-point line. And yeah, they lost by that. 14. Yeah. Okay, so I still line. remember that. Yeah. I sat, you want an eerie thing? I sat in what was the... In a good seat at the game between, and this is eerie. Yeah. I sat between Robert Fairley and Payne Stewart. What? Who were at the game together, both friends of Parcells. I sat in those same seats. Oh I sat God. between Fairley and Payne Stewart. How weird is that? That's weird. I had never met Payne until that day. I had never met him. He came to the game. And I actually wound up in the seat. Somehow I got the seat between, because Payne brought someone to the game. Robert was sitting over here. I wound up sitting in the same row, because Bill gave me the seats, and they were really good seats, obviously. So he gave me the seat for the game. I watched the game in the stand. I sat between Robert Fairley, who I knew very well, and Payne, who I had never met before. And how much longer were they dead? I mean, how weird is that? That's bizarre. I mean, they were in that jet together, obviously, and perished. But how weird is that that I sat at a Super Bowl, and we were all rooting like crazy. So I rooted like crazy for the Pats in that game. I was heartbroken that they lost that game. How many Super Bowls have you been to? I've been to a lot of games. I've left before the, the game a lot of times. Okay. But, you know, because I, I think the game's awful unless I have a rooting interest for a couple of reasons. One, I hate that the next day's ruined, okay? So, like, I like to get out of there and be here so I can talk about the game the next day rather than still be somewhere else. Right, right, right. And number two, I hate the Super Bowl when I don't have a rooting interest because the game is so long with so many stoppages. It's like it doesn't even feel like a game to me because there's just too many commercials, stoppages of play. You got to be in the building so many hours early. So, but I've been to about 30, 30 something Super Bowls and I've probably been to Best about. One? Uh, Giants Bills, not even close. Giants Bills, not even close. Not even close. Best game, best scene. Best, first of all, it's a gameplay without a turnover. Great flow back and forth. It was like a great fight. And you had the Gulf War. We had got there Whitney. that week. Whitney. Okay. The Gulf War, the scene there, the patriotism, the game. You know, Bill was so confident they were going to win that game. I, I can't even tell you how confident he was they were going to win that game. And, and the whole thing and the ebb and flow. You know, Hostetler almost getting knocked out in, and somehow holding onto the ball, which is a safety. And at 12 3, if they don't start that drive out before the half and take up the rest of the first half, see, the amazing thing there is Kelly didn't touch the ball for like an hour and a half. Yeah. Because they had an eight minute drive into the half and a nine minute drive out of the half. And it went from 12 3 down to 17 12 up. And then they were able to come back and forth. But that game had so many ebbs and flows and back and forth and no turnovers. 
great atmosphere, last second game. You know, the Giant fans were going nuts after the game. That that was the best Super Bowl for me. So you value the no turnovers thing. That's interesting. Uh, oh, it was, you know, the game was crisp. Yeah, it was yeah. really, it wasn't so sloppy. The performance mess. was high for you. Yeah, really high. That's why I love Georgetown, North Carolina, too. I was at that game. I did. That was the first year I did the tournament for CBS. I was maybe 15 feet from Jordan when he made that shot uh, on the standing court side because we, right. we were getting ready to go on the air. Yeah. And I, I saw Freddie throw the pass. You know, I was at this end when Freddie threw the pass. The shot came this way towards me, and then Freddie threw the pass that way away from the court because we were setting up to go back on the air after the sh after the game. I was working that the, that show, so uh, I remember that very well. But that was the best game basketball game I've ever seen in my life. And you know what? My most impressive basketball well, the best game I ever saw was the was the in person was the uh, Memorial Day Massacre. I never saw a team play better than that in my life. Oh, I was, I was there. So we were both yeah, at that game. I was there. But the best game I ever remember. My most impressive game I was ever at for an NBA final uh, was Walt uh, Bird's twenty point finish that night in in game in game four. His finish in the fourth quarter in the overtime in game four uh, when they lost game five badly and then lost game six back one twelve one oh five in eighty what was that eighty five. Oh, to the Lakers. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, His game four performance that night in the fourth quarter in overtime was the best performance I ever saw in my life. That was in L.A. And I'll tell you this, if they were going home for game five, they would have won that series. Game five, we hung around a couple more days. Game five, they came out. They must have made the, the first, first year they switched it. Yeah, they must have made yeah. 15 shots in a row in the, in the first half of the second of the game five. Game five was a blowout, if you remember. Game Magic, five was a blowout. Magic and I used to argue about the mid-80s, and he said the Lakers were better because they won two and Boston won one. But 86 was our best team, and the Lakers never showed up. Yes. So it's like, really? It was two That's two. what, it was what like, happened. No, you is, can't do that because you didn't show up in 88. Is that, is that, unfortunately, he beat the Rockets twice, which was unfortunate. You know, they well, beat, the, yeah. I, I still feel in my heart that the Lakers no showed the 86 finals. You might be right. I mean, listen, that, you know, that 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 whole thing though. We killed them that year. Yes, we we're so well, much that bigger than that. Eighty-six team was unbelievable. I mean, you know, yeah, yeah. It actually a good Walton coming off the bench. I oh, mean, we and Wedman and all those guys. Team. It was you a know, great they only team. Lost one home game, fifteen one at home. That was a great which team. Is one of I my agree. Favorite records. You know, and that's a team that you know. Now listen, there's been a lot of great Celtic teams as we know. Yeah, but that, that was, was a great. One. That was well, the depth was unbelievable. When you have a Walton on the bench who was playing well at the time, uh, well, Wedman, guys like that. When you're comparing eras. There's only 21 teams back then. Yep. If it's a 30-team league in 1986, we don't have Kevin McHale. He's just not on the team. He's playing for, you know, Memphis. And that's it. And it's not the greatest team anymore. No. I think 21 teams, it was so much easier to kind of stack a oh, team with look six, how seven stacked great guys. The team was. Lakers, same thing. I mean, oh, the two teams were on. You know, I did, I did almost every one of those final games. I went, yeah. I went to every game. We used to go with back Brent. and forth and yeah, and back and forth and back. And I'd be in that arena five o'clock for a nine o'clock game. It's kind of amazing they let Heinzen announce those games. <laughs> well, you know, they, <laughs> the, they, the they, biggest they homer of to, all time. I love Tommy Heinzen, by the way. They used to take unbelievable grief. Yeah. When they they should have. Oh, I would have oh. gone nuts if I was a Laker oh, was fan. It crazy. Oh, was it crazy? Oh, they used to go nuts at the set. I mean, I used to be on the set. They used to go crazy. They really they did. All right, let's take a break here as we finish up another hour. We've got a lot to talk to. Oh, listen, we got to get back to some stuff here because I've been talking about my old stories here. Well, we, we get back to, I gotta get back to you. And Odor's punch. we got to talk about Odor's Punch. We'll get to it. Back after this. Adding the choice of a crispy chicken BLT to Wendy's. Mike's on. He's ready to go. All right, 305 here on The Fan on a Monday where we're sit Bill Simmons is sitting in for the entire show. Bud Sealy's going to join us in an hour. Um, I wanted to get to, before we get to some, we'll get to some sports stuff a little later and, you know, current stuff like the NBA tonight and everything else. Um, uh, back to the HBO so I understand. Yeah. Now, June 22nd is the first show. Yeah. Name of the show is what again? Any Given Wednesday. Any Given Wednesday. Yeah. Okay. How many, how many shows a year is it going to be? Is it going to be half a year, full year? What's it going to be? I'm doing 20 this year, and then I think I do 30 next year, and 35 in the third year. And HBO produces, right? Yeah. And where do you do it from? Los Angeles, California. Okay. Yeah. All right. Now that's um, where my office is. That's where everything is. Are they built? Do you have? Are you going to use anybody's existing studio? You're going to yeah, build yeah, a yeah. studio. 
you, you're basically building inside somebody else's studio. Gotcha. Yeah, okay. Yeah. And have you decided, are you, do you have anybody else who's going to be part of the show, like even for a voiceover person or somebody like that, or is it just you? No, just me. And have you done a set already? No, we, we have a bunch of test shows coming up. I mean, we've, we've had enough time. In, in front I, of an audience, right? No, no audience. Oh, no audience. Yeah. Well, no we're audience. taping everything. Oh, no, so no yeah. audience at all. Okay. No. So just you and a set and that's it. Yeah, and a whole bunch of... They, are you going to bring guests in or are you going to put them on two ways? No. We're going to bring them in. Or bring them in. Yeah. Okay. I mean, if Obama's like, I'll, I'll come in, but I only want to do it on a two-way, I'd be like, it. okay, fine, Obama. So if it's an A guest, you put them on a two-way? I would say A plus. Okay. A plus guest on a two-way. Okay. Yeah. Um, and the show is a half hour? Half hour. I mean, there's a chance it could expand to an hour if we just decide that's a better length down the road, but it's better to go half hour. The conversations are going to be the biggest part and the most important part, and if people like them and maybe they should be 10 minutes longer then we'll figure it out is this going to be all sports or is it going to be no sports uh pop culture tech oh really um so you can do you want to do, you want to do a, you want to do movies or a political show you can oh, do it. yeah you yeah. have complete control over that stuff yes you do. Well, i have control over like what what what's going to be on it yeah that's what i mean you have yeah that's yeah. what i mean yeah you don't have to consult with anybody about what's on the show or anything like that no i mean it's going to to me it's like I mean, you know this. There's not a lot of fun sports people to interview. No, no. The athletes, not for the most no. part, are just not oh, that good. First of all, I, I've yeah. never liked talking to players. Because players, very rare player, while he's playing, that he has any perspective on anything. Or I he's going to be afraid to say no, anything. No, they can't say anything. They College can't. coaches are the all-time worst. They yes. have that, they, hey, the kids are great. We're That's doing it. great. Oh, I'm That's so it. proud of them. Unless it's you get like Calipari in the right moment Calipari, on the show. Yeah, Calipari. On the show, he blows things up a couple of times. Punchy. That's yeah, it. he's good. good. Especially when he gets mad at me. So I mean, Parcells really, yeah. was a gift from the gods yes. for, for coaching interviews. <laughs> Anytime he gave an interview, it was the most riveting thing ever. And his press conferences were the His press conferences, especially in the heyday, Giants, last four years, Giants, New England, those press conferences were all-time classics. I mean, I wish I had the reels for them. I could sell them for big money. Well, they were hilarious. Don't you feel like Rob, that Belichick and Popovich, who everybody, by all counts, say are really gregarious, interesting, conversational guys off of, out of the loop. Right. They just choose to punt on press conferences and interviews. I don't know why they do it that way. Parcells kind of was a performer a little bit oh, loved some of it. these things and really kind of enjoyed it. Loved the give and take in that yeah. stuff. That was his form. That was really where he, that was him. He, that If that was the him that you get to see if you really knew him, yeah, yeah, was yeah. the guy, not on TV, the, not the guy during the games or anything, the guy sitting in the press conference on a Wednesday or a Thursday or even after a game, if the game had gone well, that was him. That well, was sure the, the guy. I'm sure the Giants fans listening, this will resonate with them too. But for the Boston fans, we had had just this parade of like drunk managers and people who are just nice coaches who were just fine. And Don Cherry was really the only interesting coach or yeah, he was manager we ever had. Yeah. Parcells came in and he just owned everybody right away. It was like we had never seen anything like this guy. He dropped from another planet. And it was an amazing four years. It really was. He was. And he had a lot of, you know, Parcellsisms. He had a lot of, he had a lot of terms. You know, he, he, he oh, had yeah, no so question. many. And they were great. They really were. He also taught us about like just the value of like he would bring in his guys. Yes. That and was a very big deal. Guys you could for, rely on. Yeah. Yeah. And it, some of them were kind of washed up or almost washed up. Yep. And he didn't care because he wanted to bring people in who could kind of prove to everybody else how to do it. And he could trust them yeah. in a big spot. He liked people he could rely on. You know, he had to earn it. You know, he was going to motivate. See, I always said about him, he could motivate anybody. I don't care if it's the waiter in the restaurant or if it, if you put him in front of a sales staff that was sluggish, I guarantee you, he would have him run out of the building. Right. He was one, the single best motivator I've ever seen. He, there's nobody he could not press their buttons to motivate them to do something. He, and he used to believe, I, and he told me this. He said, you know, I said, did you ever worry about pushing? He goes, the human being never, ever goes near, near their capacity. There's so much more they That's can give that yeah. they don't give. I never, ever worried that I was anywhere near anywhere. He says, I knew I had a mile to go if I could push him. And he really believed that, that the human being wasn't even close to their capacity. Well, I think in retrospect, he did a great job with Bledsoe because Bledsoe, we always thought Bledsoe was like the golden boy, the superstar, next Aikman, all that stuff. 
And then after Parcells, his career went a certain way, and it was a big divide with Patriot fans. Is this guy great or not? I was always in the, he's not that great. When Brady took over, I really thought we had a better chance to win with him. But I think Parcells got a lot out of him. To get Bledsoe to a Super Bowl was a good thing. All right. Uh, you're going to be doing this for a long time. I hope so. All right. And, and I hope so, too. But when I look at it now, yeah, and I never wanted to be the guy to get out at a certain point and then say, oh, you know what? Sports thinks. You know how everyone gets out at the end? Like how would, I mean, like Cosell got out and said, oh, sports but is... But we sport. still love sports. Yeah, you I, see, I, I mean, do. I mean, yeah. You know, I love the games and I love, and that, I really love watching the game. Like, I'm always a good, re ready to watch a good game. I mean, I'm always Me ready too. to analyze a good game. I can get lost in the game. So, uh, you know, I love that. But the point is, I never wanted that. There's a lot converging right now. The technology the platforms you see that now with just the stuff you're doing and i said this to when i in a speech i gave recently i said listen this is about content on multiple platforms that's where we are now we're in a different world now yeah. than we used to be in our business is changing radio tv what, what no, i your do your business changed uh, and, yeah. yeah and i mean people, you're one of the last yeah, people like, haven't successes. figured out yeah. that it, you know people have what they've lost and what radio and tv have forgotten here is they forgot how to monetize the digital world they have not yet figured out the standard so they have really confused the advertisers they really the advertisers don't know what which end is up when someone comes in with the right formula for the advertisers they're gonna make a lot of money because the advertisers right now don't know which end is up they don't know where to spend what to spend on what to, should i go to digital should i not go to digital should i go to this stuff I, what about a podcast what about a, a website what about conventional tv what about Conventional radio, whatever. They don't know what end is up anymore. They don't know where to get a bang for their buck anymore. And that's what whoever figures that out and streamlines it is going to get very, very wealthy. Well, with The Ringer, you know, we've added tech and that whole side to this. Grantland was sports and pop culture, which people thought at the time, like, why are you merging those two things together? And it's like, because... Because they all merge together. Yeah, because people are going to care about Game of Thrones the same way they care about the NBA playoffs. It it's, erased it's a long time ago. Yeah. Sports gets covered like Hollywood got covered in the 50s. And I think tech now is in that conversation. When we launch The Ringer next month, you know, we want to cover tech the same way we would talk about sports and pop culture. Like, for me, Facebook, Snapchat, Twitter... All these different places are determining the future of mankind. Right. So right that now. and that's and you understand. So you understand Netflix, that you understand Hulu. all that stuff. Yeah. And it has changed. I mean, the old way of doing things is over. I mean, this is the, these guys are all players. If you don't see it, I, I told someone recently. I said, listen, they were asking me for advice. I said, you know what I do? I'd go knock on. I gave them like three companies and said, knock on their doors. They're all getting in sports. Amazon, Apple. Google, the Netflix, they're all getting in sports big time. Because sports is the, the best live content that is unscripted. It's the best content you can have. It's priceless. That's why it makes so, that's why these teams are making so much money. It's content is king and sports is at the top of the list. There was some study about the 100 top rated shows that people watch live because everybody DVRs are on demands everything now. 93 of them were sports. And the other Out Academy the Awards, yeah, the Grammys. Yeah, and award shows. They're award shows. That's all there is. And probably a couple Game of Thrones. That's, and that's it. it. That's yeah. it. You love that Game of Thrones, well, it's man. Well, it reaches like 20 million people. You know, it's amazing it's, how that show... you out for some reason. No, nah, you know what? I didn't get in... What happens is you don't get in in the beginning of those shows, and you just never say, ah, oh, I'll catch They're up, I'll online. catch up. You can just bang you know? them out. So I never got in the beginning of it because it's just not my... You know... That kind of stuff just, I like, I'd like just much more conventional stuff, you know, it just, just my, my way. Or, I, you know, you can give me, like, give me a good romance, give me a good, uh, a good you know, romance. Yeah, okay. absolutely. I like that. Boy meets girl, boy loses girl, so boy like gets girl back. Absolutely. Okay. You know, supposedly hey, the lobster's good. That's hey, how you any take of that your stuff. Wife. The bottom line is, though, rather than the stuff where they're, you know, in this, like, what, where are they? What, where is that supposed to be set in? What is the time period that's supposed I to be set in? Futuristic Ramka, the lobster. No, no, what about Game of Thrones? Where, what oh, is the time frame? It's unclear. That, like, it's, what do you think it is? How would you describe um, it to somebody? I, I don't even know. It's in the, it's, it's in a different universe. I think it's in a parallel universe. So you don't even know if that's present or past or future i feel like it's past okay past see now all the book nerds are gonna get mad at me i don't know i've never tried to overthink See, that's the thrones. first thing i tried to figure out is all yeah. right when is this i i always assumed it was in and the where past. is this 
it's in a, in a different universe that doesn't actually exist. That, that's the first things I was looking for. You know, I was looking for, you know, the next taxi. I mean, basically, where was the car? You know, <laughs> next <laughs> taxi. You know, <laughs> you know where was the, the bottom line is, you know, I got a guy and a guy, that lady saying, you can't touch me. I'm the eighth wife of Thor or whatever. I'm like, who the heck? Get out of here. I don't know. You know, the blonde's like saying all, you know, I saw her picture. She was in GQ a couple months ago. Very yeah, pretty. Yeah, she is. But like she was the eighth car of something or all. I'm like, give me a break. I mean, come on. Whatever. That's what I mean, you know? Yeah. Wait, going back to what we were talking about, about where things are going. Yeah. And this is something that I'm obsessed with and I'm going to be obsessed with my show and the website that we're working on. Like say, like the position you're in, right? You're going to, re you're going to retire from this show in a year. Yes. Is that definite, 100%? Yeah, 100%. So, and, you know, the old school model as well, I got to figure out what I'm going to do. Should I be on another radio show? Should I be on TV? Like, you could be Facebook living this show right now. No, I right just want to do, what I'm going to do is, you can reach people I can say, you want I've to reach had them. about five or six companies come after me to do podcasts. Yeah. And I will do some podcasts. When I say I'm not retiring, I, I mean that I'm not going to stop broadcasting. You're not going to do five and a half hours of radio a day. I'm anymore. not going to go somewhere for, for, you know, and take two hours to get there and two hours to get home and be here for six hours. I'm not yeah. going to do that every day. That's my point. I've done that for 30 years. I'm going to, but I'm still going to give you my views for something from somewhere. I, and uh, most likely podcasts because I've had a bunch of companies but that's what i'm talking about content over platforms is what we're talking about so now. when it so i had i had the summer off and i wanted to have my podcast again starting in october right and i basically bought the equipment myself had one person help me you do it out of your home i did initially i did i was doing it out of the back of my house in this little setup that actually sounded better than the spm podcast because i spent a little more money in the equipment right and i was out to the world and promoting on my twitter feed and then word of mouth and i had five hundred thousand listeners what in is a month. what is, we're talking about, of course with bill simmons who's with me the whole show what it what is must what let me ask you what is must read or must watch for you out there like what 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 do you like right now that's out there what is there something out there is there a person out there that you must read or one person you really like it's more who doesn't a, work for you it's more of a collection of people i, I think is? the most interesting writing that's happening right now is, is where people trying to figure out where stuff's going and that's, that can, that, and that's a question tech, i get asked all politics. the time i thought the stuff that just happened recently where everybody missed the trump thing and it was all these, all these models, like these mathematical algorithms. They didn't just, how the listen, polls, listen, they, the, the, the people like, the people like, uh, any of the people who have had good reputations predicting politics. But it was old school. They we're like, watch out for this guy. Yeah, but they would, they, they, they took it as such an offensive thought. They were too much of, of political elitists to realize that this guy was going to win. I, I told the folks on the show for months that this guy was going to win. This guy was going to... Did you really? Yes, because I, I, first of all, he is driven insanely. Plus, he's already branded himself. Not one of those people had branded themselves to America. He branded himself to America for 10 years. I know, but I think most people thought the branding didn't work, which is why I was going to win. And in work. fact, it actually did and work. And he fun. also connected with people. He, yeah. he connected. There's an anti Washington thing going on right now in this country. That's why you see Bernie Sanders having these big. Bernie Sanders is. It, the things he believes in, half of them are ridiculous. Yeah. And he's still getting huge crowds because people are fed up. And they're fed up in Trump, too. Trump says some really smart things. He says some really ridiculous things. Oh, he but says they love some them. offensive things. You know, I mean, I, you know that stuff to me. I'll, tell you exa I'll give you a perfect example, Trump. Trump, people got that Times thing. I went and read it last night. What a waste of time. There was nothing in there that was anything. First of all, the lady said, first of all, said they spun it the wrong way. Number one. Number two, there was nothing in there that was that bad. There really wasn't. So he said to a woman executive, you know what? You really like your candy? I can tell you how Trump is. He's fixated on stuff like that. Last time I saw Trump, you know what? I should say last time because I saw him like three different times. First time I saw Trump for the first time in like a year and a half. Yeah. Was at a Ranger playoff game about a year and a half ago. I walked in. He was with Melania. I was with my wife. We walked into a room. He was in there. He came over to me. I introduced my wife. I don't hey, think Mike, he met. How are you? I said hello to him. I've known him for, thir for Let's see. A dog and I do boxing shows for him 25 years ago. Yeah. Okay? Down in AC. The bottom line, I've known him forever. So, and I'm not buddy, buddy, but I've known him. He's a New York guy. Everyone knows Trump in New York. I mean, he's been everywhere. Yeah. You know what he said to me? You're one of the rare people who was heavier when you were younger than you are now. <laughs> First thing he was fixated on weight. First thing he said to me was, you know what? How do you do that? And I said, oh, my wife's a real, you know, she, my wife's thin and she's really nutrition crazy. So she stays on me with that stuff. Yeah. So he said to me, you know, you're one of the rare people, very few people 
lose weight as they get older. You actually weighed more years ago. I said, yeah, I weighed a lot more years ago, you know, which I did. But he, there's the first thing he said to me was about my weight. The fir- he's conscious of that stuff. So when he says to the lady, you like your candy, you know what? He looks at people, he, he, for some reason, he's into weight. I don't know why he is, he is. So you're saying he has some sort of personal connection with people he meets beyond just, hey, there's somebody that can help me. Is oh, absolutely. Yeah, listen, I, here's what I look at with him that I think, here's what I think in a nutshell, because people have said to me, and I get letters from people, why would you support Trump? Here's why I support Trump. Number one, I'm fed up with the same people all the time in a stagnation, which I think is offensive in our country. Number two, this guy, I would have liked Michael Bloomberg to run because he's wealthy, he's not corruptible, he had a ton of money, and I thought he was a really bright guy. Yeah. And that's what we need right now. First of all, I, I saw yesterday where the president called Trump dumb. Trump, the president's not dumb. Anyone who thinks Trump's dumb is, is dumb. He's not dumb. You might not like him. You might think he's offensive. He's not dumb. You didn't build this being dumb. The guy went to the Wharton School of Business. He's not dumb, okay? That, that's a, he that, did ruin the USFL. That, listen, I, uh, listen I, I, I actually was around for that, okay? Yeah. I almost had to testify. I was almost yeah. involved. So I was ve- well aware he of that. He thought okay? the USFL should be in the fall. He that thought, was dumb. He, I'm gonna go you know what he really wanted? One. He wanted a New York NFL franchise. That was his bottom yeah. line. He didn't get it. That's what he wanted. Yeah. He always has a motivation. He wanted an NFL franchise. He knew what he was trying to get out of it. He wasn't worried about the other owners. Right. And, you know, as soon as Bassett wouldn't play ball with him, he got out. But you shouldn't know? that worry me if he's the president, if he wasn't worried about anybody but no, his own self interest? Listen, why would a guy his age, 68 years old, yeah. more money than he can ever spend, why would he do this it, for, why would he do this for what so that they write about him in history books 100 years from now why wouldn't he do it if he really doesn't believe he's gonna he is the master fixer like Wolman rink like trumpet ferry point it's things that can't get built he fixes them he's a builder that's what he does i really believe he'll take things and he will fix them and you i don't, i don't worry about being in the sitcom room and thinking he's going to attack some country in the sitcom room here's what you say go no go they give you the plans they say here's plan a here's plan b go no go this they're not going to let him do something crazy. i mean it doesn't work that way we all know that the bottom line is most people feel that obama's uh, the people he's had with them on foreign policy no matter who you read think that they have been naive and awful in in their approach the bo- and i'm not taking a political view because i think george w it bush was like a, a political view no because i think george w bush was a terrible president okay i think he was and i think clinton was a good president I think he was flawed personally, but I think he was a good president. I think he got stuff done. I think he was a consensus maker. I think he was bright. I think he saw the big picture. I think Trump sees the big picture. I really do. And I think the last two presidents have been very weak, very, very poor leaders. I think George W. Bush was, who I don't think was very bright. And I think Obama's bright, but I just don't think he ever really grasped the big picture. I don't think he has. And I think this guy... Is he perfect? No. I mean, no, I'm not saying he is. And I can see how he offends people, but I actually believe he will be a positive. And I will apologize if he wins, and I think he can win. So people who think he can't win, I think are nuts. I think he can win. I really do. I think I you can too. see the way he's polling in, these, in, the, in, in the states that he needs to be polling right in. Ohio, Pennsylvania, Michigan, Florida. He's polling really well in those states. And I think he can win. I really do. And he might not win, but I think he can win is what I'm saying. And I think he will do a good job as president. I think pe- people will be shocked because I think it, it's his, he'll work 20 hours a day to do the right thing thing and to get things built and i think we need our infrastructure listen i have three kids 11 11 and 9 we need to rebuild this country we need to rebuild the highways our airports our trains we're so far behind the rest of the world we fell in the last 50 years behind everybody and he's right about we have to stop worrying about every little fight in the world we can't settle every fight in the world and and neglect our own backyard we have to take care of ourselves a little bit too and we have to do it rather than spend all our money trying to police the rest of the world and i really believe that and to me i think this is the right guy at the right time and if i'm wrong i'll say so but i really believe that i really think he'll do a good job and i see the negatives i really do but i think he'll do a really good job can you end this with let's make america great again no but i really believe that you think i'm wrong (laughs) I, I didn't want to talk politics. Why not? The one thing I will say, though, is... You can talk for a minute. We won't spend a day on it, but go I ahead. think Trump got into this election because I think I, I just think it was a good branding move for him. Why? I don't think he ever expected a win. 
I think I don't think he was that relevant when he got in. I think he was for a celebrity. He was kind of a fading star. Like he's somebody that could never have been the lead guest on a late night show. But why and within he, a month what, what he was, was he, all of a sudden he was. But in he the was mix. already. Try, he's because been famous he's got for so of, many years. Famous, but his famous fame can kind of shoot down a little bit, and you can become yesterday's news. He's already you know? got more money than he can ever spend. I mean, this is a guy who's in the WWE Hall of Fame. Like he had a certain level of fame. Right. The Apprentice helped. Right. Then when he when he joined the uh, so you don't think he wants to be president? I, part of me wonders. I don't know. You think Maybe he's he does now. He, Maybe your ego gets you him at this he point. He would have worked this hard every day. Like this guy's been working tirelessly around the clock, I running all was, over the country. I think it was a great business move to run to run for president, and it got him. He became an A list celebrity. He hosted Saturday Night Live. That never happens last year. He's uh, he's the first guest on every late night show. He's talked about constantly. And then I think it kind of snowballed, and now he has the Republican nomination. Well, he could then just sit back on his heels, because he's already been more famous this year than most people ever are in a lifetime. I know. I mean, he's gotten more attention this year than probably anybody has in 50 years. I mean, if you went and said how many times has his name been mentioned, his name's mentioned every 10 seconds. And he's been on CNN, like, just constantly. Every, uh, and MSNBC, and, all and Fox, and all We're these. We're talking so, about him now, we could but be talking why about is the he, baseball but fight. But why is he still driving that? Well, I think you reach a certain point and you go, wow, I could actually win this. To what end, though? Well, because now he has a chance to be the president. I mean, the the question for me is, like, that job, I don't know. It's not, but let me ask you something. That, that, that I'd rather. Do you think you could do that job? <laughs> no. You don't think you could do it? I think that's a really hard you job. You don't think, think you could you go in there win. and if you surround yourself with the right people, you couldn't make those decisions? I liked Obama a lot more than you did just as a person. I feel like his heart was in the right place with a lot of the stuff that he tried to do. And I think See, he have, became a rock star really quick. Well, but I, I and think... And probably got there quicker than he should have. It was it was fast. I'm sure I've talked to him a couple of times. I think he learned a lot those first couple of years. But the country's so divided when you have one side trying to get something done, the other side doesn't want you to get something done, and that's just the way this country has turned into the last forty, fifty, however many years. That's what I like about Clinton. He was able to get some things done. He really was. I mean, he got more done. If you look, he got more done than you think. He, he actually did get them to do some things. And the last, it's gotten worse and worse. I agree. It really has. But I think we need to really have someone shake things up. And listen, you know, the world's not going to end if he becomes president. When, when and the world's not going to end things up, though, that makes me nervous because this is the what? presidency. We're, we're not talking about like a baseball GM. This is the presidency. We're talking of the about the stag shaking up the stagnation in this yeah. country. Yeah, I mean, if you're thinking just about, I mean, this guy is not going to be reckless where you're worried about him, you know, starting a war. Some that's not that, that stuff doesn't happen. I mean, that's not the real world. But I you mean, can understand why people are concerned that he might be reckless, right? Because he's been reckless during the campaign. Right, but they're saying there are people now criticizing him that they're saying he is on the dovish side of Hillary. So I mean, you know, that's right. You know, so I mean, well, a lot of this can't criticize him on both sides. People just don't like Hillary. It seems like and also that that family's been. Favorite. You know what? And you know what's a big knock for her too. They've been on the stage a long time. Yeah, the family's been on the stage for about twenty-five years. It's like a, it's like a sports team that everyone's think just about. Tired it. It's of. like a coach who's been there like twenty-five. Yeah, yeah, years. Yeah. She's been it's famous like, for twenty-five. She's been famous twenty-five years. It's amazing she's actually gotten this far. What sports team would you compare the, compare the Clintons to? Uh, the Patriots. Please don't say the Patriots. Yeah, don't know, say the Patriots. We won four Super Bowls. They, you know, they're a, they've won we a lot. We almost went nineteen and zero. They've won a lot. They never had an, an eighteen and one season that should have been nineteen and zero if they didn't call the four holding. They could have caught any of the four they holdings got back to on the back, catch. They did go back to the back. The Giant fans are listening to this, right? How many holds were on the Tyree catch? <laughs> Just out of curiosity, was there four or five? Uh, I can't listen, remember. Don't ruin a moment. Was there four or five? Don't holds? ruin a moment. The refs just put the flags away. Don't ruin a moment. Don't uh, don't listen. I'll never get wait, over that you, game. Wait, your take as a New Englander is going to come in here and say that the Pats have won things unfairly. Yes, really? that's my take. Really? I'm going in. <laughs> that's gonna, your take is going to be, woe yeah. is me with the Pats. We haven't gotten a square break. We won four. We should have won six. You got Al Capone up there. <laughs> I mean, come on. You're gonna call it the, that's going to be your take? It was, do, it, was, it was just a run of dominance. It was have, really you ever, great. have you ever been upset with anything the Pats have done? Oh yeah, like the, what? I'm talking about not trading one of your favorite players. I'm talking about something they've done where you like say the they really pushed the envelope here. 
I mean, they, the draft has been a really scary experience for Pats fans because we know Belichick knows more about football than us, but he's always trading backwards and stockpiling picks, and he's kind of ruined the draft for us. Do you believe they've ever done anything where they really you had to like say, "Oh boy, I can't"? Oh, the, the Dion Branch cost us the Super Bowl when they lowball them. And no, they traded you, him no. To what Seattle. I'm saying is, do you believe like you know stuff like uh, oh the cheating Ray, stuff? Yes, the cheating stuff. Do you believe in any of that stuff, or you just totally don't believe in any of it? I I think that I think they are almost they have replicated what happened with the Raiders in the seventies and the Red Arback Celtics, where the league is convinced that they're up to stuff and he uses it as a competitive. So advantage. it's a league of Paul and Suarez now yelling at the light, yelling cheat. at the light bulb. What about bulb? the teams that pump in crowd noise? What about all the teams that allow PEDs? I think you said all that best. stuff. Like they they're all, all doing something. They all will cheat. What about the fact that the offensive, coordinators have to, uh, the offensive coordinators have to hide their face as they're calling in plays because everybody's reading the signals and trying to break the codes? They're just more diabolical. This is a, this is a, a league that's above the level? Ray Rice gets a two-game suspension? I mean, give me a break. No, listen. It's NFL. This is not like uh, you know, I understand the good shit lollipop. That, see, that's the true part. That, and some of these owners act like it is. Yeah. Like, you're right about that. And that is true. Uh, like the Ravens owner who let the whole Ray Rice thing happen, and then he's pushing Goodell to do something about the deflate game. So you never feel like you have to take a shower after rooting for the pants? No? Not at all. Really? Oh, it's been a glory. See, he's I good. He's a, he's a bona fide. He's like a Belichick, believer. He's I, like a believer. I would have done anything for one Super Bowl. <laughs> we won four. I'll defend them to You've the had death. A, and not only that, you win 80% of your games every year. 80%? We got 12 and four every year. Every year. Guess what? Every Garoppolo year. starting the first four. Hey, We're still going good. 12 and four. And he's good. That's yeah, the thing. We'll be fine. He's Don't worry about the Patriots. He's in storage. Yeah. We can come back and talk about Ernie Adams if you want. <laughs> well, that, I have no comment on Ernie Adams. It's How like you're Jimmy the Green character. Your stories, I have I think no comment one of, on Ernie. I think one of your any Wednesday, is it any Wednesday? Any given Wednesday. Any given You'll Wednesday. Get it right eventually. One of any give Bill Simmons Wednesday any night. Wednesday. Any given Wednesday. HBO. If you're going to impress me, one of your shows has to be about. Ernie Adams. What did Ernie Adams actually no, do? What is his, what the truth about Ernie Adams? Mm, I don't know if I want to know the truth about Ernie <laughs> Adams. <laughs> Back after this. To bring up a show. topic. Go ahead, go ahead. Take over. Go ahead. Um, you know, I've been living in L.A. obviously since 2002. And the Laker fans just assumed that this gravy train of winning was never going to end. Kobe gets hurt. It's a four-year spiral. They have the owner's... And black sheep's too strong of a word, but the the owner's uh, son who struggled at times over over the course of his life is now running the team. Right, they've hit, taken some hits. They never expected it. They're, they've all been in shock the last few years. What is it like to also watch this happen with the Yankees over here? Is my question. Like, just now the years of struggling and just not a very good game plan. All this stuff, like. It, I always feel like teams are as good as the ownership behind the scenes. And also, if you get lucky with stars and things like that. But really, whether you're well-run or not, are the Yankees well-run, in your opinion? Uh, they're, they're basically been moving a boat the size of the Titanic. They had to change course. And changing course with their machine was very hard to change course with. Because well, what, when you say machine, what do you mean? Meaning that they had built a powerhouse based on the rules that were available to them, spending a lot of money, being able to go out there and and uh, generate tremendous amount of revenue. Combination of Jeter, Mariano, and uh, well, that happened because you know they no, but actually then with a lot of money, but they got lucky but, with a couple of guys, right? And they they won a lot, and they spent a lot. And they could spend through their mistakes. And really, there was a time where the Yankees, the Red Sox, the big revenue machines had a big advantage. Now, Bud changed a lot of that. It will be coming up, Bud Selig, because yeah. the revenue sharing did work because the stagnant franchises are now back. One of them, which got accused for years of not trying to win, the Kansas City Royals, now back as world champions. The right. Pittsburgh Pirates put the money in their pocket for 20 years, never bought a player. Now they've won 95 games a year for the last three years. The bottom line is those franchises are now back in vogue. And now 
people are signing their own players. So the system changed. What else changed was having an older team became a detriment once they started testing for amphetamines because amphetamines, everyone knew, were going to be a much bigger problem than steroids because of the fact that you didn't have that little pick-me-up anymore. And yeah. now being older was going to be a problem. One thing baseball does You is, have Diet Coke. Yeah, one thing baseball does, and I definitely do, one <laughs> team baseball does is it makes their players play very hard schedules. They travel terribly. They play 20 days in a row. Look at the Mets. They just had a three city, 11 days. They had six days home, no day off. West Coast, no day off. Three cities, 11 days home, finally a day off. And then they play for 17 straight days. The point is, it's going to show on all the teams. The Yankees were an older team. They now did not have a farm system because they had not been picking in the right place for years and years. Plus, they were not great at developing players anyway. It wasn't their want. And on top of it, the other part was they had to feed the beast, which means they could never say, hey, the Yankees are against. Two years ago, I'll give you an example. Cash saw the, Cashman saw the hand right on the wall, and he wanted to break the team down. The ownership said, wait a second. No, no, no. We're going to try. We're the Yankees. We tried it the last day. If we're yeah. five out, we're still in it. If we're... We're in it every day. We're in it every day. They're afraid of having an empty ballpark. And now on top of that, the specter of the Mets being good at the same time, where every flip of the coin ticket or, or fan goes the other way. And New York's a front-running town. You could take a million and put it right in the Met column as soon as they win and the Yankees don't. You could take a million right off the top, put them right in the It's a front-running town. It's an absolute event town. It's a front-running town. It is. Now, the Yankees will still do okay. And the Yankee attendance is still high where you see that they're not going to the ballpark, but the tickets sold are still a lot right now. They're still showing 35 every night, you know, as far as that goes. The bottom line is they've started to develop. Now, you saw it coming. They saw it coming. It was a slow turn. Last year, in the pennant race, with a team that went to the playoffs, they didn't add a player. They did not give up any of their prospects. They saved every one. Offseason, did not sign a free agent. These are the Yankees. did not sign a free agent. They are saving their money. They're letting these contracts expire. They're waiting for Judge and Bird and Sanchez and Mateo. And they hope Severino, who's come up in the second year and not done as well. And some other guys that they have in the system. They feel they have players. If you look now, most people feel they have a farm system. And they're making this slow turn. This year, they might finally be tested. Now, this three-headed bullpen might work well enough. If A-Rod and Teixeira ever warm up, it might warm, warm enough for Good them to stay. Yeah, if they ever stay in the... It, they need those two to, to... Last year, they were winning when A-Rod and Teixeira were hitting 31 homers all over the place. Teixeira hit 31 homers and 390 bats. A-Rod hit 33 home runs. They hit them. They were, lead, they were setting an all-time record for 31 homers at one point in the season. And then it all went apart. And we knew they were going to lose in the playoffs as soon as they got in. I mean, they couldn't hit a lefty and they got beat in a game that was basically like a scrimmage. It was just awful. Um, the point is, they're making a slow turn now. They are not going to be spenders again until they are back to where they need to be. And I think this year, if things go badly, which they were headed there, except they did win just three straight series at home. Uh, if they don't turn it around here on this trip and they bottom on this trip or let's say bottom in the next month, they will be sellers this year. They will take their their That's medicine amazing. and they have never yeah. remember the Yankees have not They're never sellers. The Yankees have not won fewer than 85 games since 1992. Right. It's a long time. It's a long you time. You know what I think has changed with baseball? And I don't think it's fundamentally changed, but the value guys in baseball are the guys from like age 20 to age 31. And for years and years and years and years, the Yankees would get these marquee free agents. They'd pay money. In their 30s. Right. Yeah. And, and we know now that it's not a great idea no. to go get Kevin Brown and people like that. Because the back of those contracts kill yeah, you. Yeah, Albert Pujols, all those guys. It's just, Everyone's you want a those guys contract. in their 20s. But yeah. the difference, like back in the day, was that none of the none of the teams that should have been building around young players and saving that money the way that the Cubs did and the way the Astros did and all these different Royals, now they actually know what they're doing. And unless you're also doing that and building that well, like they're figuring out how to sign players two years before they're going to become That's a free it. agent. Not, There's all these little tricks that are happening free now. Agents yeah. now. They're not you're not even seeing free agents no, anymore. You're not getting free agents. They're not getting these players. Tampa to free Bay agents. started that. Longoria yeah. was, I think, the yeah. first one. Where and now just, you get it with every guy. Strasburg, yeah. the other. And every Yankee fan has their eyes on Harper because he's a, his father was a Mickey Mantle freak, and Harper's always talked about being a Yankee. Okay, but he'll never hit free agency. I can't see any way they ever let him hit free agency. No, they, but what, what's the earliest they can give him a giant? I guess they could do it now. They can. And, just and, give him some massive contract, pay him in advance. And they and just keep gave Strasburg one hundred seventy-five million, right? And right, and they were figuring. Listen, 
We overpaid him, but if we have to go to the free agent market for that kind of pitcher, it's going to cost us $200 million. So 20 years ago, in 1997, Strasburg, the, the, like he's becoming a free agent, and the Yankees and Red Sox are bidding for him. That that's game the has become, it's become a much younger game, and the Red Sox, to their credit, recognized it before the Yankees did. Yeah. They, and, and, their, and their move, their pivot, was much easier than the Yankee pivot. The Yankee pivot, they have the Mets in the back to look at, and the pivot for the Yankees with their network, with feeding the beast, the whole thing, it became such a machine that it's very hard to feed the beast. And they have been afraid to ever say we're out of it. You know, the Red Sox give them credit. They unloaded those contracts. They did a great job. They, they bottomed out. Look what happened in the Bobby Valentine year. They said, you know what? Boom. You know, that's basically it. I mean, the worst so thing you can do, one of the lessons I've learned, I feel like I'm still learning about sports, but when you're making a move to make a splash, it's a bad idea. Absolutely. You want to make a move to, is this move going to help me win a title in the next five years? Not, am I going to win the headlines? That way here's of thinking, what, once you're doing that, you're done. Here's what we learned about baseball that's absolutely a fact now that wasn't true 10 years ago. The main word in baseball, the word's always talent, but the main word is youth. You have to have a young team. Young teams win in baseball now. You have to have... You can add a player here and there, and you got to get lucky with a player here and there, but the bottom line is you have to have young players because you're going to punish them schedule-wise, and there's no amphetamines now, and that's a factor. And I had how many guys whisper in my ear, hey, you watch, amphetamines is much bigger than steroids, much oh, bigger yeah. than steroids. And, that, and you can see it, older teams, and the Yankees have had an older team, and they keep breaking down, and they keep, it's just, it continues and continues, well, think and about that's it. My favorite team ever or my first favorite team was the 75 Red Sox. Yes. Now, you move that team 40 years to now, and we keep all those guys. Fred Lynn doesn't go to the Angels. Yep. I mean, we kept Jim Rice and we kept Evans, but Burleson, all those guys, we're just locking everyone out. Cecil Cooper, mm -hmm. we never lose any of those guys because we would have figured out a way to keep all of them. Absolutely. And that's, and what's, that's what's changed with baseball. Ab absolutely. And listen, there's still some advantages. Like, I had the Tampa owner on the other day, and, he, and what he has proposed is, wait a second, what I need to do is, because my revenues are still low, the advantage is still to the revenue team, to the big revenue team, if they do everything else right. He's saying, I, because I have a low revenue, even though I have a win, I win a lot, I should still get compensatory picks because my revenue is, is small. Yeah. Because otherwise, I can't keep these guys, and now I can't replenish them the same way I did because I'm not getting the same picks anymore because now I'm good. And he wanted to put a thing in where it's based on revenue. That's too much. Yeah, and and because he's saying otherwise I'm going to get hurt. Well, you're in yeah. Tampa. Yeah. I mean, at some point, there should be repercussions for if you're in a stadium that's not selling out. Bingo. Hey, let me ask you this. I'm talking with Bill Simmons, a couple of things. And this plays into the future, which all the things you mentioned before. Yeah. Gambling is going to really come front and center because what's happened here, and, and, and you know it, the NBA already has the model. Uh, they, they, they've already gotten in it. bed with the fantasy. Yeah, they're they're waiting for the laws. The bottom line is they realized when, it, when, the, when the Internet grew like it did and all the bookies put everything offshore, that led, let the authorities look at how much money is bet illegally. They were stupefied by how much it really was. It was so much more than they ever realized. So now the authorities realize, my God, there is trillions being bet illegally. We have to tap into this. So now the leagues want to tap into it, and the states want to tap into it. The federal government wants to tap into it. They want to be the broker. They want their peace municipalities no longer can pay the pensions. They're all going broke. They need this revenue stream. How do you see in the next 10 years gambling integrating itself into the mainstream of especially football and basketball? Baseball less so because it's not bet on in any way nearly. You can bet series, though. You can bet, and, you yeah. can, and you can bet if you want, but, you know, baseball is so much bet in the pitcher parlay different and, sports. and bet in the wood because yeah. if you bet favorites, which most people do, you got to lay runs, and runs is very bad if you're trying. You know, laying runs in baseball is a, is a sucker bet. You know that. This has yeah. been my one of my passions ever since I had a column, which started in 1997 on my old, old site. Um, I don't understand why I can buy... $300 worth of scratch cards or $500 worth of Powerball tickets, but I can't gamble on a Red Sox-Yankee game. It just doesn't make sense to me. Because the leagues have been very good at telling the authorities it would be a nightmare for them to control. Right, but then you you go to, like I was in London for the Summer Olympics in 2012. From walking to any place there and bet on any soccer match. The bingo. Any Olympic thing. It's not like chaos you bet in on Wimbledon. England. Yeah, Wimbledon, all that stuff. It's coming. 
it's coming and it's already here because you can do it online. Every you know anyone I know who wants to gamble. What will gamble. be the offshoot of it in your mind? I think the daily fantasy was their way of kind of dipping their feet. In the, I agree. If you notice, like they they could have easily made daily fantasy go away, and none of the leagues really. You know, they, they kind invested. of rallied around a little they bit. Invested. Yeah. They invested. Two of them were investors. Yes. So I think eventually they know this is too big of a revenue stream. And don't forget, like, you know what rich guys love? Money. Rich guys never feel like they have enough money. They're always going to want more. They're always going to be cutting angles. And it's like, if you look at the NBA, remember like seven, eight years ago, you, there was like six teams available at one point. And you, you could get the Sixers for $240 million. Now you can't get a franchise. They gave Charlotte to MJ basically for free. He put down like $50 million bucks. You can't get a franchise. It is the hardest thing to get. Impossible. Because Same of thing digital, for NFL. digital, yeah. mobile, digital, and, and the specter of gambling. And you have 19 suitors. You know, like it, this is why if somebody's going to make the case against ESPN being in good shape 15 years from now, the case is they're about to get blown out of the water by Google and Amazon. And well, their all days these different of, places. listen, they have, and, and listen, they lucked into something. Give them credit, it happened, but they lucked into a situation that no one else has ever been. And when the networks even went to Congress and complained, they said, tough, they should have, you got, got there first. They double dipped, they got paid per household. And they were able to charge for commercials. Yeah. Okay. And they not only got paid by household, they got paid ten times more than anybody else got paid. Their per cable month. deal is the greatest it's, deal probably in the history they of the media. They got paid five fifty a month. Everyone in there is paying and seven dollars a month for ESPN. And, and the next booth. highest is thirty something cents. Yeah. And they're clearing one hundred twenty million homes, but it's not sustainable. Now it's falling down. Yeah. And now the idea of the skinny bundle and the future, a la carte, the whole thing, and that's why Disney stock is going down because they realize that the day of ESPN becoming, making the amount of absurd money is over. But they'll do well, but they're no longer going to knock it out of the park and own it like they used to. And that's why Fox's plan to go after them is in a 10-year deal. It's a sustainable deal. They'll be ESPN in 10 years. ESPN's had a 10-year head start, but they will get there if they spend the, the same way. And you're right. If To me, if I was waging my bet now, Google, Apple, Facebook, Amazon, they're the future. Snapchat. All the, they're all the future. Those mul huge companies who throw money around that is so much more money than networks now. My God, they could buy and sell these networks 20 times over. I mean, they, oh, yeah. I mean, they have so much money and that's where sports is going. There's no question. I mean, when you realize an app's making a billion dollars now for Major League Baseball. I mean, it's insane. It really is. I've said this to a couple of people. So pardon me for repeating this point, but I think ESPN is a tech company and they just don't realize it yet. They're trying to they're trying to protect this model that worked for them and was awesome. And it's over. live games, Sports Center, they put so much time and resources into saving Sports Center. And the internet has already ruined Sports Center. Over. And the future of Sports Center is viral videos, instant clips, Steph Curry making a three, and me being able to see that on my Twitter feed five seconds later. That's hey, where sports is going. If everybody has a pocket phone that can give them any highlight on demand in a minute's notice, how can a show about highlights work? It can't. It can't. It's not I mean, sustainable. It's over, just like things end. You know, things have their course in time. Well, think about it's Rolling over. Stone and Sports Illustrated in the 60s SI, and 70s. Hey, I lived They, they seem like, like monoliths. They were SI, never going to be You can basically slide it under my door now. You know, it's like an envelope. I mean, there's nothing in it. Right. I mean, that's it. They have no advertising. They're out of business. Polaroid's so, yeah. another good example. Like, there's, there's Sony... With Sony was feeling great, Cameras. had it almost, and then all of a sudden Samsung and Panasonic. I wouldn't want in. to be in the watch business right yeah. now. Yeah, with the it new happens. with the new watches, it and happens all, faster I, than you think. You don't want to be in the watch business right now. Yeah. That's for sure. I don't care if your name is Rolex. All right, quick break, <laughs> and we'll come back get to the make man, and I believe we'll have Bud Seal, which should be fun. Right after this, I'm here with Bill Simmons for a couple more hours. Hey guys, why are you chewing tobacco? It makes your teeth and breath gross. You have ladies in your life who really care about you, and everyone knows about the horrible effects dipping tobacco can have on your health. Look, you know you love to chew, but tobacco? Ew. What you need to do is try Jake's Mint Chew. It's just like real chew, but your breath is minty fresh, because Jake's is USDA certified organic mint, not tobacco. No nicotine, and that means no harmful side effects. If you're going to chew, chew something we'll all enjoy. Jake's Mint Chew. Jake'sMintChew.com. Chew healthy. Chew mint. Now available in new apple spice flavor. 
At Chevrolet, they set out to find new roads and it shows in the way they design their vehicles. So whether it's staying connected with your family on the go with the available built-in 4G LTE Wi-Fi of the Traverse, keeping everyone safe with the available advanced active safety technologies in the Equinox, bringing an unexpected sense of style to your everyday drive in the newly designed Malibu, tackling the most demanding jobs with the always dependable Silverado, or streaming your favorite music, getting directions and accessing your contacts with Chevrolet MyLink in the Cruise Limited, you'll see that every detail of your Chevrolet helps make your life a little bit more interesting. Get more than you expect for less than you imagined. Find your local Chevy dealer at ChevyOffers.com. Requires a compatible mobile device, active OnStar service and data plan, 4G LTE service available in select markets. Visit OnStar.com for coverage map, details, and system limitations. MyLink functionality varies by model. Full functionality requires a compatible Bluetooth and smartphone and USB connectivity for some devices. There has never been a better time to experience a new Buick, and right now, you can get great deals on 2016 Buick models in stock, like a 39-month lease on a 2016 Buick Encore for $179 per month with only $819 due at signing. That's right, a luxurious Buick Encore crossover for just $179 per month. Visit TristateBuick.com for details. One SB model for well-qualified lessees with a non-GM lease vehicle at participating dealers. Must show proof of current lease. Your payments may vary. Tax title license and dealer fees extra. Mileage charge at $0.25 cents per mile over 32,500 miles. FAN, WFAN FM, New York. WFAN 2020 Sports. And this report brought to you by Page Federal Credit Union with great mortgage rates that could save you thousands. Visit lovebethpage.com. Last seven games, Jackie third baseman Chase Headley, seven for 20, his first extra base hits of the season. The Yanks open a road trip tonight in Arizona against the Diamondbacks after a solid seven and three home stand. I was glad that I could come off the bench and get a big hit for us. And uh, obviously, this was a, a, a big home stand for the whole team. And, uh, you know, we beat three quality teams. Uh, Red Sox, Royals, and White Sox, Yankee baseball on the fan, nine o'clock pre. Tonight in Oakland, Game 1, NBA's Western Final, the Golden State Warriors against the Oklahoma City Thunder. Nets officially introduced Kenny Atkinson as their new head coach. The Pacers make it official. Nate McMillan is their new head coach. Minnesota's Carl Anthony Towns, the NBA's Rookie of the Year, Kristaps Porzingis of the Knicks, finished number two. Raptor center Jonas Valanciunas will not play in Game 1 of the Eastern Conference Final against the Cavs because of an injured right ankle. And Tiger Woods says he's still not sure when he'll return to competitive golf. Tiger says he is not ready to play against the world's best. Tiger put three ceremonial tee shots in the water today. This report brought to you by Formula One Suzuki in Oakdale, New York. 65 degrees, skies are mostly sunny. And that's what's happening. This is John Minko with 2020 Sports on WFAM. Sports Radio 66 FM at 1019. Flagship station, Boomer and Carton, morning 6 until 10. Francesa on the fan, afternoons 1 until 6.30. High prices risk the sale. Too low and your profit margins cut. Effective pricing is key for your small business's success. Find out how at the CBS Small Business Pulse. Built in partnership with First Data, the CBS Pulse gives you the tips for your small business. That's cbspulse.com. Sands Bethlehem and WFAN invite you to stay and play. Win a one-night stay for two at the award-winning Sands Bethlehem Hotel, including dinner at Bobby V's, serving classic Italian dishes by TLC's Cake Boss, and a $200 Sands Bethlehem gift card. Use it to catch a superstar at the Sands Bethlehem Event Center. Shop the brand new outlets or relax at the Steel Magnolia Spa. Enter now at cbsnewyork.com slash Sands. No purchase necessary. Certain restrictions may apply. Sands Bethlehem, closer than you think in Lehigh Valley, Pennsylvania. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. Summer is here and it's time to think about getting outside and enjoying the great weather. It's also time to pick up the official beer of our 2016 kickoff to summer live broadcast, Heineken Light. Everyone has a method that tries to mask what's most important and that's taste. Heineken Light is the two-time World Beer Championship's best tasting light beer and the 2015 gold winner at the European Beer Star Awards. Light on calories, not light on taste. So after an evening run, a backyard barbecue, or even a long bike ride, you deserve the best tasting light beer. Frankly, other light beers are probably a little jealous because Heineken Light adds floral notes with hints of citrus using cascade hops like an IPA. So, no wonder they're green with envy. With Heineken Light, no gimmicks, none allowed. It's redefining the conversation back to where it should be, taste. And with only 99 calories, it's Heineken Light because taste matters. Heineken Light, the official beer of our 2016 kickoff to summer live broadcast, Heineken Light, imported by Heineken USA, reminds you to Enjoy Heineken Light responsibly. Mike's on. He's ready to go. On the fan. New York Sports Radio. Mike's on. Mike's on. 
All right, Yankee uh, ticket blitz right now. Fourth caller, 866-540-WFN to win uh, your tickets, which are to the Colorado game on the 21st at Yankee Stadium 705. You get a pair of field-level tickets courtesy of Jersey Mike Subs and the fan, and we'll give you a chance to win in the next hour. Uh, Mets not releasing. Uh, let's see. Uh, the rumor is Matt's got good news today at the doctor. Ligament is fine. So that's good news. That's being reported now. Uh, who's reporting that? Newsday? All right. Newsday is reporting that uh, Matt's got good news from the doctor today that the ligament is fine. And Bud Selig today, the former baseball commissioner, got the Sports Business Journal Lifetime Achievement Award. So uh, he's nice enough to join us today. I haven't spoken to Bud in a while. Bud, welcome. And I have Bill Simmons sitting in with me today. So say hello to him, too. And nice to talk to you. Congratulations. Well, thank you, Mike and Bill. Nice to talk to both of you. and glad to be on. Hi. How you doing, doing, bud? Well, first of all, congratulations. What does this award mean to you today? Well, it means a great deal. I am um, reading the Sports Business Daily uh, a lot, start um, every one of my days. And the fact that, um, uh, that they would honor me with a Lifetime Achievement Award does mean a great deal to me because um, uh, my 22 and a half years commission were very eventful and... Um, like everything in life, I always say, you know, Bart Giamatti used to say to me, baseball is a metaphor for life, and, uh, you know, you have your ups and downs. But when you get all done and in the retrospect of history, uh, this award um, means a lot to me, given everything that I went through. When you look at the game that you love, and you and I had your, uh, our ups and downs together, we, you know that, so, uh, so I appreciate you coming on today. But um, what do you, what in your tenure as commissioner and a very long tenure as commissioner what, what are you most proud of uh mike bill I, the economic reformation of the game when i took over in 92 we had a system guys that was uh, i guess i'll call it an economic anachronism for like it just it hadn't been changed since the Ebbets Field Polo Grounds days. You'll both understand that. When I tell my students that, they don't know what the hell Ebbets Field and Polo Grounds are. But I meant, I really mean since the late 30s, 1940, nobody ever changed anything. So here we have a rapidly changing culture. And uh, so, you know, I had to do a lot of things, and some of them were painful and at the time, controversial, like the wild card. I mean, I could go on all day long. There were some things that now today nobody would ever believe were controversial. But I, I understood that we had to change the system, had to change the economics, had to change a lot of things. And um, as you both know, uh, people don't like change. And especially, I always say, the baseball is a social institution, which is really resistant to change. So, but I, I'm proud of that. I'm proud of revenue sharing. I'm proud of, uh, of BAM and all the things that have gone with that that's owned all by all 30 clubs and uh, the wild card and all the changes that we made because it's contributed, frankly, to what I call competitive balance. I guess Pete Rozelle used to call it uh, parity, but, but I like the term competitive balance better. Hey, bud. I have always wondered if the if the commissioner is supposed to represent owners or players or both or what that ratio is and you're the really the only commissioner who was a former owner who took that job. It really seems as a sportsman that commissioners lean more toward working for the owners than the players. What do you think that ratio is? Well, Bill, let me say that's interesting because it goes back to a really an understanding. It's a great question. Uh, it goes back to to um, what people used to think. Um, I know we get built into labor problems, and people would say, you know, if Landis were still alive, well, number one, he wasn't. But number two, you know, Marvin Miller and I didn't agree on a lot of things. But Marvin once said to Bowie Kuhn when they were having one of their many battles, which was on a daily basis, Bowie doesn't represent the players. I represent the players. Life has changed, Bill. And... The commissioner's office and, and the, the role of the commissioner has evolved over the years. It's a long way what it, what it once was under uh, Landis or Chandler or Ford Frick um, as to what it is today. So, look, I, I had, a, I thought, a really great relationship with players um, for, for a myriad of reasons. But the fact of the matter is that 
for someone to think that a commissioner in this day and age represents everybody and has equal just is not true anymore. It just doesn't exist. It did in 1946, but it doesn't today. doesn't with the players' union. Once that happened, now your job is to fight them and, or, or at least keep them in check and grow, no, that, that's and, right. and grow revenue. That's your job. You, you bet, and I'm proud of the fact that our revenue in 1992 was a billion, too, and when I left, it was over $10 billion. And so, yes, that is your job, and because everybody gains as a result of all that, and so... I'm proud of the labor peace that went on for 22 years after all the holy heartbreak. We had eight work stoppages in my career, which started in 1970. So. Um, there was a lot to be done. Talking with the uh, ex commissioner, the former commissioner of baseball, Bud Selig, uh, he got a big award today from the Sports Business Journal. Bud, you mentioned uh, Wild Card, which I think is one of your great moves. Uh, you mentioned the revenue streams and uh, revenue sharing, which I think is the, why the Royals and the uh, Pirates are doing what they do now. Right. And bam, one thing I think was your one of your worst moves was attaching anything to the All-Star game to try and save it. I think that thing is awful. I wish <laughs> they would change that. You don't really still like that, do you? I do. Why? It's I terrible. Do. Well, well, that's okay. No, let me tell you why I like it. In... And, and let me take you back in a little history, because many think that it had to do with the tie in Milwaukee. Right, I thought so, yes. Well, it, uh, Mike, it had nothing to do with it. And let, let me try to tell you why I did it. We may agree or disagree, but that's okay. But look, we had, uh, before it was one year the American League got it, the next year the National League got it. Not exactly Einstein's theory uh, uh, right. of evolution here and, and, and relativity. Now, having said that, having said that, the game had become dull. We have the best all-star game. Worse than that, players didn't want to play. People didn't want to go. And I remember at the time, and I had been talking to Fox, and there's no question we were trying to do something that, that, that would really work that was practical. Now, that's a key word here. And I remember saying to both, I, I, there were two guys I talked to at the time, and then, one was Henry Aaron, who was going to introduce me Wednesday night, and the other was Ron Santo, who I called just to find out how he was because he had been sick. And on their own, independently, obviously, of one another, they said, what are you going to do about the All-Star game? you got to attach some meaning to it. Um, Henry said, when I, Henry made a statement to me on the phone one day, he said, you know, Roberto, Willie, and I played all nine innings, 12 straight years, or something like that. And Ron Santo said, God, when I got elected to the All-Star, that was big. Now guys are mad. They don't want to go. They're gone in the fourth inning after they play three innings if they have to. And so there was an attempt to do that. Now, look, is it perfect? No. But did we have any, as I said, it wasn't Einstein's theory of relativity. We needed to do something. And, and, and so the fact of the matter is it was really the only practical thing we do. I know some people say, well, ah, the teams are the best record. Mike, Bill, we can't wait till October to determine that. We need thousands of hotel rooms. We need all kinds of things. So when people say there must be a better way, no, there isn't. So I understand that some people don't like it, but I want to tell you something. The game has improved. Everybody wants to play now. Guys stay. They don't leave. I know I could tell you the first year in 03, we were in Chicago at the, at, at the USL, and there are all the players on both sides lined up in the eighth inning. It was a terrific game. And I thought, I remember saying to my wife at that point, well, it's a little different from what it's been. So did it do what we set out to do? It did. Is there a better way? Nobody's yet to tell me what that is. But I'm giving you a time machine. You can go back in time and you can handle PEDs differently. What would you do and what year would you have intervened instead of the year that you did? And what I didn't get the question about what? steroids, about yeah. PEDs. Oh. Would you have done it differently? What year would you have intervened if you well, could you do know, it over Bill, again? You know, Bill, that's another thing that I do. No, that, that, that too is a fair question. Look, in '94, during our labor negotiation, as Rob Manfred has, can we try to get a steroid program? Um, and everybody says, I know there was a story that appeared in the LA Times. We were slow to react. No, we weren't, Bill. And, that, and, and let me tell you why. I, 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 in my teaching now, I, that's a, this is a part of our course. 
it, the fact of the matter is, and I don't think they would deny it, the Players Association was not only against it, but fought it. Now remember, steroids are a subject of collective bargaining. That is the law. I can't change the law. So and did... the fact of the matter is that in 2001, so guys, that's 15 years ago now. Yeah. I already implemented in the minor leagues a complete testing program because I could do that. In 02, which was our first chance, that's when the whole steroid thing came. Yes, we took the union to Harvard to study Andrew in 98 and 9, but they were very reluctant. Yes, they fought it hard. So when people say you were slow to react, that's just a historical myth. That isn't true. And, Bill, so I, I've often thought to myself, and I remember when uh, the AP writer Steve Wilstein wrote the story, on, you remember, on Andrew and, and yep. Mark McGuire from Pittsburgh, and that was really the first time that I really understood that uh, how serious the problem was. There are a lot of people in baseball, because I'll always think of myself as a baseball guy, and so whether it was John Sherholz or Andy McPhail or all the people that we talked about at the time, nobody ever came to me and said we had a problem. So, yes, there was Conseco in 88. Yes, there were other things. Look, I talked to all my players once this started because I knew everything about them, Bill. I knew whether it was Yount or Molitor or Cooper and on and on. And they, you know, they gave me the same answer. Nobody in our club did it. They, they, you know, they weren't crazy about Conseco to begin with. And so it's, it's not a subject until we could do something about it. We went through a lot of heartache, went through a lot of travail, went through a lot of congressional investigations. You know, I hired George Mitchell. But, Bill, look how it turned out. We have the toughest testing program by far in American sports. That is true. But isn't it fair, but and this is where you and I have had some issues, don't you think that you, in, in, in retrospect, you and I don't blame just you, you and your owners, didn't you basically trade economic harmony for the, the you wanted it and they didn't want it? Fear and Orza were dead set against it. I used to fight with Orza who said, ah, it's no worse than smoking. It's not yes, a problem. Did. Yeah, yes, and, did. and didn't yes. you trade economic harmony for a tough drug uh you know, st well, testing. Well, well, Didn't you just... basically just t because they were going to dig in, and you guys were like, "Listen, we can get a lot of stuff done if we don't dig in on this steroid issue." Well, uh, let me just say this to you: when we finally made the deal in O two, um, it was the last issue, and it was six thirty or seven in the morning, and and the steroid thing was at that point, um, I thought weak. As it turns out. Uh, Mike, it led to something really, really good. But we didn't know that at the time. And I thought to myself, look, I'd like to hold out for more. We have begun to make great great strides in, in, in the rest of, of, of the labor negotiation. And so I agreed to this. But it turned out it did work out well because it was over 5%, and you know the rest of the history. So I, I don't think, you know, look, it's easy now to, to go back and look, and I understand your question, it's a fair one, but I, I think we fought like hell. I can tell you right now that some of the negotiations uh, between um, the clubs and, and labor in O2 were tough. I had Peter Angelos of Baltimore and Andy McPhail uh, of the Cubs at that time, and and there were tough discussions at the table. And um, And Mike, you know this is a fact. Orza and Fear fought this. Oh, they were dead. So, listen, I blame them more than I blame you, but I think you guys t took, basically, we can get five things rather than this, and, you know, they're so dug in on this, and they were dug in. And they were dug now, in crazy. But, I, that, I, that, I, you know, and I figured you guys said, listen, we can get this, this, and this. We're businessmen. No, you're, you're right. Look, there's no question, but the only thing I'll tell you about that is that once we started, and they fought us all along, I remember when I hired George Mitchell because I wanted an outsider to come in. I wasn't afraid. I'm the only commissioner of any major sport who went outside to get somebody, and the Player Association never did talk to, to, to him, but it's okay. I understand that. Um, but our guys cooperated. And I guess all I'll say to you, you now compare a program. Just go to water and ask them what they think of it, and they'll tell you how great it is. And so in the end, we did what we had to do. Well, let me ask you this now, because and you love baseball. I never. I, we know that you love baseball as much as anybody could possibly love it. I, I really believe that. I, I think you've shown that your whole life. Right. 
How, and we're talking with Bud Selig, of course. I'm here with Bill Simmons, the former commissioner who is getting a Lifetime Achievement Award from the Sports Business Journal. What do you say to the fans who look at a Hall of Fame and Maguire, Sosa, Palmero, Clemens, Ed all da 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 are not going to be in the Hall of Fame? And how do you answer to this era? How do you justify the history of your game? You've basically pulled away an entire chapter or generation where there's no answer to this question. Well, I'm not sure that that's true, but look. Well, then how do, you, what, how do you justify these guys who are Hall of Famers who can't get in the Hall of Fame? Well, that's up to the writers to determine that. I, listen. But we know, how would he, how do, right, well, how but, do you, uh, my, as a historian, how do you justify the era? Here, here's the way I justify it. Once it became known to us, and remember, Mike and Bill, they, this was going on not in clubhouses, but away from clubhouses. It was quiet, it was surreptitious, it was all the above. And so all I could do, and this is what I've said, and this, frankly, guys, is what I've said in my classes. All I could do is, once we had, knew, is to correct it and, and do what you have to do. I've had players come to me, a lot of players, Mike, and say the following. Why do they call this a steroid era? I didn't do it. And, and then they named 20 or 22 or 23 of their players. And, and look, who's to say in any sport now who's doing it and who's not doing it? So, I, look, there's nothing I do. I can't change that history. Am I saddened by it? Yeah, of course I am, because I do. I love the game. I love the images. You know, your question prompts... Uh, I mean, when I had Jerome Holtzman, who, who you both knew was yep. a baseball historian, who thought there was an overreaction, and then neither here nor there, we don't, I don't want to debate that. But I had him go back into the 20s and come up with each decade and say, what happened that sort of changed the game, this decade of steroids? He came up with something for every decade, whatever it was. So, look, <clears throat> back in the 50s and 60s, you, they, you could take amphetamines, which were called greenies in those days, by the people took them by, by the handful. No question. Who's, who's to say how much that did? In fact, when I was meeting with the trainers and doctors starting in 2000, 2001, even 99, they were as concerned about amphetamines as they were about steroids. And, and, and by the way... Nobody asked us to. We banned them. I think they've been a bigger factor than even steroids. But the problem is you have a lot of your great sluggers and even some of your great power pitchers who were steroid abusers, and they can't, they're not going to be, there's no way the fans can justify their careers. I mean, A-Rod, who obviously became kind of your, you know, your Moby Dick, uh, the A-Rod's career, how do you justify a man who, who's hit 700 home runs? Well, I, and also, let me step in one second. The, it's just weird to me that if I took my son to the Hall of Fame, Barry Bonds wouldn't be in there. Right, He's Barry the best Bonds. Fielder I ever saw in my Alex life. Rodriguez, Roger Clemens. Like, can't we Maguire, just put an asterisk? Sosa. I mean, uh, asterisk on the as, plaque or as, anything? The, as the former commissioner, do you have an answer for the Hall of Fame? No, I don't. That's their judgment. The only thing I can say to you: people have to make guys their own judgment. I did what I uh, what I had to do. I got a tough program, and I and we dealt with it. We didn't ignore it. We didn't rationalize it. We didn't make believe it didn't. Now, in the very subjects you're both raising, that's up to people who will vote in the Hall of Fame. Do you think they should be in the Hall? Do you think Barry Bonds should be in the Hall of Fame? I, I you know what? That's, Personally, I, I'll be glad, Mike, to answer every question. That's one I'm going to let others determine. I have a question. Yeah, so. But if you were the commissioner right now, because it seems like we've hit kind of a calm point for baseball, what would you be the mo what, what would worry you the most as the commissioner heading into the second part of this decade here? Um, I, I, you know, we're moving along well. I think Rob Manfred has done a remarkably good job. The, the, the really, uh, you know, revenues, attendance, everything is really good. Uh, we have a labor negotiation, and of course, that's the thing right now, uh, Bill. That would, you know, that, that I would be worried about because I think labor peace has really helped us. There are things we need to do. The system does need some change. The system does need improvement. But there is no question that would be, Bill, what I am most concerned about today. Because I would be worried about, and I don't know how this happened or when it happened, but. Baseball, the local TV deals baseball's made is the most lucrative they've ever been. I mean, it's not like the league's in bad shape. By, by, the by far. That's doing great. 
I think the one thing that's changed for me, I'm in my mid forties. I used to care about watching all the different baseball games and same way like I watch the NBA, I'll watch Oklahoma City play Golden State even though I'm a Celtic fan. Right. I only want to watch the Red Sox until the playoffs. Do you know have you noticed that baseball has become a localized sport during the regular well, season? It, there are some people who believe and, 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 and I understand that it's a regionalized sport. I think it always was. I think it always well, was. I think really? that might yeah. be right. I, yeah. I think that's right and I think we've done better in Ashley look. Guys, by any criteria, and, and Bill, I know you're, you're a basketball guy and you watch that, but let me tell you, I'm still a guy sitting in Milwaukee. I'll watch 15 games at night, so I'll go from game to game. Right. But I understand. Look, the, you said it before. The local revenues are amazing. So obviously, obviously, the people that pay the bills are, are spending the money because they think it's a great buy. And I have no question, look, last year, I, I, our baseball teams were, I, I don't want to exaggerate, I think it was number 12, 12 of the three were number one in their market for, since, from April till, till October 1st. It's amazing. It's absolutely amazing. So, um, yes, the national ratings are down a little, but I think there's a lot of reasons for that. I think they will get better. Um, but, but the money being spent both nationally and locally to me, as a manifestation of how big the sport is and how good the sport is. Would you be against gambling being, these leagues are moving more towards this relationship with gambling. Are you for that or against that? Well, I, you know, I, I hate to get the controversy, and I've told uh, actually David Stern, I had this conversation, the thing, and, and I know, and I, as much as I like Adam Silver, I, I know how he feels, and I know how Rob is. I am. I guess I'm old fashioned, guys. I, I don't like any ties to gambling. I don't like any ties to him. Wow. So you, even though it's probably something for these future leagues, did you, did you see the digital, did, did you and your owners see this digital, uh, windfall coming? I mean, did anybody see it coming or is well, it just I something have, that I, happened? Then let me give you the answer. Well, January 19th, 2000, Mike, we formed BAM out of, by a 30 to nothing vote. Equally owned by all 30. I said at the time, I don't know why I said it, I, I have in retrospect that I thought that this could be as important someday as when Pete Rozelle, as a young commissioner in 1961, got the clubs to share revenue. It's turned out that way. Bam is you were right. You were right. An unbelievable success story. I don't want to tell you where that we were that smart because we weren't. But but since then, it's been it's it, it, it's been amazing, and the growth of Bam is stunning. I actually think that's going to be one of the biggest parts of your legacy when people look back thirty years from now, because you guys. We're so far ahead of the digital thing. Absolutely. Um, and that even the NHL, the NHL turned to you. The NHL turned to you and asked them to do well, it. There's no, there's no question, and I am very, very proud of that. Was, that's I why, have, that's no, why I, I ask you if you had any, uh, who was the visionary, because you saw it coming a lot faster than anybody else did. Um, I saw it coming, even though uh, I'm, uh, as my granddaughters would tell you, uh, uh, have no ability in that area at all. But it is something that when I look back on it now, you bet I am really proud of it. It is amazing. That, that and the revenue sharing, which really helped balance things off. I mean, that you know, when you did, when you watch Kansas City win a World Series, you you probably felt very good about your revenue sharing plan. I have to tell you, Mike, I went to Kansas City. Well, both years, I went last year too. I went the year before. And you bet. I, I would be less than honest if I didn't tell you I was really proud because that couldn't have happened 20 years ago. Do you think you cared about that because just as an owner it made sense or because you were from Milwaukee and you had a firsthand tie to that or both? I'll tell you why, Bill. I, I, I learned way back when, and I, I use this term and the owners got sick and tired of hearing it and I understand that, but I, that the job of a commissioner is to provide hope and faith in as many places as possible. And it didn't have anything to do with the Milwaukee thing. I mean, I understood it. I had run a team here. But, you know, when I left in 92, we were still very competitive. It was, disparity was beginning to grow, and, and I knew we had to do it. But I knew that we needed a system with a lot of economic manifestations that really gave people hope and faith and because it was good for the sport. So look at what happened. We did it. Went to revenue sharing, did a lot of other things. The sport not only grew at record levels, but it's the last 12 years have been the greatest attendance years in baseball history. What that proves to me is that competitive balance 
is really important in a myriad of ways. Would you like to see Pete Rose reinstated before he leaves the uh, earth, or it's not important? Um, I don't. I. It's another subject. I'll leave to my uh, my friend, Mr. Manfred, who's already ruled on it. And I think you probably understand my feelings, but I, I don't have any further comment. Gotcha. When, did, when did people start complaining to you that baseball games were too long? Was this in the 1980s, 1990s, uh, or 2000s? Back in the 50s and 60s. Oh, okay. That already, <laughs> Keep I them in the batter's box. You know what? I heard it. I heard it in the 50s. <laughs> baseball was more abundant. It's long. It's too slow. It's this and that. Honestly, I've heard that now for 60 years. Yeah. And if things just keep bigger and better than ever. And I, look. Uh, there's no question that all sporting uh, events, as you well know, uh, take a lot longer than they did uh, back in uh, back in my days uh, when I was a kid growing up, or when Lombardi was here. You, the hell, football games took two and a half hours. You could set your watch. Yeah. So, so all sporting events, but you're, I've heard that now for a long time. And look, I, I know Rob has made it a priority, and I think they're doing quite well on that issue. But the fact of the matter is that the sport is more popular today than any of us had any right to believe 20 years ago, 30 years ago, 40 years ago. Well, listen, uh, thank you very much for a couple of minutes, bud. Uh, congratulations. The former commissioner will be receiving on May 18th the Sports Business uh, Lifetime Achievement Award here in New York City. Appreciate a couple of minutes. Thanks for coming on. I do appreciate it, bud. Right, thank, thank you. Thank you, Mike. Thanks, Bill, bud. Good, good to talk to both of you. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, it was great. Thanks. Bud Thanks. Selig, back after this. Hey, it's Flo, and this is my impression of a 1930s gangster using Progressive's Name Your Price tool. Yeah, see? This Name Your Price tool really lays it all out on the table, see? All I had to do was tell her how much I wanted to spend, and it gave me options in one place, see? Makes all of it easy to see, see? It's easy to find insurance that fits your budget with the Name Your Price tool, only at Progressive.com. I might need glasses so I can see more when I'm doing gangster stuff, see? Progressive Casualty Insurance Company. Price and coverage match limited by state law. I dipped tobacco for 18 years, and now that scares me. I used to do it after hockey games or on long car rides, then it became a habit. I never used to pay much attention to the potential side effects, but now I'm older, with a family, now I need to. I still have the urges, but these days I pack naturally with Jake's Mint Chew. It's non-nicotine, tobacco-free, made of USDA certified organic mint. Jake's is long cut, holds well, has good flavor, and helps me avoid going for my chew tobacco. I've turned my friends on to Jake's, and I'm recommending it to you. Go to jakesmintchew.com. Chew healthy, chew mint. Now available in new apple spice flavor. Now is the time to upgrade to professional grade with a new GMC because the pros at your Tri-State GMC dealer are offering a 36-month lease on the 2016 GMC Acadia for $269 per month with only $1439 to its signing. That's right, a GMC Acadia with three rows of seating for only $269 per month. Visit TriStateGMC.com for details. SLE 1 model for well-qualified lessees with a non-GM lease vehicle at participating dealers. Must show proof of current lease. Your payments may vary. Tax title license and dealer fees extra. Mileage charge, $0.25 cents per mile over $30,000. And miles. Stuck in a job you don't like anymore? Enroll for classes at Connecticut School of Broadcasting starting in July, and you could be working in radio, TV, audio, and video production in months, not years. Now, you know my story, and thanks in great part to my friends at CSB, here I am from 10 to 1 weekdays. Connecticut School of Broadcasting has three tri-state area campuses, Stratford, Connecticut, Hasbrook Heights, New Jersey, Westbury, Long Island. What are you waiting for? Get over to one today for a studio tour. Get started today at GoCSB. High prices risk the sale. Too low and your profit margins cut. Effective pricing is key for your small business's success. Find out how at the CBS Small Business Pulse. Built in partnership with First Data, the CBS Pulse gives you the tips for your small business. That's cbspulse.com. When you need your decking now, the solution is No Maintenance Decks. With a showroom in Farmingdale and delivering to the tri-state area, No Maintenance Decks is stocked full of timber tech, AZAC, Trex, and ready to transform your outdoor living space. There's a reason they're the number one decking retailer. When you need your decking now, they have it in stock, ready for delivery. Check out their decking videos at thedecknetwork.com. Order online at nomaintenancedecks.com. No Maintenance Decks, when you need your decking now. This is Jim Rome with the CBS Sports Minute brought to you by Pork Be Inspired. Grill for it, 
at porkbeinspired.com. Let's talk teams hoping to go big in the 2016 NBA draft. The Boston Celtics, the LA Lakers, and the Stub Hub 76ers. Yes, I said it because it's official. The Sixers are the first ever NBA team to put a sponsor on their gamers. To me, it is one of the most overblown things ever. Stop saying it's a shameless, gaudy sellout job by the NBA. And stop talking about how this is a low point for that franchise. It's not even in their top 50. You think it's bad that they have a little corporate logo? They recently lost 20 games in a row. The worst thing on those jerseys is not the patch that says StubHub. It's the letters right next to the patch, which spell out Sixers. I'm Jim Rome. Get off the highways this summer and check out the best detour in Texas. Bass Trop in the Lost Pines region is the no-hassle summer trip you need. Whether you're looking for excitement or just a place to fish, you'll find plenty of riverfront spots to fit your mood, along with some of the most beautiful nature in the country. And when a little civilization sounds good, drive downtown for unique shops, down-home eateries, and lively music venues. You don't have to go very far to get away. Just head down the road to the state's best detour. Bass Trop in the Lost Pines region. Welcome to State Farm, Mr. Murphy. What do you have there? Metal detector. You mentioned you were going to comb through my auto policy to unearth some hidden savings, and I figured you could use this. Actually, I just meant I'd give you our discount double check. I'd dig through your policy and see if there's some discounts you could be taking advantage of. We find more than just nickels and dimes. Oh, that sounds great. Well, there must be a lot of metal in your desk. It's a metal desk. Always looking for the discounts you deserve. That's State Farm's discount double check. Call 1-800-STATE-FARM and get to a better state. State Farm. Diabetes, high blood pressure, anxiety meds, everyone's on them. If you're a 50-year-old male, maybe a bit porky, and you may even have type 2 diabetes, a million dollars of term insurance may only cost you about 200 bucks a month. Call Term Provider. Speak with Big Lou at 800-214-1432. Big Lou will find a term life policy for you even if you have type 2 diabetes, are overweight, or have high blood pressure. Term Provider has helped thousands of people like you who think they can't afford term life insurance. To buy a million dollars of affordable term life for you, all you need to do is call Big Lou at 800-214-1432. Lou is one of you, and will make sure the scales are tipped in your favor. Call 800-214-1432. Big Lou will answer your call and work to fit you into a term life policy that you can afford. Remember, Big Lou is like you. He's on meds, too. Call 800-214-1432. 800-214-1432. Attention taxpayers, if you've received a notice from the IRS or state, do not ignore it. It's also a big mistake to try and handle your tax problem on your own. If you owe back taxes, it's a fact the government has the power to take everything you own, including your home, business, wages, savings, and your freedom. But here's the good news. There are now government programs available to help you settle, reduce, or eliminate what you owe. But these may be limited time programs, so you have to call now. Take down this number or put it in your cell phone. 1-800-294-2339. That's 1-800-294-2339. When you call, you'll get free information from Federal Tax Relief. This free info can even help you if you have penalties, unfound returns, a tax lien, wage garnishment, bank levy, or if you've entered into a payment plan but can't make the payments. Don't make the big mistake in thinking you can ignore or handle your tax problem on your own. Stop the collection process immediately. Call Federal Tax Relief today for free info at 1-800-294-2339. That's 1-800-294-2339. Call now. 1-800-294-2339. If you or someone you know is addicted to drugs or alcohol, this could be the most important message of your life. Write down this number or store it in your cell phone. But call 1-800-426-6186. That's 1-800-426-6186. By calling the treatment helpline for drug and alcohol addiction, you can turn your life around. Our advisors will match you with a proven five-star luxury treatment center that will end your drug or alcohol addiction once and for all. Your future can still be bright. When you call right now, you'll speak to a recovering addict who understands what you're going through. Let us help you break your addiction to drug or alcohol before it's too late. This call is completely confidential. And if you have private insurance, there should be no cost to you. Take five minutes of your time and call right now. It may change your life for the better. Call 1-800-426-6186. That's 1-800-426-6186. Call 1-800-426-6186. 
The RayCatina.com Auto Group Fan Highway Patrol brought to you by Staples. Staples has low prices every day on the office items you use most, like ink and paper, coffee and snacks, and with their new price cuts on ink and toner, you'll save even more. Staples, make more happen. Also brought to you by Montefiore. Montefiore, doing more in state-of-the-art health care for Westchester, the Hudson Valley, and the Bronx. Montefiore, doing more. All right, it took me eight years to find a sidekick, and uh, Simmons is, uh, is is the guy right here. I'm making the announcement now. I can't, I can't, uh, I, I don't know if I can afford him anymore. In the old days, I, you know, he told me I couldn't afford him eight years ago. I could have, but now I don't know if I can afford him, to be honest with you. Now, <laughs> always a great entrance. The uh, right front door makes all the difference. That's why Windorama features Thermatrue fiberglass doors. Thermatrue entry combine the rich look of natural wood with the durability of fiberglass. Thermatrue fiberglass doors doors won't warp, split, crack, or rot like wood or dent like steel. So, Windowrama has been in business for over 35 years with 23 showrooms in the tri-state area. For knowledgeable salespeople, beautiful showrooms, reliable service department, and professional installation, call them at 1-800-897-RAMA, R-A-M-A, 1-800-897-RAMA, or visit windowrama.com. Now, Bowling Branch, we've told about them plenty of times. If you want to get the sheets and get them at a great price, you can get them from the folks at Bowling Branch. That's what they do. They give you luxury sheets at a great price because you get them right from the factory. Cut out the middleman. Cut out the department store. You're talking about 100% pure organic cotton. The best sheets made. That's why three U.S. presidents have slept on these street sheets. Bowling Branch is so confident you love them. They'll give them to you risk-free for 30 nights. You'll only need one to find out how great they are. And it's spring, so freshen up your bedding and check out their natural line of undyed sheets and throw blankets. Right now, 20% off to anyone who's listening. And and just use promo code WFAN at bowl, B-O-L-L, and branch, B-R-A-N-C-H dot com, bowl and branch dot com. Use promo code WFAN. All right, a couple of things you wanted to talk about. Go ahead. Take it away. Well, let's let's reflect on the C-League interview first because okay. that was really interesting. Okay. Um, and I know people do this after they retire as they present, you know, what they did in the most favorable light. Sure. And I think he did some really good things. Like the, the digital stuff was awesome. The revenue sharing worked, all those things. I, I didn't want to press him that hard because it's like you, yeah, know, we're you, you can't fix it now. But the, so. Yeah, the PDs. I just wasn't listen, totally satisfied. Listen, with let's it. be honest. I did everything I could. It's like you I, asked I, the I great question about, about the commissioner and the commissioner's duties changed when the player association became a power in these uh, right. and became an adversarial force in these leagues. And now the commissioner's job is to grow revenue and keep the play association in line. He is a direct employee of the owners. That's the way it is. It's not the old time commission is. And he even admitted that. Uh, listen, you can't change things now. They traded. They traded. Fear and Orza were the biggest culprits because yeah. they had power. Fear, I used to, listen, Fear and Orza, I knew both of them very well. And Bright guys, really bright guys, but they really had a blind spot when it came to the steroids. They were like, it's nobody's business. It's personal. It's within our rights. They're not hurting and anyone. They're not hurting anybody. And yeah. it's like smoking. And they, and they basically were so dug in on these things that when they basically said, wait a second, we're businessmen. We can get A, B, C, D, and E if we back off the drug testing. They backed off the drug testing. And voila, what was happening? They're hitting a million home runs and we're selling and we're making more money. It's great. Well, for the heck, league. this is great. Yeah. What the heck do we care? And we'll act. But what happened was Bud finally went down to Congress and got his rear end kicked. And when he did, he came back and said, Enough already. Now we need testing. And they've put testing in. And he's right about the amphetamine testing. It's been very big, like everyone said it would be. But he doesn't have an answer for the generational gap. A lot of great plates, like you said, you take your kid to the uh, Hall of Fame, Barry Bonds isn't there, A-Rod's not going to be there, Clemens isn't there, uh, Mark McGuire's not there, Sammy Sosa's not there, go down the line. Uh, and well, it's like this whole era yeah, got wiped out. How do you answer it? Manny Ramirez, go down the line. Almost every great slug is a steroid guy. Well, also, you look at it, it really hurt the records. It's just hard to put almost it. any season record in context. I don't know, I guess I, I was hoping, I wasn't going to put the words in his mouth, but I was hoping he would say, you know what? I do look back in retrospect and think like, man, I, I just wish I had done X faster 
instead of just being like, oh, I would, oh yeah, we were doing great. We were trying everything. It's like, well, obviously, we weren't trying everything because right. this lasted forever. Right. And we all knew. And even in the moment, I don't feel like he... No, he didn't. He, he tried to spin around it. it. Listen, yeah. He said, you know, listen, you're not going to get, get that far with him right now. But well, the that's bottom the thing. Line is, is, we could have kept hey, pressing him on it. I don't know if he would have said anything. No, he wouldn't. He wasn't going to ever... He's never... Listen, he knows that it would be a headline. He's not going to ever admit he made a mistake. He's not going to admit that. He, you don't even have to say and it was a mistake. And he almost punted it to Fear and Orza saying, you know how tied in, how you know dug in they were. They were dug in. Right. They should have dug in also. And if it meant a strike, they should have had a strike over it. The, and you know what? I'm not even sure, Bill, if they had asked. I'm not even sure the fans would have been okay with a strike over steroids. Half the fans might not even have cared. Well, and that's the thing we forgot to bring up, and I blame myself. What's that? I, I wish, I, you know, the 94 strike goes on his legacy. And I think when people talk about him, there's going to be five or six things in the first paragraph, and the fact that we lost a World Series happened yeah. when he Listen, was commissioner. But he then got labor. He then, but then he turned it into a good thing. He turned it into a great bonanza for a long time and, and yes. complete peace. So they fought the one war, and it turned out that's what they got out of it. They got no yeah. more stoppages, no more problems, and they've had peace for a long but time. But I wish we had asked them if you had to do it over again. Do you feel like you had to lose the World Series to get? To where the league got. Yeah, I would say, you probably, listen, I, 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 that I have discussed with him before, and he basically said, you know what, it was a time when we had to draw a line. Something had to happen. Yeah, because I, that I have discussed with him before, and he has said, listen, was the last thing we ever wanted to do, but what came out of it was peace. And what, I had to fight a war to get peace. Where do you think this the basketball player stuff go with the NBA, with the next thing? Because everyone's like, no, no, it's going to be fine. It's going to be fine. If Not I'm an you. NBA player, I'm looking at Oklahoma City's team is worth three times what it was. It's and the Clippers be, are going for $2 billion and the Lakers could go the for bottom three. bottom line is, listen. How does this turn out well? I, I think the only thing you can do now as owners is realize, grow the revenue and be willing to give the players a good 50%. You well, might, they, you they might still get a, are, though. That's, that's what, what I mean. the deal is now. Yeah, it's a, but you know what? If you do it's that, gotta stay 50. as long as you, but listen, you must grow, you must put a threshold in where if you can't grow the revenue, the players don't get hurt because you can't grow the revenue. That's the only issue. You don't make, see, the players right. want it where we get it. And you get it no get matter it. what happens. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's no risk. You have to put in something to make sure they get a certain number so that in case they say, well, listen, business isn't good, that thing. The one thing is the digital has been like a license to print money for these guys on every level. Well, and also yeah. they, they're the league that's best positioned to take advantage of the entire world. And they're, they're just getting into the most countries. They also they have will be the China. first into gambling because he's the most oh, yeah. progressive. No, and I, you heard him say that he'd be against gambling. I mean, he was dead set against gambling. See, like, uh, so that, you know, he's that, a, that's yeah. an old guy thing. That though. is an he's old guy. So thing. he remembers like when, when he grew up in a culture of if anyone gambled, it could contaminate the leagues and ruin it. Yeah. Know? But Especially I think, Joe I think there's a lot of owners that are still against it. Now, I think especially in the NFL, I don't know in, co in, in the college. I don't, I mean, in the, uh, in in the uh, NBA, I don't think so. Well, you know what they're they're worried the most about? Everyone's like, "Oh, and a player." They, it's the refs. Yeah, the refs are the easily refs are the ones you could take out well, the one sideline judge, easily and that's corruptible it. No. because the guys who play make too much money. That's why the Donahue thing, you know, which which they did a nice job of kind of getting a, getting out of there. But man, that I mean, that was their all time worst case that, scenario. Yeah. That was, for them was worse than our test gone Absolutely. into the stands. Uh, that without question, that is their greatest fear because they can't come back from that because the game has to have integrity, it has to be on the level. All right, there's a couple things you wanted to get to. Go ahead. What do you want to get to? A couple of things you said, hey I want to get to A, I want to get to B, you want to get to the fight? What about the fight? Go ahead. Yeah, let's talk about the fight quickly because nobody's ever really connected with a punch in a baseball other than like maybe three times. I think Greg Nettles decked Bill Lee once. Like he did. It, it rarely uh, happens. Vote, you know, I was at the 75 Yankee Red Sox fight. Munson and Fish started it at the plate. The it was 76. Yeah, and, yeah. And, and Pinella really started the fight a little. Oh, know, yeah. yeah. He started he the fight. Came in cleats high. Right. So, and I was at that game. The guy who was killing people was Otto Velez. You remember Otto <laughs> Velez? Yeah. He was decking guys right and left out there. Nobody wanted any part. That but ruined then Nettles, season. But then Nettles, obviously. You Mickey know, Rivers? Yes. He but Otto punched. Velez was killing people. He yeah. was, a, you know, if you remember Otto Velez off the Yankee bench, oh, he, yeah. was, he was killing people. I was, I, I was at that game. I mean, that was, you know, so that was a wild, wild fight. But Another right. good one was uh, George Brett and uh, who at third base, Royals-Yankees playoff game. 
Uh, when George Beck came up swinging against Nettles. Oh, oh yeah, Nettles again. Yes, yes. And yes, they yes. stayed in the game, well, which Rose was my favorite and, part. Rose and, and uh, Buddy Harrelson. It's, uh, that was a pretty good one. And at they second stayed base. in the game. Yeah, that was a pretty good one. At but second this base. one was was fascinating because they had the history of last year that they obviously had a, a bug up their butts yep. about uh, Bautista. Odor is, is you know a, a hothead from right. the minor leagues. Has been in a bunch of different things. Doesn't put up with anything. And I thought he really tagged him. Like Bautista was saying, he didn't hurt. I thought Beltre was kind of holding him up. But that for two minutes, Bautista was just kind of like a rag doll, like looking around. I, I think he was annoyed, tagged. He's annoyed a lot of guys, though. Yeah. Yeah, he has. I mean, you know, but there's a lot of guys that do that, though, you know? But he, I mean, how many years have you been watching baseball? How many fights None. have actually been None. where somebody got in very few. a real blow? Yeah, really few. I mean, very few. I mean, I was, Dog and I were feet away from the whole Clemens Piazza thing. I mean, it was right in front of us. We were sitting right there. And, you know, it's, you still couldn't even figure out what was going on in the field. I mean, you could, it was hard to figure what do you, out. How do you explain Clemens, like, just... I can't even imagine the cocktail running through Road his body. Rage. I mean, that's the only yeah, way. Yeah, really, it, it, like his, his eyes were blank. Eyes, he was in another I could universe. See, I could see him, and I would tell you this: there were guys who were like, "How did you not go after him?" If you saw what he looked like, it would have been like you would have wanted like the militia behind you before you <laughs> right. would have gone after him. He was like out of his mind. I mean, he oh was like God. you could see he was crazed. Yeah, he was just gone. I, mean, I think Piazza, the, the Mets fans, took a while for them to oh, forgive him a lot for of guys not going on his own team. Yeah, you know, Mike Hampton, different guys on the team were killing him. You know, they were on him at the time. I mean, so you know that. But again, what if he gets thrown out of the game? Who does he help there? What's your favorite baseball ever? Because mine is when Gerald Ice Williams charged Pedro. Uh, yeah. In like 1998, and then really, Pedro just shut down Tampa after that. It was the best. I don't really. I can't think of a. You know, I can't think of a fight that really. T the, gets it's always me like just baseball. guys milling together. Yeah, the guys, Yankees and Orioles had a fun one. up with another guy. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. I remember. I'm young enough to watch when they would have fights, and this just shows you the ultimate. Okay. They would have a brawl, and Mickey Mantle would walk off to the side. He like no one would engage him. Yeah, like nobody would even say, "I'm not." You think I want to push Mickey Mantle? I mean, right? He, and he wouldn't go after anybody, but nobody would even engage him. Like they, oh wait, you can't touch it. Wait, it's Mickey Mantle. Okay, let's, let's fight with the rest of the guys. And he wouldn't even in the fight. Like he would just like walk off to the side and try to break up a couple. Of, but he would stay off by like no one would even engage him in the fight. You know, usually guys pair off. They wouldn't even go near him. I can't believe they still let the guys run out of the bullpens. Yeah, it's, it just it, makes no sense at honest, all. It's an even number on both the, sides. Yeah, it's it's like, why don't you tricks. stay in the bullpen? What really, are you guys going to do? Let's be honest. Do? It doesn't really have a place in baseball. It really doesn't. No. You know, it doesn't. It doesn't fit. It doesn't fit baseball. In basketball, they've tried so hard to police everything that I do feel like it's compromised I the think, physicality a little bit. You know, I think that. Well, first of all, the physicality in basketball is gone. I mean, but I think well, ever, you, for that reason, though, yes. partly right. Well, and, I, the, and the league's smaller. Well, well, I just think they, and they want offense more than anything yeah. else. But I think more, I think that Kermit Washington left such a residue of, listen, it used to be this theory when guys would beat on Wilt. Yeah. That if Wilt ever got angry, God forbid he ever got angry. I mean, no one might be standing if he ever got angry. But yeah. Wilt wasn't an angry guy. By, by nature, he wasn't an angry guy. But, you know, Tommy Heinsohn told me once, he told me that he wants on a foul. Because I was with the, the, the CBS teams when Tommy and then was doing the games. Okay? And he told me, and Tommy's a really good guy and a good storyteller. Very funny storyteller. Holy Cross, class of 56. Hey, he told me, I went up to give Wilt the foul. And he says, I'm telling you, Wilt had the ball in his right hand, and I clasped his wrist and his forearm, and I must have weighed 250, 260. I grabbed his wrist and his forearm with both arms, and he dunked me. <laughs> <laughs> he said he went up, and he dunked me with one hand. They said the Celtics only made him mad once. It was the famous photo of Sam Jones had to get the photographer <laughs> stool to fend Wilt off like he was an enraged well, think about it. He got 55 or rebounds in a playoff game against, yeah. the, against the Celtics. I mean, that is, think about that, 55 rebounds. How can there be 55 rebounds? Well, yeah, the, 55 you mentioned rebounds. the Kermit thing. Um, that was devastating. Well, yeah. but it also had Kareem sucker punch 
Kent Benson a couple months I before and broke his hand and broke Benson's jaw. And then he went after Happy Haston and the great. You that know, was the, another the way he stuck game. a bunch of him too. Yeah, I, I think that was a couple Should years. Should have been years thrown years out of that game. Yeah, yeah. They didn't put it a streak. It was national TV, the whole thing. But I think it's so much easier for a basketball player to hurt somebody with a punch because they can actually set well, their feet and there's not a lot of people. Remember how strong Kermit Washington was? Oh, yeah. He was. I mean, he was one of the enforcers. I mean, Rudy, he's lucky he didn't kill Rudy D. I think he almost did. I mean, he could have. I mean, it's it really close. It, I mean, it really could have been that bad. So you know, you don't want someone actually to really get hurt in these things. You know, that's the right. thing. It's well, I'm always surprised with the baseball fights that just guys coming in all different directions. It's amazing nobody's just gotten really sucker punched. At five o'clock, we'll get into the two series. I want to talk about the, both series. You know, as oh, they, yeah. as they begin tonight. You know, I don't think. I mean, we don't give Toronto. The question is, does Toronto win a game, or are they so fixated they go now? And they run at the 12. I mean, <sighs> that's the question. You give them a game or no game? We can do that in two minutes. You give them yeah. a game and no game. I, can I think about it over the break? Yeah. Or oh, you want to give them the, gel, the gentleman's sweep I think of they five? Might, yeah, yeah, they might get the, the, the one game where they just win at yes. home and they get every call and, you know, one of those game threes, right. 34 to 10 free throw advantage. I don't know. Yeah, all right. yeah we'll, we'll talk about it. Let me take the a other quick one break. is yeah, one of the most fascinating series that we've had in a while. You think it's going to be that competitive, though? I do. All right, let's talk about that. We'll come back and talk about it with Bill Simmons right after this. There has never been a better time to experience a new Buick, and right now, you can get great deals on 2016 Buick models in stock, like a 39-month lease on a 2016 Buick Encore for $179 per month with only $819 due at signing. That's right, a luxurious Buick Encore crossover for just $179 per month. Visit TristateBuick.com for details. One SB model for well-qualified lessees with a non-GM lease vehicle with participating dealers. Must show proof of current lease. Your payments may vary. Tax title license and dealer fees extra. Mileage charge of $0.25 cents per mile over 32,500 miles. More delicious meals and more beautiful kitchens begin with legendary appliance innovators Sub-Zero and Wolf. Family-owned and built in the USA, Sub-Zero's energy-efficient technology will help keep your food fresher longer. Wolf's professional heritage, power, and finesse ensures the dish you have in mind will be the dish that you bring to the table. In fact, I know firsthand, they're top of the line. I have both Sub-Zero and Wolf products at my home. To shop for Sub-Zero and Wolf products, visit Marlin Appliances. Come see our new Sub-Zero showroom at 3825 Merrick Road in Seaford, New York, or call us at 516 826 Six seven one three seven. High prices risk the sale. Too low and your profit margins cut. Effective pricing is key for your small business's success. Find out how at the CBS Small Business Pulse. Built in partnership with First Data, the CBS Pulse gives you the tips for your small business. That's cbspulse.com. Every day we hear news about high levels of hazardous chemicals, bacteria, even lead in water across the country. Do you know what's in your home's water? A Pelican water system can reduce 99% of those pollutants from your water. You'll have spring quality water from every faucet in your home. We have factory direct pricing, a 90-day money-back guarantee, and free shipping. Call Pelican now and they'll ship you a free information kit. Call 888-474-4019. That's 888-474-4019. Are you behind on your taxes? The IRS is the largest and most aggressive collection agency in the world, and they can seize your bank account, garnish your paycheck, close your business, and file criminal charges. Tax Mediation Services is accredited by the Better Business Bureau. Our team of tax attorneys and enrolled agents can stop collections and get you protected. If you owe over $10,000 in back taxes or have unfiled tax returns, call now for a free case review and a price protection guaranteed quote at 800-930-0972. 800-930-0972. Are you paying too much for auto insurance or looking for coverage? Do you know which insurance company has the lowest rates? Call Direct Insurance now, and instead of searching through hundreds of insurance companies, let us do the work for you and match you with the one company that meets your auto insurance needs. Best of all, our service is free. Call now, 800-901-1249. 800-901-1249. 800-901-1249. I'm a dream big kind of kid, and I need a good education as a foundation to help me get where I want to go. What's time for learning homeschool? Flexible scheduling and student paste. Check. Online interactive curriculum. Check. Log in from anywhere at any time. Check. Start helping your kid dream big today and create a love of learning at timeforlearning.com. Use promo code radio to save 20% off your first month. Log on timeforlearning.com now. 
Do you need vision insurance because you're retired or your employer doesn't offer vision insurance? VSP Direct provides affordable individual vision plans direct to you. You'll see great savings and experience the lowest out-of-pocket cost in vision care. VSP Direct covers an eye exam, glasses, contacts, and more. Call 855-401-1432 to start your path to better vision. That's 855-401-1432. This coverage has exclusions and limitations. Call VSP Direct for details. Every day we hear news about high levels of hazardous chemicals, bacteria, even lead in water across the country. Do you know what's in your home's water? A Pelican water system can reduce 99% of those pollutants from your water. You'll have spring quality water from every faucet in your home. We have factory direct pricing, a 90-day money-back guarantee, and free shipping. Call Pelican now and they'll ship you a free information kit. Call 888-474-4019. That's 888-474-4019. This week in 1819, the first bicycles were introduced in the U.S. The first Kentucky Derby was held. This week in 1875. This week in 1900, the second modern Olympic Games opened in Paris. This week in 1933, the first Major League Baseball All-Star Game was announced as part of the Chicago World's Fair. The NFL adopted an annual college draft. This week in 1935, Joe DiMaggio started a 56-game hitting streak. This week in 1941. This week's most popular music, 34 years ago, 1982, number three, Charlene, I've never been to me, never been to me, number two, Rick Springfield, don't talk to strangers, don't talk to strangers, and the number one song this week, 34 years ago in 1982, Paul McCartney and Stevie Wonder, Ebony and Ivory, Ebony. Most popular music 20 years ago, 1996. Number three, Celine Dion, Because You Loved Me. Because you loved me. Number two, Mariah Carey, Always Be My Baby. And the number one song this week, 20 years ago in 1996. Bone Thugs and Harmony, The Crossroads. Lawrence Building Materials is a full-line building materials supplier with four warehouse locations and two showrooms on Long Island. Their goal is to satisfy the needs of contractors, builders, architects, and homeowners by offering personal service, dependability, and premium products like Anderson 400 Series windows. Anderson, built, backed, and serviced like no other window. Buy your Anderson from Florence and receive an extended year of labor at no charge for Anderson's warranted parts. From Montauk to Manhattan, make the correct choice for your home and call Florence Building Materials at 631-499-6200 or go to FlorenceCorp.com. WFAN, WFAN FM, New York. WFAN 2020 Sports. brought to you by Mercedes Benz for Matic All Wheel Drive. Find your tri state dealer at MBUSA.com and by Chipotle. Find a location near you at Chipotle.com. Yanks off a 7 and 3 homestand against the likes of the Red Sox, Royals, and White Sox. And tonight, Start of a Western trip in Arizona against the Diamondbacks. Manager to Joe Girardi. We're playing a lot better baseball, um, that's for sure. So, you know, we have a big road trip here, seven days, and we need to continue to play well. Um, but uh, we're swinging the bats, we're scoring runs, we're winning close games. Um, I feel a lot better. And Yankee start rookie Chad Green tonight is Major League debut. Yankee baseball on the fan, 9 o'clock pre. Mets have the night off. Nationals in town tomorrow. The latest on Steven Matz is this. It said his elbow ligament is said to be fine, no damage to it, and there's hope that he could start soon. Nets formally introduced Kenny Atkinson as their new head coach. Pacers make it official. Nate McMillan takes over for Frank Vogel. Tonight in Oakland, game one of the NBA's Western Final, Warriors and Thunder. Minnesota's Carl Anthony Towns, the NBA's Rookie of the Year, Kristaps Porzingis of the Knicks finishing second. Word from Buffalo is that Bills wide receiver Sammy Watkins has broken his foot. And Tiger Woods says he's still not sure when he'll return to competitive golf. Tiger says he is not ready to play against the world's bus. Uh, Tiger uh, put three ceremonial tee shots in the water today. This report brought to you by Shelby's Power Sports in the Bronx, New York, and also by the new Ichiban teriyaki-style chicken. Only from Boar's Head, compromise elsewhere. 67 degrees, skies are mostly sunny, and that's what's happening. This is John Minko with 2020 Sports on WFAN. Sports Radio 66 FM 119. Flagship station for Boomer and Cart morning 6 until 10. Francesca on the fan afternoons 1 until 6.30. 
Get off the highways this summer and check out the best detour in Texas. Bass Trap in the Lost Pines region is the no-hassle summer trip you need. Whether you're looking for excitement or just a place to fish, you'll find plenty of riverfront spots to fit your mood, along with some of the most beautiful nature in the country. And when a little civilization sounds good, drive downtown for unique shops, down-home eateries, and lively music venues. You don't have to go very far to get away. Just head down the road to the state's best detour, Bass Trap in the Lost Pines region. Mike's on, he's ready to go On the fan, New York Sports Radio Mike's on, Mike's on All right, a little after five on this Monday program uh, Bill Simmons has been uh, with me all day today And it's been very interesting stuff, been a lot of fun uh, Yanks are in action tonight as they go to uh, Arizona As they begin there tonight with Green on the mound, uh, uh, we'll be on the mound tonight against Ray. So the Yankees, uh, who played well at home, and they did a good job. They won each series. They lost the game in each series, but just well, you know, they won. Congratulations! Hey, listen, it was a it was a step. baby steps. Listen, if it was a step in the right direction, they're sixteen and twenty now. A bad series there, and if they had come home to a bad home stand after where they were, I mean, they would have been in big, big trouble. Now they got to get to five hundred and start to just you know. Take little steps. One thing, it's going to be fun if you like it to watch this pen work because the other day, the other day they struck out eight out of ten. I mean, that's you don't see stuff like that. Ten outs, they strike out eight guys. You know, with a one run lead, that that's that's hellacious stuff. I'm in like the nerdiest fantasy baseball league you can ever imagine. It's American League only. You draft minor leaguers. You can keep guys for as long as four years. I mean, it is like demented. That's the why. depth of nerddom. Right. I've had Betances basically since he was in the minors. He, I, I can't even describe what it's like to have him. He just he comes in for an inning, he strikes out three guys. There's been subtle signs of yes. I don't know what. Well, like he's, he's not as invincible oh, as he used you. to be. Wait, I get wait. a tiny bit worried. Tip the pitches. Uh, they, they got, you think that's what it is? That's what I was told. I was told from a good source that he was tipping the pitches in Boston. Oh, and they straightened it out. The Boston had it on him, and that's where he got hurt. Got wow. hurt twice in three games there, and uh, that they had him, and they said they would correct it. That they had it. That he was tipping pitches, and let's see if it goes back. The guy, though, who's the unsung hero is Miller. Yeah, because he pitches great, and he allows the pitching that great. Let Chapman come in and take his job. Doesn't say a word. Team guy. I mean, very very smart acquisition by them. The yes. Red Sox had him for a little bit. He he's was good, good, but it was good guy too. Yeah, and you know, McCann's been pretty good since he's been a Yankee. He's been pretty also good. that. Yeah, yeah, that was pretty he's good. He's too. been pretty good. Ellsbury's been a disaster. Uh, 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 Another like we were uh, talking earlier about those free agents in uh, their thirties. Ellsbury's been a disaster. All right, let's get to. All right, so we said. Wait, you're going to tell me first. Cleveland. Toronto, four or five. I don't think you think, anyone thinks six, right? Four no, or I'd five. say five. He, he, I'm going to go four hurt. just to keep it alive and have them come into the finals with a, with a clean slate. So, so I'm going to go four. I'm rooting for that just because it would be fun. And it's basically the 89 Lakers scenario, right? The 89 Lakers, 12-0, and 10-0, and 0, whatever it was, heading into the Detroit series. Yep. Everyone got hurt. They fell apart. Yeah, but, I remember. You know, the thing with, with Cleveland going into the finals and the thing they've been trying to do that makes them – Kind of a wild card, even though I think the Warriors are better and Oklahoma City's probably a tiny bit better. But when you're firing up that many threes, assuming that they continue to do this, it almost removes the. It, it's this variable that um, you can be better, and the other team can just make go twelve for twenty five for three, and you lost the game. And you're like, what just happened? But you're also we have a better team. You're also bringing like J. L. Smith into play. You know, well, which the, is a great danger. The John Starks corollary. Yeah, when you have gr- John yes. Starks, J.R. Smith, those type of guys yes. in your team, at some point they're right. going to matter in a big moment. Now, Isaiah, I mean, uh, LeBron has not had to, has not had to uh, at any moment really say to these guys, get out of my way, time for me to work. But they still have it. Right, it's still there. The car is yeah. in the garage Absolutely. ready to be pulled out. I mean, you've seen him a couple of minutes make a play late, make a shot late. You know, make a defensive play late, like he tied him up late in the game, got the tip, you know, get out of there. He's he's closed well the last two minutes of these games. He's closed well, but he hasn't tried to score. He's backed off and been the ultimate facilitator so far to build a little confidence, I think, more than anything else. I agree, and he's... You know, he can always just put his head down and get to the rim. Oh. And there's only three guys in the league Without who can do that. that. And he can do it whenever they yeah, need a basket. He can you know, get a call or he can get a layup. When he posts up, 
you know, it, it, it's over. I mean, you know, because if you bring the guy to him, he's going to give up a really good shot. And if you don't bring the guy to him, he's going to score. I mean, that's all there is to it. I mean, he's going to score. So, I mean, that's when he when he gets the position on that post up, it's really what are you going to do? You, you, what do you want to do? You want to leave the guy in the short corner open or you want to come down and double him? If not, he's going to score. I mean, that's all there is to it. And that's the recipe for Golden State. If you can make threes. Kyrie, who I think is the X factor right now, because that's a guy that Golden State just doesn't have to match up. They don't have right. the right matchup. They'd have to play Clay Thompson on him, I think. And then LeBron, the last four minutes, just being able to get to right. the line and do stuff. And that's well, that's tough if Cleveland. But I don't trust Cleveland yet. Well, yeah, the I, East is terrible. I thought Cleveland would be in the final all year. Yeah. Uh, I but get, does that mean because it was a bad no, conference? Bad, or you thought yeah, they were bad good? East. Yeah. And I thought by the time they got there, uh, they would be better. And. I think they have a chance in the finals. I would not make them the favorite, but let's wait on that because we could talk about it in a couple of weeks. Everyone can. Here's the first question I'll get you. I'll let you coach your way out of this one first because here's the, here's the real Basketball. question. Yeah, tonight. Here you go. Oklahoma, clearly, Oklahoma City's best game is with Cantor and Adams on the floor. That is their best team. That's a big team with a lot of length counting their big two who both yeah. have length. So you have length and size at four positions, great length. Now, they can go play the small lineup with Green at the five. Do you who blinks first? The small Golden State lineup or the big if you're Oklahoma City, I go to the big lineup and say, Okay, we're gonna throw the ball down inside on you guys. We're gonna bang you on the backboards, both ends. We're gonna get Green in foul trouble because he's gonna play with a guy over his head and we're gonna make him, and he's, and he's, and he's susceptible to fouls. Green, the only bad parts of his game is he doesn't make free throws and he's susceptible to foul trouble. Those, otherwise he's great. The bottom line is, uh, do you, who, who blinks first? The little three point shooting team that could or the bigger team? So, a couple things. One of the reasons the Cantor Adams lineup works so much was because of how San Antonio plays and the people they have. And they really have to play bigs. They don't have a lineup that can go small like Golden State can, right? Like, you, yeah, you could play Kawhi at the four and try to play Parker and Patty Mills and Danny Green and whatever. Those guys weren't playing well. Well, they tried, and they got yeah. open shots, and they missed them. They missed game all five, of them. Game five, they missed all of them. San Antonio missed shots that whole series game that five, were wide open. Game five, they missed open. shots that were wide open. Well, game four, game yeah. two, I mean, they were getting good shots. It's no just question. Their perimeter guys weren't playing well. No now question. you're going against a series with Golden State. Steph and Claire are the two best shooters on the planet right now. They can go small. They can go big. They can do whatever. And if they go big with that lineup, um, they're going to get rebounds, but they're going to give up threes. And the question for OKC is, if we keep these guys in and we're just dominating the glass, we're getting second chance points, all that stuff, can that be enough to offset the threes? Because remember the famous game where Curry hit the 40-footer to win? Probably they were plus 30 in well, rebounds that game. There's Oklahoma a percentage City. where it, they can't, listen, you gotta, it, there's a percentage at where it tilts. Yeah, there's a percentage at where it tilts. Now, if they obviously make it where they're shooting, you know, fifty something percent from three, it's over. I mean, that's all there is to it. The question is, though, when one is working, does the other back off and adjust, or is just push through? But isn't that why we love playoff series? Yes. Fascinating. You know, like, Fascinating. I, I'm telling you this: Westbrook is going to win a See, game. And Billy in this Donovan's series. good. To ma- uh, he's good at this. Billy Donovan's much. B- people act like, oh, he's only done it in college. Billy Donovan can coach. Well, he was bad in the, yeah. during the season, though. Like he, know, he, he was, was missing basic stuff. Though. He was learning, but he was doing stuff like he would take Westbrook and Durant out at the same time. Yeah, he was. You learning. leave those. You leave one of those guys in at all times. You have a huge advantage. His play, but he learned. He got to the playoffs and he Here, learned what he had to do. Here's why I'd be worried if I was a Warriors fan. I felt like that OKC team was on the brink of. Just just completely imploding in game four. And you could see they were getting snippy. They seemed tense. And then Durant just went to another level and he won the game for him. Everything fell into place. They started playing that canner. Adams lineup was really good. Their role guys started getting involved. Westbrook went. I think that team, something happened. I, I really do feel well, like it's a different question. team. here's the question. Can Westbrook be the best player on the floor? Well, he's. you know who win one game. Can and that's a guy the, that... Can he be under control and the best? Because let's be honest. All around game, if we take all these guys who are in that series, all around game, he's got the best all around game if his head works. Well, he also has the most flaws, though. Yeah, he does have the most flaws, but he's got the best. And remember, like he hit, he hit some of the worst shots oh. of all time in the last three games. They just went in. Listen, he's he made two thirty footers in huge moments. He has got to play a game that is cleaner and smarter than he's ever played. 
See, I, I disagree. I, I feel he has like to win. He can't win. I disagree. I, I think Westbrook is Westbrook. You can't change him at this point. You got to wind him up and let him go. He's no, the best athlete in the league. Yeah, but it LeBron. has to come out good because if it because there's he a real. He is who he is. But then, then, then I don't think he'll be consistent enough because I think I think the flaws will show. It's, I, a, it's like you're basically saying to Mick Jagger, like, look. I mean, Mick Jagger 40 years no, ago. No, I'm but saying... you're basically saying, like, look, don't dance around the no. stage as much. Just keep it in control. Like, he, Westbrook is Westbrook. No, I'm saying don't reach that point where you lose it. Don't reach that point where there's always that extra, that moment where he decides, you know what? It's just me out here. There's no one else here. Know, that's him, you though. Know, don't you, you really think he can shut that off? I, think I don't you feel have like he can shut that I off. I think, you know what? There's a way to get to be... I think there's a point where the head can marry the talent... If that doesn't happen, with, with him going through another, where you say, Westbrook not only played great, but he played smarter than he's ever played yeah. before. If you can't see that, I think Golden State wins. Because I, I think remember, he becomes too much of a negative. I think Golden State's going to win, but I think it's going to go seven. And I think Ibaka is going to be more important than this series. Boy, than people he's been realize. hot and cold, man. Hot and cold, but this is the right series for Adams him. This is where you go small ball. Adam has really, Adams has really He's out of that him. 70s and 80s, right? Man, he has helped Old them. school villain, boy, bully. Boy, but helped a lot, though. You really helped a lot, though, in a lot of ways. He really has. He's added a different dimension to that team. He really has. Let me throw this at you. Usually the team with the if if two relatively even teams... The team that has the player who plays the best in the series usually wins that series. No question. Kevin Durant, I think. I don't think it's Westbrook. I think it has to be Durant. I think if Durant's the best player in this series, that's the best chance for OKC to win. I don't see a scenario where Westbrook is the best player in this see, series. I think He's too he, up and he down. Here's why. See, to me, if, if Durant's the best player and Westbrook's his typical self, I don't think they'll win the series. I think it almost has to be where Westbrook plays better than Durant. You know Durant's going to play well. Durant's right. not going to have a terrible series. You know that going in. But could Durant have like a, a career-altering... Could he be in the middle of a stretch? Because Game 4 and Game 6, he was fantastic. Could he be entering... I, I compared it to Dirk Nowitzki in 2006. And you want to see it Dirk manifest put, itself how? I, I'm saying he just goes in and it's like they can't stop him. So, Everyone so, they're throwing at him, he's just scoring on So him. right now, does it matter... We're talking, of course, with Bill Simmons who's with me the whole show. Does it matter in your mind... Who the high scorer and you know, normally you could care less who the high scorer is. I mean, you know most series who the high scorer is. It's not. It's okay? not a high score thing as much as an alpha dog. Well, thing. in this in this series, it is for this reason. The guy. Now, if it turns out to be you know one game this guy, one game this guy. But the point is, in this series, see if San Antonio's if Golden State's clicking, Curry's scoring is. You know, 31, 32 points, yeah. 30 points, 31 points. You know, he's shooting a good, a good percentage. He's taking his shots, but he's, you know, he's making his shots. He's getting to the foul line. He's doing the things he does. You don't want, they're off their game if Thompson's their high scorer. They, you know, you don't want Thompson to be their high scorer sure. in those games. You know, you want Curry in control of the game in the fourth quarter. When they go back to their regular rotation and they put Curry back in with the seven minute mark of the fourth quarter and they go back to their typical thing, you know, their rotations are pretty, I mean, he, you know, let's see in this series. Because he's up against two very talented players, and you're not usually. But he sticks to a very strict system of how he he uses his minutes. I mean, you know when Curry's going to sit. You know when he's going to play. I mean, he pretty much is pretty rote about that. He really is. Do you does does Curry have to be the high scorer? I think he does. And Durant, if if West, you see, to me, if Westbrook plays out of his mind, see, I don't think if Westbrook doesn't play out of his mind, I think Golden State's going to win the series. In my mind. I think you I have think to be that saying, to be wow, Westbrook is really just, wow, he is the best guy on the floor. Like in what you series. had the last two games. Yeah, that that's what you have. I think that's, because I think you're going to get a, here, at, you're going to get a, on a scale of one to ten, you're going to get your eights minimum out of, out of Durant. You know, you, he's an impossible cover. Nobody can cover Durant. We all know that. No one but, can stop Durant from scoring. But here's what they have, though, that, you know, Golden State, people forget this part. When you have a really great team with a really great player at the end of the games, the other team kind of caves. Like if you watch the, the unbelievable overtime that Curry had against Portland, it wasn't just that he was so great in that overtime. Portland got freaked out. Like if you watch closely, like Portland starts taking terrible shots. Like the, there was greatness in the building. The fans got involved and, and, or the fans didn't get involved. They went silent. And, uh, and, and the players could feel it. Duran is one of the few guys in the league that if that moment starts to happen, he can just come down and make a 20 footer. 
I think him and LeBron he, are the only two that can go to. toe-to-toe with this. See, at, 80, at 88 82 they're losing to the Spurs. Westbrook scored the two biggest baskets, I thought, in the whole series. Yeah, one of them was like a 30-footer, right? The next yeah, yeah. two trips. And yeah. that, those were the, that, that to me, and then Canton made the two next baskets. You know, he got the two next hoops in that game. And that game changed everything, obviously. I mean, they got outscored 13-3 to in the final three minutes on their floor, which is amazing. I was really amazing. frustrated with though. Like, I, I have a, an NBA vote. I didn't vote for Durant or Westbrook for first team all NBA because to me it's like they only won fifty five games. And I think some of the guys in their team are talented. I think Canner is a talented offensive guy. I think Abaka is really good. I like Adams. See, can, Waiters is decent. Can Oklahoma City take see the one thing here's one thing that really hurt Golden State last year. Cleveland took Golden State completely out of their game in the finals. They won, but they won differently. They won with Iguodala scoring. They won doing things completely. Well, they, they were nervous the they first couple games. They did unorthodoxly, too, though. though, in that whole yeah. series. They they won an ugly series because Cleveland had to make it an ugly series. They had no choice but with the people they were playing. Slowed it down. But they also turned it into a series where Golden State never got to play their fluid, pretty basketball the entire series. Can Oklahoma City get them where they're not playing their pretty, fluid basketball? Because if they try to match them playing that pretty fluid basketball up and down the floor. They're not going to win because they're going to rain more threes on them. They're just going to do it. I actually think Oklahoma City, their only chance is to have a, these games that are like 129 to 125. I don't know that That's they can how, win those. Golden State, when, if you look at how they've lost, and we had a, in the ringer today in our newsletter, uh, high Jonathan Jarks on the other this. team. No, the big, bo- big explosive you get, games. You have to get over 100 and p- 108 right. points, basically, right. to beat them. Lillard had big games when they lost. Yeah. Harden had big games when they lost. All true. Yeah, big, they all had big scorers you when they lost. You need to be able to throw multiple guards at them. You have to make Curry guard somebody. And right. The thing is, like, I, I truly believe Golden State's best lineup is going to be better than OKC's best lineup. But you have seven games. You're playing every other night, basically. And it's a lot of pressure to put on Green to be the only guy fending off all right. these big guys in OKC. You just hit on you the next Bogey, thing. You need Bogey, you need You just hit on the next thing I was going to bring up. You have got to make Curry pay on the defensive end of Have the floor. To. Now, if you're Oak City, how are you doing that? Okay? They're not going to have him go near Westbrook or Durant. He's not going near either one. So how do you put a guy on the floor that either, you're going to put a big on him? You know, that's then, the one then thing they're going to You're going to get killed on the other. He's going to hide floor. on Robertson. He's going to hide on Deion Waiters. He's going to have whoever. a guy to hide on. Yeah. Now Waiters could go off, but the odds on that are minuscule. Okay, that he's going to have one of these moments when he, you know, I still my, love Waiters. Yeah, my feeling with Waiters is this: it's the old Cassie Russell rule I used to have years and years ago. If he hits the first, leave him alone. Give him five more. If he gets the, missed the first, get him out of the game. <laughs> the Cassie <laughs> Russell rule. Yeah. I love that. Hit the first. <laughs> Right. Give him five more shots. Here's what OKC, Miss the first. Get him out of the game. Here's what OKC has, and you're forgetting this part. They're going to hit Curry. They, all these teams are let dancey, like Portland's letting him dance around, let through, dance through lane. The only team that really got physical with him during the year was the Clippers. Chris Paul would foul him, I don't know, 40 times in the same game. He was just hands on, pushing him, bumping him. The Celtics did the same thing. He doesn't like that. I think OKC's going to beat him Who up. Who are you going to make him guard though? You're not. You, but you're going to have to beat him up on the offense. See, I wish if you had another Adams scorer. Adams is going to have some if hits. If you had on another him. scorer. See, He's never, you're never going to put him in a position where you're going to say, man, he's got no one to guard on the floor. They're going to put him on whoever is the non scorer in your five sum. He's going to, they're going to put him on that guy. Yeah, even if he just stands over there and does nothing, they don't care. I mean, they don't care what he does. And that's Cleveland's big advantage because they have multiple guys. He's going to have to guard Kyrie Irving or J.R. Smith and J.R. Smith can shoot over. They're going to, they're going to, uh, you know, they're going to shoot the ball. There's no question uh, that because you have to make him pay on that end of the, you got to occupy him on that end of the floor. There are nights when he doesn't do anything on that end of the floor. I think they're going to win in seven, but I think this is okay. This is such hey, a uh, fascinating. What, what, has to, what, is, what, what has to happen? So you're saying picking goal and state in seven. Yeah, but I think yeah. if OKC wins, I think they have to win in six, which means they have to win tonight. They have to. I don't think they can win a game seven in Golden State. That crowd's too crazy. Curry feeds off. Yeah, I don't think they can. It's just either. too unrealistic. Right. So I think they'd, they'd have, have to win game seven. So I think they'd have six. to win in six. So yeah. So I'm, they'd have I'm to picking, win tonight. I'm picking Golden State in six. Golden State in six. Yeah, that's fair. I was going to pick them in five, but I thought you know what, five's cheap. It, it might be they're better than that. So I'm going to pick Golden State in six. Uh, I'd be very surprised if Oak City wins. Very so, surprised. 
in game now, four. Now, I admit, I thought San Antonio was going to beat Oak City for the series. Before the series started, I thought Oak yeah, San Antonio was going to I win. love Popovich, but I just didn't think he coached a good series. I, I thought the whole thing was weird. I thought the whole thing. I, thought I think Tim Duncan thing hurt was, them a bit. I think the Tim Duncan thing was weird. Yeah. I think Aldridge killed them after game two. I think I, there was a lot of things, you know, that, that I just didn't understand in that series. He's, uh, a, he's a strange guy, Aldridge, and I know Portland had a lot of problems with him. It's been written about, like, he was very resentful of Lillard, and he's very up and down, and, and part of me wonders when things started to go south. Man. That great chemistry San Antonio it had, really it just seemed like south. it went away. It really, yeah, I, I still, if you played game five again, I still think they're going to win the game. I mean, the, the, how they lost that game it's five just was... shots. Westbrook a, made a couple crazy was shots. unbelievable. They were up 88-82. I thought the game was over. I mean, I thought it was over. Yeah, that's the thing, though. We never talked about Phil Jackson. Go ahead. Well, let's take a break. We'll All come right. back with uh, Bill Simmons, and we'll talk about Phil Jackson when we come back. Now is the time to upgrade to professional grade with a new GMC because the pros at your Tri-State GMC dealer are offering a 36-month lease on the 2016 GMC Acadia for $269 per month with only $1439 due at signing. That's right, a GMC Acadia with three rows of seating for only $269 per month. Visit TriStateGMC.com for details. SLE 1 model for well-qualified lessees with a non-GM lease vehicle at participating dealers. Must show proof of current lease. Your payments may vary. Tax title license and dealer fees extra. Mileage starts $0.25 cents per mile over $30,000. Miles. High prices risk the sale. Too low and your profit margins cut. Effective pricing is key for your small business's success. Find out how at the CBS Small Business Pulse. Built in partnership with First Data, the CBS Pulse gives you the tips for your small business. That's cbspulse.com. More delicious meals and more beautiful kitchens begin with legendary appliance innovators Sub-Zero and Wolf. Family-owned and built in the USA, Sub-Zero's energy-efficient technology will help keep your food fresher longer. Wolf's professional heritage, power, and finesse ensures the dish you have in mind will be the dish that you bring to the table. In fact, I know firsthand, they're top of the line. I have both Sub-Zero and Wolf products at my home. To shop for Sub-Zero and Wolf products, visit Dreamers featuring the Sub-Zero Wolf Living Kitchen located at 1608 Coney Island Avenue, Brooklyn, or Dreamer.com. The RayCatina.com Auto Group Fan Highway Patrol brought to you by Holy Name Medical Center. Heartspan Center is the most experienced hip and knee replacement private practice in the region. 30,000 and counting. Regain your mobility. Call Heartspan Center in Paramus, New Jersey. 201-291-4040. Also brought to you by the Amtrak Auto Train. Leave traffic behind without leaving your car behind. Book now and save. Take the auto train and ride to Florida with your kids and your car. Kids 12 and under ride for $29.00. June 3rd through August if you buy before May 21st. Restrictions apply. Amtrak.com slash auto train kids. I'm Doug Gottlieb with this CBS Sports Minute. Thunder Warriors game one tonight. I could break the game down for you and mention how interesting it is that the Thunder want to go big and the Warriors want to go small and whether or not the Thunder are able to get Draymond Green in a foul trouble may be paramount in their ability to beat the Warriors four games in seven tries. But here's the truth to it. As of now, the Thunder appear to have overachieved. The perception is the Spurs were the second best team in the NBA, at least record-wise, in the regular season. And because they beat the Spurs, the presumption is that Kevin Durant's going to stay in Oklahoma City for at least one more year. If they get swept, completely different story. And our view of Steph Curry and the Warriors is one of the all-time great teams. But that's as of now. What happens if the Thunder win this year? Buckle up. It's going to be four, five, six, or seven games. And I actually think the Thunder are going to win this year. I'm Doug Gottlieb. CBS Sports Radio. Hey, it's Flo, and this is my impression of a beat poet. Name. Name your. Name your price. Ah. <sighs> A tool, an idea, an inspiration to do more than just say what you want to pay, oh no, but to see the options that could fit your budget. <sighs> Steve. Steve, enough bongos. Find car insurance that fits your budget at Progressive.com. Makes me want to dance. Steve! Progressive Casualty Insurance Company. Price and coverage match limited by state law. Thinking of the all-new 2017 Mercedes-Benz C-Class Coupe as just a standard vehicle is a little like calling a world champion weightlifter strong. With its powerful turbocharged engine, the C-Class Coupe has claimed its place among the sportiest of Mercedes-Benz vehicles. And it's available now at an exceptional price. Why drive any car when you could be driving the 2017 Mercedes-Benz C-Class Coupe? Click to learn more. Mercedes-Benz. The best or nothing. If you or someone you know is addicted to drugs or alcohol, this could be the most important message of your life. 
Write down this number or store it in your cell phone. But call 1-800-426-6186. That's 1-800-426-6186. By calling the treatment helpline for drug and alcohol addiction, you can turn your life around. Our advisors will match you with a proven five-star luxury treatment center that will end your drug or alcohol addiction once and for all. Your future can still be bright. When you call right now, you'll speak to a recovering addict who understands what you're going through. Let us help you break your addiction to drug or alcohol before it's too late. This call is completely confidential. And if you have private insurance, there should be no cost to you. Take five minutes of your time and call right now. It may change your life for the better. Call 1-800-426-6186. That's 1-800-426-6186. Call 1-800-426-6186. Get off the highways this summer and check out the best detour in Texas. Bass Trop in the Lost Pines region is the no-hassle summer trip you need. Whether you're looking for excitement or just a place to fish, you'll find plenty of riverfront spots to fit your mood, along with some of the most beautiful nature in the country. And when a little civilization sounds good, drive downtown for unique shops, down-home eateries, and lively music venues. You don't have to go very far to get away. Just head down the road to the state's best detour. Bass Trop in the Lost Pines region. Attention taxpayers, if you've received a notice from the IRS or state, do not ignore it. It's also a big mistake to try and handle your tax problem on your own. If you owe back taxes, it's a fact that government has the power to take everything you own, including your home, business, wages, savings, and your freedom. But here's the good news. There are now government programs available to help you settle, reduce, or eliminate what you owe. But these may be limited time programs, so you have to call now. Take down this number or put it in your cell phone. 1-800-294-2339. That's 1-800-294-2339. When you call, you'll get free information from Federal Tax Relief. This free info can even help you if you have penalties, unfiled returns, a tax lien, wage garnishment, bank levy, or if you've entered into a payment plan but can't make the payments. Don't make the big mistake in thinking you can ignore or handle your tax problem on your own. Stop the collection process immediately. Call Federal Tax Relief today for free info at 1-800-294-2339. That's 1-800-294-2339. Call now. 1-800-294-2339. Diabetes, high blood pressure, anxiety meds, everyone's on them. If you're a 50-year-old male, maybe a bit porky, and you may even have type 2 diabetes, a million dollars of term insurance may only cost you about 200 bucks a month. Call Term Provider. Speak with Big Lou at 800-214-1432. Big Lou will find a term life policy for you even if you have type 2 diabetes, are overweight, or have high blood pressure. Term Provider has helped thousands of people like you who think they can't afford term life insurance. To buy a million dollars of affordable term life for you, all you need to do is call Big Lou at 800-214-1432. Lou is one of you and will make sure the scales are tipped in your favor. Call 800-214-1432. Big Lou will answer your call and work to fit you into a term life policy that you can afford. Remember, Big Lou is like you. He's on meds too. Call 800-214-1432. 800-214-1432. This week's most popular music, 23 years ago, 1993, number three, H-Town, knocking the boots, number two, Silk, Freak Me, and the number one song this week, 23 years ago in 1993, Janet Jackson, That's the Way Love Goes. Every day we hear news about high levels of hazardous chemicals, bacteria, even lead in water across the country. Do you know what's in your home's water? A Pelican water system can reduce 99% of those pollutants from your water. You'll have spring quality water from every faucet in your home. We have factory direct pricing, a 90-day money-back guarantee, and free shipping. Call Pelican now and they'll ship you a free information kit. Call 888-474-4019. That's 888-474-4019. Let's get the uh, blitz out of the way. Uh, first caller, 866-540-WFAN, to win a pair of field-level tickets to see the Rockies on the 21st. That's courtesy of Jersey Mike Subs. 
and of course the fan. Now, three world class casinos, forty shops, fifty restaurants, bars, unlimited possibilities. Of course, we're talking about Mohegan Sun in Connecticut. You have the spa, you have the golf course, you have three hundred table games, five thousand slot machines, credible poker room, ten thousand seat arena, the Wolf Den, twelve hundred room luxury hotel, great shops, great clubs. Well, it's almost a city in itself. 36 stories high, the second biggest building in the entire state of Connecticut, Mohegan Sun. Plus the Mohegan brand in the Poconos and Atlantic City. So heart-pounding action with the flip of every card. Great possibilities, unlimited excitement, unmatched entertainment, all at Mohegan Sun. Go to MoheganSun.com, MoheganSun.com to check out a Mohegan Sun, especially the home base in Uncasville, Connecticut. Here with uh, Bill Simmons. What were we just saying we were going to talk about? it. God, we just, the funniest thing is we, we we're should be a big poppy during the commercial. We should be audio. We should have the the break should be shown on like uh, we were talking about, we, were talking we about, talked about Pippin, right? And then and how about, he's the best defensive player right, since Russell. Russell. And then we're talking about Big Poppy, who's like we can't stand, but is ageless. How do you view this Big Poppy phenomena in Boston? I mean, he's he's on the short list now. There's just no question. He's Especially like what happened in 2013 with the marathon and the way he stood up and this is our effing city. Boston and strong and all that stuff. The yeah. World Series, that cemented it. And that now this farewell tour, which farewell tours, as we just saw with Kobe, just always go badly. No, that was hideous. And always yes. go in the worst way possible. But how about this guy? He's almost hitting for a cycle at 40. The guy's got 11, 10 homers and 30 RBIs. And he's on pace for like 40 homers. He's had, I mean, I actually watch Red Sox games. He's had huge hits in really when, big when moments over he? and over again. When doesn't he? And he's he's certainly the Could greatest the DH Yankees ever. forever. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it just kills the I mean, wears them out. It's just almost... Well, you've been a Yankee fan your whole life, yes, right? Yes, Has there ever been a Red Sox player that scared there's you never until been this any guy? Play, well, it's, but yeah, Manny scared me, but he never... Manny at 500 true, against Manny the Yankees. That's true, Manny was scary, yeah. But, and sort of Edgar Martinez wore the Yankees out, too. But... I have never seen anybody do this. The Yankees had a Yankee killer named Kurt Bleffrey, who was a bad player, who wanted to be a Yankee his whole life and used to basically hit 18 homers in a year and 11 be against the Yankees, okay? <laughs> right. right. And he took advantage of the porch whenever he came to town. Kurt yeah. Bleffrey was amazing. But this guy, not just homers, big homers, every big... This guy, you know, we had a call, a call up and said to me, uh, I got to ask something. We were having a debate. I'm like, go ahead. Who's a better postseason hitter, Reggie Jackson or or, or uh, Big Poppy? And I'm like, oh, Reggie Jackson. And then I look it up and say, you know what? This guy's as good as Reggie Jackson in the World Series. Oh, Reggie yeah. was all world in the World Series. This guy, if you look at his postseason, I mean, it's scary how good his postseason. He has been all world in the postseason. Yeah, they were three World Series titles, and he was awesome. <laughs> during all three postseasons. Like he, two walk-offs, only two guys in history oh have two walk-offs. Him and Bernie Williams, that's it. The only guys who have two walk-off homers in the playoffs. That's it. I mean, he's had a million big hits, whether it's the ground rule double, the home run, but it's just like it never ends. How is this guy going to retire this year? Is he serious? I, 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 he would be the first guy who retired a year too soon instead of three years too late. All right, right? When, where are we, when are we getting into uh, blasphemy? Uh-oh. In Boston, yeah, Big Poppy, Call Yastrzemski. Oh, that's not even close. Call Yastrzemski. Big, Big Poppy's bigger than Call Yastrzemski. Oh my, it's not even an argument. Carl Yastrzemski never won. Never but he's bigger than Call Yastrzemski. Won anything with Carl Yastrzemski? All right, Carl Yastrzemski is a symbol of just popping out to Greg Nettles Big, in '78. Big Poppy, Ted Williams. That's a generational thing. I think it's a conversation now. Conversation. Oh yeah. 100%. Ted Williams. Ted Williams is in like one World Series. Big, Boston Boston people want titles and results big, and wins. Big poppy Tom Brady. The the poppy conversation is bird or... That's where I'm going. I mean, I'm warming up. Big yeah. poppy Tom Brady. I, I, it's, I don't know. Big poppy or... See, see, that's the thing. It's Those are the four. Or... Bird, bird. or big poppy Brady. That's it. I think he's, I think that's the four. Right so now. generationally, now he's moved ahead of Ted Williams. No question. Ted Williams was was a prick to everybody. But I mean, they he's named a prick the, to everybody. It's the Ted. I know because they felt bad late in it, but he was you know he's he the Red Sox were never so really now that successful. Big Poppy he was is bigger than Call Yastrzemski in Boston. Bigger than oh the yes Ted thing. Williams. I mean, he's the yes thing was that happened in like two thousand four. Bigger than Ted Williams. 
I, I, it's a generational thing. Not as big as Or. Do I think Big Papi will have a tunnel named after him someday? No. I don't know. I wouldn't rule it out. Is he bigger than Or? I no, mean, Orr right? Or was like the greatest That's like biting player. your tongue. Well, he's just the greatest they hockey player. They every kid in Boston after Bobby Orr. I, 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 I don't know. I can't. I was only a you kid when we had Orr. I only remember Orr's last season. He might be a tiny bit bigger than Bird. <laughs> he might be. He might be. And it's funny. And it make it it does it does when you realize it show that Boston clearly has issues because in all of this Bill Russell never gets mentioned and Bill Russell is the most prolific winner in the history of sport. Well, I and and he is not on that list in Boston for you know if we want to say that it's racism or whatever he's not on that list. It's, in Boston. it's a complicated thing, and I actually did a special for NBA TV well, called Mr. It. Russell's You're house. You're a Boston guy, so well, I, I, I literally is it racial. I took a camera crew, we went to his house, and we talked about a whole bunch of stuff. We did an hour-long documentary about it, which is probably one of the things I'm most proud of. When we talked about all this stuff, he felt like he played for his teammates. He didn't play for the city. The city was racist to him more than a couple times. Broke into his um, house and did stuff. They, cared, I mean. they, they couldn't really sell out. It was always about all, you know, they made a big deal about they were the first team that had five black starters. They were the first team that had a black coach. And he took. He just had a lot of grudges. He took a lot of stuff personally. You think it's all fair? He wouldn't even come back when they retired his number. So, he, although he's the most prolific team athlete of all time, you know where I stand on Russell. Right. I, I think he's, he's. I had him number two in my basketball book. I think he's the greatest winner of all time. It's, he, it's him. He with never, Jordan. but he never resonated. You with could the all, city. if you put Bill Russell one, I'd have no argument with you. I'd have. I would have no argument if you said to me Bill Russell's one and Michael's two. I'd say fine. I have no problem with that. That's how good Bill Russell was. So I, I don't even have a problem with that. He just didn't resonate, and they wasn't a big basketball. Bird with Bird and Cowens no, were the ones that brought basketball to Boston, and, and Havlicek to a lesser degree. But really, the Cowens so the Havlicek Russell team, thing was just never going to connect. It, it just basketball wasn't gigantic back then, right? But you think, it, but there is a tinge of obviously racism involved in this. Oh, stuff. it was more yeah. than a tinge. A tinge it was, right, right. It, I would call it a splash. Okay, so but let's get past that for a second. But that's a different story. Big Poppy now is in the hollowed ground. Yes, with, with, with I can't I can't say who's bigger than who, but he's in that conversation. He just is. Big Poppy, Big Poppy, or Bird Brady. Just so when we most you know down here, here people are like, how can they give Big Poppy a send off? How can in Boston Big Poppy is that big? Him retiring would be that big a deal. Isn't he that big in baseball? You know, I mean, he he has well, we three look, we rings. Look, we look at a guy who. We know, we, we, see, down here we look at Big Poppy this way. Okay. Big Poppy was. Does this going to hurt my feelings? Yeah, because he was cut by the Minnesota Twins. He wasn't cut. They well, just you know, the they Red Sox signed him. him. Yeah, they dumped him. I mean, let's be honest. They he was like 25. Him. Yeah, but they dumped him. Let's be honest. The Minnesota Twins dumped him. The Red Sox smart enough to get him. George Slammer wanted to trade for him, as you know, <laughs> which was something yeah. he likes to talk about. All right, he goes there, he finds fame and fortune. Ends up he's had thing. his steroid brushes, as we know. No, we don't know what it well, was, though. Well, we believe That's, he's on that list. We all believe he's on that list. He was on the list, right. but it was a list of people that failed so, something, and it right. wasn't just steroids. It could have been amphetamines. Right, but we know he was been, on that list, and he, nev it and, some and sort he of threw something. a fit about the list. But we all believe down here, and most of baseball believes he's a steroid By guy. By the way, if okay. I was a Yankee fan, I would bring this up all the time. Yeah, I sure. get it. Right, and... He yells at official scorers, and he does stuff oh, like come on. that. Everybody loves Big Poppy. But, but the point is, so down here, they don't think, how is he that big? But you're explaining, in Boston now, you think he's actually reached that rarefied air with the icons of the city. Yeah, because first of all, we hadn't won a World Series in 86 years. He single-handedly turned 04 ALCS around. No, he did. No I mean, game four, game that, five. That the Yankees ran he, out of pitching. Yeah, well, but, yeah. but, but no, listen, they don't. Hey, listen, Big Poppy wins games four and five. I totally agree. He uh, he put the team on his back. Oh seven, it was him and Manny won the World Series. They just got hot at the same time it was over. And in two thousand thirteen, he was huge. And the marathon thing ties into it a little bit. And you know, he's been around. So 15 he's years. that big. He he's that big in that town now. You see, I think you're telling something to the audience down here because they think, man, we've overrated Big Poppy. He's us a DH and this and that. But in Boston, he's that big now. Well, the other one that got there briefly and just didn't have the years was Pedro. 
And I, I was live, I was still living in Boston when Pedro was at his apex, and that, that was at the bird or level. But he didn't have the the also years. 2003 game seven. You got to finish that if you're going to be uh, if you're going to be a god. You got to finish that game. You can't you can't yeah, let them tie the game five. That five. was after he had gotten hurt. He was never the same. After right, but he you got to let him listen. I'm a big Pedro fan. I like Pedro, yeah. but that game. You know what? You got to get out of that inning if you if, if you want to be the guy. You got to get out of that inning. I mean, that's just the way it is. I mean, that's why you like Big Poppy because he gets he gets the job done. Everyone who loved the Red Sox. Wanted Grady Little to take him out of that game when it happened. Absolutely, because we had watched him and Pedro had a certain number well, of that pitches. Game. I was him. at that game. I was. I can't go to Yankee Stadium. I was at that. I'll game. I'll go to the new one because nobody's there. And I'll tell you that rally is one of the great sequences I ever experienced. It was amazing to watch that unfold because first of all, he got unlucky. Trot Nixon misplayed the Jeter ball. Yeah, start the inning, and he got a couple of. Ha- I mean, Fasada got a handle hit. Yeah, only Bernie and Matsui hit line drives. I mean, Bernie hit a line drive that knocked in Jeter, and then Matsui cleared, hit one inside the bag, and that went for the double. But uh, I mean, that was that inning was you know such a big inning, obviously. But the next year, sitting through what I sat through, and I sat through all of Game Seven, I sat there the entire game Oof. and watched the Red Sox infiltrate the building as <laughs> the Yankee fans scattered and watched it. I sat there for all nine innings. I was at. Only game in that series I wasn't at was Game Four. It, the more I follow sports and the longer I live, I'm just convinced it's like eighty percent luck. Because like if you remember, oh four Game Four, Clark double, Clark doubles, and it doesn't. It goes over the wall. Otherwise, they win ninety nine times out of a hundred. That hits the base of and the wall win. and bounces back, and, and, and they, they get a run. And they win. But it was like we we all of a sudden started catching breaks like that. Like even like a Rod slapping the ball to yep. Bronson Arroyo. Yep. Normally that would happen, but then the umps would have missed it, and the Yankees would have gotten the call, and we, and then that starts to rally. And it was just for whatever reason, lightning in a bottle. Bill Simmons back after this. There has never been a better time to experience a new Buick, and right now, you can get great deals on 2016 Buick models in stock, like a 39-month lease on a 2016 Buick Encore for $179 per month with only $819 due at signing. That's right, a luxurious Buick Encore crossover for just $179 per month. Visit TriStateBuick.com for details. One SB model for well-qualified lessees with a non-GM lease vehicle at participating dealers. Must show proof of current lease. Your payments may vary. Tax title license and dealer fees extra. Mileage charge at $0.25 cents per mile, over 32,500 miles. Get off the highways this summer and check out the best detour in Texas. Bass Trop in the Lost Pines region is the no-hassle summer trip you need. Whether you're looking for excitement or just a place to fish, you'll find plenty of riverfront spots to fit your mood, along with some of the most beautiful nature in the country. And when a little civilization sounds good, drive downtown for unique shops, down-home eateries, and lively music venues. You don't have to go very far to get away. Just head down the road to the state's best detour. Bass Trop in the Lost Pines region. If you or someone you know is addicted to drugs or alcohol, this could be the most important message of your life. Write down this number or store it in your cell phone. But call 1-800-426-6186. That's 1-800-426-6186. By calling the treatment helpline for drug and alcohol addiction, you can turn your life around. Our advisors will match you with a proven five-star luxury treatment center that will end your drug or alcohol addiction once and for all. Your future can still be bright. When you call right now, you'll speak to a recovering addict who understands what you're going through. Let us help you break your addiction to drug or alcohol before it's too late. This call is completely confidential. And if you have private insurance, there should be no cost to you. Take five minutes of your time and call right now. It may change your life for the better. Call 1-800-426-6186. That's 1-800-426-6186. Call 1-800-426-6186. Diabetes, high blood pressure, anxiety meds, everyone's on them. If you're a 50-year-old male, maybe a bit porky, and you may even have type 2 diabetes, a million dollars of term insurance may only cost you about 200 bucks a month. Call Term Provider. Speak with Big Lou at 800-214-1432. Big Lou will find a term life policy for you even if you have type 2 diabetes, are overweight, or have high blood pressure. Term Provider has helped thousands of people like you who think they can't afford term life insurance. 
to buy a million dollars of affordable term life for you, all you need to do is call Big Lou at 800-214-1432. Lou is one of you and will make sure the scales are tipped in your favor. Call 800-214-1432. Big Lou will answer your call and work to fit you into a term life policy that you can afford. Remember, Big Lou is like you. He's on meds too. Call 800-214-1432. 800-214-1432. Attention taxpayers, if you've received a notice from the IRS or state, do not ignore it. It's also a big mistake to try and handle your tax problem on your own. If you owe back taxes, it's a fact the government has the power to take everything you own, including your home, business, wages, savings, and your freedom. But here's the good news. There are now government programs available to help you settle, reduce, or eliminate what you owe. But these may be limited time programs, so you have to call now. Take down this number or put it in your cell phone. 1-800-294-2339. That's 1-800-294-2339. When you call, you'll get free information from Federal Tax Relief. This free info can even help you if you have penalties, unfiled returns, a tax lien, wage garnishment, bank levy, or if you've entered into a payment plan but can't make the payments. Don't make the big mistake in thinking you can ignore or handle your tax problem on your own. Stop the collection process immediately. Call Federal Tax Relief today for free info at 1-800-294-2339. That's 1-800-294-2339. Call now. 1-800-294-2339. The following message contains a special offer for listeners of this station. Are you a man over 40? Are you constantly looking for the nearest bathroom? Do you wake up multiple times a night to use the bathroom? Right now, Perfect Prostate is sending out free bottles of their groundbreaking new formula to listeners of this station. Perfect Prostate formula was developed by medical doctor Mitchell Fleischer, and its ingredients have been clinically studied to reduce your frequent nighttime bathroom visits and promote healthy urine flow. Right now, preferred customers get their first bottle of Perfect Prostate absolutely free. There's nothing to lose. Perfect Prostate is guaranteed to reduce that constant urge to use the bathroom, especially at night, and promote healthy urine flow. Don't wait. Call now for your free bottle. Just pay shipping and processing. Dial 1-800-680-9617. That's 1-800-680-9617. Supplies are limited. One free bottle per household. Call now. Dial 1-800-680-9617. That's 1-800-680-9617. This is an important medical alert for anyone suffering from back or knee pain. If you or a loved one suffers from back or knee pain and have Medicare as your primary insurance, relief is now a phone call away. If you have Medicare, you may immediately qualify to receive your back or knee brace at little or no cost. We also have braces available for shoulders, ankles, and wrists. The call is free and there is no obligation. Call pain management. Management specialist at 888-302-3308. That's 888-302-3308. Do you need vision insurance because you're retired or your employer doesn't offer vision insurance? VSP Direct provides affordable individual vision plans direct to you. You'll see great savings and experience the lowest out-of-pocket cost in vision care. VSP Direct covers an eye exam, glasses, contacts, and more. Call 855-401-1432 to start your path to better vision. That's 855-401-1432. This coverage has exclusions and limitations. Call VSP Direct for details. Thanks for listening. This station is in a commercial break and we'll be back shortly. Stand by. We're in a commercial break and we'll return to your favorite station very soon. Thanks for listening. CBS Monday and Tuesday. They're always watching. A machine created to protect our lives. Artificial intelligence. It has unlimited resources. Has decided to take over our world. There is a larger power in play now. This is war. Don't miss the person of interest final chapter. We have to do something. We need to get back to work. So how do we proceed now? With extreme caution. Person of interest CBS Monday and Tuesday or stream it live or on demand. Talking with Bill Simmons, who will be uh, making his HBO uh, debut on June the 22nd, which is, I bet you know what day, it's a Wednesday, that's well, I, that's a joke, it's a Don't joke. Don't forget about the Bill Simmons podcast. The Bill Simmons Over podcast, 500,000 listeners where? every podcast. Is that good? Is that yeah. a good number? It's one of the best ones. Oh, it is? Yeah. Okay. How long have you been doing that? Um, 
Well, started ESPN since 2007. I was pretty early. And May, where does it originate from? Like, where, where, where is your main home? Right now, we're t it's either on iTunes, SoundCloud, Stitcher. It's so it could be on all these different podcasts. places? Yeah. Can you get is, podcasts? You see, here's the thing. Yeah. I've mentioned podcasts that might be in my future. Yeah. I've never, I don't know the dynamics of it yet. I've never studied how That's it works. That's why you're going to hire somebody. You're rich. Right, Just but, hire somebody to do it for you. But I don't understand the dynamics of how it works yet. I haven't, I have not gotten involved in the intricacies of that business yet. Oh, it's yet. super easy. Yeah. You, da you can download it or listen to it right away, however you want to listen to it. So, a lot of people. But the main venue for podcasts is what? iTunes? iTunes is about 65% of the traffic. Google okay. Play just got involved. Google Spotify Play. is going to get involved. Like basically, okay. wherever people listen to anything they else, they're going to have podcasts. Okay. Yeah. okay. And how many do you do a week? Uh, I'm going to cut way back when my show starts. What do you do for now? At least, uh, I'm doing like two or three a week now. And we how have, long we have like seven podcasts total on the Ringer Podcast Network. So they'll go from like... They can go 30 minutes to, mine usually go at least an hour. Are they all stream of consciousness or are they very No, I always interviews? have a guest. Oh, I, love, do. I love having somebody. I can't do, I, you're Who an Who was anomaly. your more recent guest? I've had some good ones. I had Craig Kilborn last week, which was a pretty polarizing <laughs> podcast. <laughs> we, uh, had, we had him in here one time. Yeah, <laughs> he was from Mars. You just kind of hold on. It was, you hold oh, on for was, the ride. It was strange. I Chris mean, Saka was great. <laughs> now listen. I've been here plenty of times when stuff's gone over dog head. Some of his stuff went over my head. I didn't know. Yeah. He was making music references I never heard of. I was like, <laughs> I don't know what he's talking about. <laughs> yeah, the, the most fun ones are... He kind of thought that he was like a little bigger Hollywood figure than kind of we thought he was. You know right. what I mean? It was kind of like one of those deals. Yeah. We're like, we haven't seen you in years. Like, what are you doing? You know, like, what are you kidding me? What am I doing? You know? <laughs> the, be the best one I had recently from a celebrity standpoint was Louis C.K. came on like probably okay. three, three weeks ago. And the... Those comedians are fun because they're very self, right? Introspective. They right. just always, you know, they just see things a certain way. That's cool. I try to avoid athletes for the most part. We had Draymond. Who's the, who's the one? All right, let's do this. Who's the? What person did you say? Man, this is the best. I, I am having the best time. I enjoyed this. So what's the one guy that you were just totally enthralled by? One a uh, person. Oh, Other I had say the lot. president because you did interview the president. I've I've interviewed two presidents. I've yeah. interviewed this president, but I've interviewed two presidents. It's a little you're being, you're very much on very you're very formal when you're interviewing the president. You don't want to say totally. the wrong thing. You don't want to say the wrong. You you make sure that you're very proper about everything. That's how I was. And I was talking once to a president, once to an ex-president. I still was very proper when I right. did, it, you know. He just very formal about the whole thing. But who else did who was someone that you really got into that you were interviewing that you were just enthralled by? I had um like about four weeks ago, I had this guy named Chris Sakon, who I knew a little bit, who's a billionaire, who's an angel investor. He invests in companies okay. at the early stages. So right. we just talked about where stuff's going, basically. Where did he make his money? He Hedge made fund? his money. Uh, yeah, initially he started, he was at Google. Right. Did well there, took that money and just started investing in right, stuff. Right, a hedge fund guy probably. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, okay. Um, but I, but I like the, the people that are like, here's where I think things are going and actually have real experience and thought putting into it i always find those people the most i agree i agree that's it's fa I, fascinating stuff because we're you, like the, the way the world is right now it's I unbelievable mean, it's changing content, unbelievable. all the digital stuff technology everything this is such a cool time for everything it's fat i love fascinating yeah, i, I love totally agree stuff. i mean uh, absolutely who's the one person you would like to like someone asked me that the other day is there anyone you'd like to interview before you retire and i said you know what i really would like to sit down with tiger woods i said that would be a fascinating guy because you know i like golf and i've watched his career and i think there's a lot there and never have we seen a fall from grace from someone this good to just dramatically fall at, at a young age fall like he's fallen yeah so that that's a good one is there one that would grab you that you say i always would love like i'll give you the guy dog and i used to Try to get forever. We wanted to talk to Joe DiMaggio forever. He oh, would wow. not, not do. A we tried. Yeah. We, we went to people who were his friends. We went to uh, you know people we knew in Miami in our business who were close to him. We did everything we could to get to him. He would not go grant us an interview. Oh, the, you and, know and we talked to Ted Williams. We had Ted Williams on. He was great. He was great, and he told us he was going to get us Joe DiMaggio, and yeah. he never did. 
but he told us he was going to. I went. Uh, I did a podcast a couple years ago from Lauren Michaels' office in SNL with Lauren Michaels, right. and that was. I mean, I grew up with SNL. I'm an sure. SNL baby, so that was great. I think Letterman. So did I, I watched that when it was Pellucci. That's when I loved it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I was from '78 oh, on. I missed I the quit. first three I, years. A couple of years. I see. I was there in the beginning, and then I was. Uh, but when Pellucci was let, gone, I was gone. That was it. So I think Letterman, just for people who've had a giant impact on me, I think would be would would be personally the biggest fanboy. Were you rush. religious? I, well, I was I was about about eight seven eight months after it started. That's when I started Religious, watching it. every yeah, night. Yeah. See, I watched Johnny There's Carson every it on night. VCRs. You know, I watch uh, we wa my brothers and I watched Johnny Carson Monday to Thursday. We watched Johnny Carson every night at eleven thirty. We watched Johnny Carson all He's, the time. To me, I mean. People are. It's almost like how we were talking about Poppy versus yeah. Orbit. Hey, you reach a certain level yep. and you're just there. Carson was the best at when the joke didn't work. Oh, he just he could dive better only, than anybody. He, it was almost better when it didn't work because he was funnier and oh, he just absolutely. the respect that guests had for him. Oh. And that's the thing now. Like with Letterman gone and Stewart gone, when people go on shows, there was like real deference to Letterman. Well, yeah, you know, but I think Stewart's really talented. Oh, totally. See, I think Stewart, and I don't watch a lot of those shows. I just don't find myself watching them anymore. You know, very you know, you try to watch what you can watch. You try to you know, and I I don't watch a lot of those shows anymore. I'm not. I, Letterman, I was never a watch because I watched Carson. I never got the. I right. was a real Letterman watcher, and I, I said that a couple of times when Dog used to be close with Letterman. Letterman used to get mad at me. He used to like, pound Letterman me. Got on mad the, at oh, you? He used to pound me on the show. Oh, kill me! But I was sorry. I took it. It was okay. But uh, the bottom line was, uh, uh, it happens. You know, you live with it. So, uh, but in a good natured way. Or uh, like, well, some, some, I yes, don't some. This. No. Oh, he used to kill me. I must me. have blocked oh, this out God, of my mind. Kill me like crazy. Oh my God! So uh, take my word for it. <laughs> he used to kill me. He used to, exactly. He's a just destroy me on the show. So, uh, but you know what? It, the, you know, I can see that. You know, you grow up with these kind of guys, and you know, were you a big Seinfeld guy when you grew up? Did you yeah, watch Seinfeld? I mean, I, well, Seinfeld early, early in his career used to come on Letterman all the time. Letterman in the eighties, he would have Tom Hanks, Michael Keaton, Leno, Seinfeld, all these people before they became anybody. So as their see, careers took off, I felt really attached. You to know, everybody. when I watched Letterman, so Letterman was when he was on after Johnny Carson. Remember, he used to be when he that's started. That's NBC. Yeah, yeah when he started there, that's when yeah. I first saw him. Was when he was on after Johnny. I used to see him once. On Tom Snyder used to have a show too. Remember Tom Snyder? He used yeah. to have an interview show. He was a character. It really. Letterman yeah. had his. Sec I think his second anniversary party. He used Bob Costas and Vince McMahon as announcers before. Either of them were kind of big deals. Really? But like he had very good taste in who to align himself I with. I would say. He's done, he did quite well, although he looks pretty weird now as far as I'm concerned. You see him with the beard? Well, that's, him, that's all those shit, TV man. guys, when they're done, they're boy, done. Oh boy, oh that's it. Does he look... Man, Who's he, the best athlete you've ever interviewed on this show? Or just the like that, that was the most candid and... Uh, surprisingly awesome in a way like oh my god I can't believe this guy's saying this uh, you know what I'm going to take a quick break and think about that because I, I, it's I a have good to, question it is a good question I have to think about that I mean obviously I grew up with Mickey the only person I ever idolized was Mickey Mantle so when I got Mickey Mantle on the show that was a big deal for me personally because that's my only idol growing up how was old Mickey is he? Mantle. He was, he was, well, you know, he was at his, his restaurant and yeah. he was older, but, uh, and you had to make sure you got him sober in those days. Right. This is when, before Betty but Ford. But you're talking 80s. Yeah, this is before Betty Ford. We, Dog and I had him on a show a bunch of times, but, uh, that, that was big. But, you know, I'm talking about, I'm going to tell you someone who really just, you know, knocked it out of the park. I'll think of someone when we take a break back after this. Now is the time to upgrade to professional grade with a new GMC because the pros at your Tri-State GMC dealer are offering a 36-month lease on a 2016 GMC Acadia for $269 per month with only $1439 due at signing. That's right, a GMC Acadia with three rows of seating for only $269 per month. Visit TriStateGMC.com for details. SLE 1 model for well-qualified lessees with a non-GM lease vehicle at participating dealers. Must show proof of current lease. Your payments may vary. Tax title license and dealer fees extra. Mileage charge $0.25 cents per mile over $30,000. Miles. This week in sports history. This week in 1819, the first bicycles were introduced in the U.S. The first Kentucky Derby was held this week in 1875. This week in 1900, the second modern Olympic Games opened in Paris. This week in 1933, the first Major League Baseball All-Star Game was announced as part of the Chicago World's Fair. The NFL adopted an annual college draft this week in 1935. Joe DiMaggio started a 56-game hitting streak this week in 1941. This week's most popular music, 23 years ago, 1993. Number three. H-Town, knocking the boots. Somebody rockin', knockin' the boots. 
Number two. Silk Freak Me. I wanna get freaky with you. And the number one song this week. 23 years ago in 1993. Janet Jackson, That's the Way Love Goes. WFAN, WFAN FM, New York. WFAN 2020 Sports. Good evening at 6 o'clock. I'm Bob Usler. Seven wins on a successful homestand. Now seven straight on the road for the Yankees who are in Arizona tonight. First of three with the Diamondbacks, followed by four in Oakland. The Yankees were eight and 16 on May 3rd. Since then, they have won eight of 12, and Joe Girardi in a much better mood. We're playing a lot better baseball, um, that's for sure. So, you know, we have a big road trip here, seven days, and we need to continue to play well. Um, we're swinging the bats, we're scoring runs, we're winning close games. I feel a lot better. And tonight, Girardi gives the ball to 24 year old rookie Chad Green. He's making his major league debut. Left hander Robbie Ray for the Diamondbacks. It's on the fan at 9 o'clock. Mets return home tomorrow to begin a three-game series with the first-place Nationals at City Field. And they got good news today regarding Steven Matz. No ligament damage related to the sore elbow. Still undetermined when Matz will return to the rotation. Infielder Matt Reynolds expected to get called up tomorrow. Kenny Atkinson formally introduced today as the new head coach of the Nets. And Nate McMillan will be the new head coach of the Pacers. Game 1, Western Conference Finals, Warriors and Thunder tonight in Oakland. Minnesota's Carl Anthony Towns by unanimous choice. The NBA's Rookie of the Year, Christos Porzingis for the second. This report is brought to you by DCHHonda.com, where zero down on approved credit delivers every day. Also brought to you by House of Tires in Levittown. Pick up your Michelin tires today. And by Chipotle. Chipotle taking hours to prepare and just seconds to serve. Chipotle is putting the food back in fast food, one burrito at a time. 65 degrees and mostly sunny skies at Central Park. And that's what's happening. I'm Bob Yeshler with 2020 Sports on Sports Radio 66 and on your FM Dollar 1019, your flagship station for Boomer and Carton in the morning. And Mike's on. Francis on the fan in the afternoon. CBS Friday on Blue Bloods. New York's first family of cops serves and protects. Do good work. Come back safe. For better or worse, we're the ones on the front lines. I'm committed to my job 100%. And with each other, they love and respect. What always comes first? Family. That's what the Reagans do. It's a great day for the criminal justice system. Cheers to that. Blue Bloods, CBS Friday, or stream it live or on demand. Hi there, radio listeners. I'm Stephen Colbert, and I want you to know that as the host of The Late Show on CBS, I'll be doing commercial-free Tuesdays. And, uh, hold on, what? what? Okay, I'm being told that Tuesdays will, in fact, have many commercials, maybe even more. Okay, then, then strike all that stuff. The Late Show with me, Stephen Colbert, tonight on CBS. The Late Show with Stephen Colbert, followed by The Late Late Show with James Corden, tonight, only CBS. Thanks for listening. This station is in a commercial break and we'll be back shortly. Stand by. We're in a commercial break and we'll return to your favorite station very soon. Thanks for listening. dream big kind of kid and I need a good education as a foundation to help me get where I want to go. What's time for learning homeschool? Flexible scheduling and student paced. Check online interactive curriculum. Check log in from anywhere at any time. Check. Start helping your kid dream big today and create a love of learning at timeforlearning.com. Use promo code radio to save 20% off your first month. Log on timeforlearning.com now. This is an important medical alert for anyone suffering from back or knee pain. If you or a loved one suffers from back or knee pain and have Medicare as your primary insurance, relief is now a phone call away. If you have Medicare, you may immediately qualify to receive your back or knee brace at little or no cost. We also have braces available for shoulders, ankles, and wrists. The call is free and there is no obligation. Call pain management specialists at 888-302-3308. That's 888-302-3308. 
Do you need vision insurance because you're retired or your employer doesn't offer vision insurance? VSP Direct provides affordable individual vision plans direct to you. You'll see great savings and experience the lowest out-of-pocket cost in vision care. VSP Direct covers an eye exam, glasses, contacts, and more. Call 855-401-1432 to start your path to better vision. That's 855-401-1432. This coverage has exclusions and limitations. Call VSP Direct for details. CBS Thursday. It's that moment you wake up and realize. She's nuts. They may be a little clingy. What happened to you? You're what happened to me. They may do things you really can't understand. Why would you talk about me on your dates? I think they have a right to know why I'm so broken. But you're stuck with them because this is your family. Are you insane? Yes, so be careful. Anna Ferris and Alice and Jenny star in Mom. CBS Thursday or stream it live or on demand. CBS Wednesday. It's a must-see Survivor. This is going to be the ultimate challenge. Who's got what it takes to survive on the island? I'm a competitor. It's brains versus brawn versus beauty. Nobody is taking advantage of me in this game. In the most punishing ah! medical medical season ever. I'm gonna make it man. We're right here with you, all right? I had to do the hurt so bad. All right, we're going to have an evacuation. Oh, my God. New Survivor, CBS Wednesday, or streaming live or on demand. Make a man pay. Are you behind on your taxes? The IRS is the largest and most aggressive collection agency in the world, and they can seize your bank account, garnish your paycheck, close your business, and file criminal charges. Tax Mediation Services is accredited by the Better Business Bureau. Our team of tax attorneys and enrolled agents can stop collections and get you protected. If you owe over $10,000 in back taxes or have unfiled tax returns, call now for a free case review and a price protection guaranteed quote at 800-930-0972. 800-930-0972. First of all, you're surprised you made it all these hours, huh? You made it from 1 o'clock. Put, your, put this mic on, Chris. There you go. Pop them up. All right. Now, uh, are you yeah, this surprised is you made it? Huh? I'm not surprised at all. all right. I knew we'd have fun. Six hours. You've been here now. Going, this is it. We're now we're, we're on the home stretch here. I right? know I'm doing anything, well. Anything else you want? Yeah, it's going very no, fast. No, I know I'm doing well because you've only had one Diet Coke. You didn't, need to, you didn't need caffeine. Not, I, I was your natural caffeine Not today. only that. Not only that. But you can always tell. If the show goes really fast, it's just a great it's indicator. A good sign. If you're looking up at three o'clock, you're saying, "Oh my God, what am I doing? I, I got to change the, <laughs> the pace of this sucker." You know, and there are days like that. You know, you do. You just got to change the whole thing, and that hasn't happened one time. All right, well, that's because you won't have co-hosts. Now, if you had co-hosts, maybe nah, it would happen more nah, often. Nah, nah. You know, you, Wait, can you I say one thing? Your, you got to pick your spot. Your listeners have to have to hear this. Go ahead. You told me you you briefly thought about writing a book, and you talked yourself out of it. Yeah. I think your listeners, who are all very uh, available and and supportive on uh, on various social media platforms, if you would want to read a Mike Francesa book, now is the time to start nudging him socially. Yeah, you know, I, I, don't, I don't, I don't see it. I tell you, what I what tell I, all your stories. You can tell the Howard you, Hughes. What I said stories. to you was uh, that um, I've had a couple of offers recently, but recently a guy came to me and you know uh we have a guy here who who does ha- works in the book business and uh he came to me and said you know I know that agent and the agent called me and said listen I've been sent to bring you an offer yeah and blah 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 and I mean it was a realistic offer I mean and it's a big company I don't want to say which one it is uh I don't want to say which one it is because it's not Right, our company. There's only Simon. four. There's only well, four book companies. Is, our, is in our. Yeah. Is in so it's one company. of the other three. Yeah, it was one of the other three. So, and the, the bottom line is, I, I said, you know what? And they said, and number one, you have to locate a writer because either I had to do it yourself. Now I don't even know if I'd be capable of doing it, and I want to do something really something the writer's really easy. good. The question is, how candid would you want to be, and number what kind one. of stories would you want to tell? That number one. Parcells Craft is a chapter. No, I Jimmy see, the Greek's no, a chapter. Not, see, no, you see, but you can't. You, you and Dog is three chapters. Oh my God! Summer '94 is a chapter. We're writing yeah. the book. Just yeah. do it. I, I don't see it. I, Growing I don't up see it. as you Brent, know, there's two reasons. You got to do a million appearances afterward. You know, it's funny. You can control. Do you know that how part. I got in the business? How I got in this business was. I was working at, at CBS, and John Walsh from ESPN 
who I'm sure in your yeah. travels you met John, right? Uh, he was yeah, only he the is. person that brought me and was okay. my mentor there for a number well, of years. John and I, as you know, um, I may not know, John and I go back to the days of Inside Sports with Pete Axelm, Pete Bonaventure. My, my favorite magazine. Okay. That's why John Walsh loves me, because I, I love did, Inside Sports. I did work for Inside Sports. Okay, You did? Yeah. What did you do? I did like a bunch of stuff. Like writing previews Yeah, and stuff? I, I wrote some stuff for them, and, you know, they had a bunch of feature writers like Axelm and big fancy yeah, yeah. guys, but I did some I did some articles Early Tony Kornheiser. Yes, Ernie Tony, and uh, a guy named... Gary wrote, Smith was and a guy, on there? And a guy named, uh, if I remember, like, uh, wrote a lot of uh, big takes, uh, well, he loved Gary Smith, but Gary Smith was already doing stuff I know forever from Sports Illustrated. But I think guy's name was uh, Fussman, Cal Fussman. Oh, Cal Fussman. He yeah, wrote yeah. a lot of big takes. Yeah. You know, they had him and a bunch of other guys. And Peter Von Ritchie, who I knew very well, was the other editor. And, well, when that went out, John was looking for something to do. And, you know, they finally pulled the plug on it. It wasn't, do, you know, it never, it never took off the way they had hoped. Newsweek put a lot of money into it. It was great. A lot of money. It was great, but it didn't take yeah. off, okay? So uh, it was against Sports Illustrated. It didn't take off. Bottom line is, uh, after a couple of years, John basically came to me and said, listen, I'm going to, I got a project to do a book called Inside Football with Peter Axelm and me. I got to do the colleges. Pete did the pros. And we did the book for a couple of years. And John edited it. Yeah. Called Inside Football 83, Inside Football 84. He did the, it, it had a gambling segment to it. It had mm. a college analysis for the season, pro analysis. Pete wrote the pros. I wrote the college. And I did a couple other things on different player things for the pros. This is a filibuster for why you don't, why you're not going to write no, a book. No, no, this is how I started the business. What happened? No, is I know, but Pete we want you to write a book. Pete though. wouldn't. Pete wouldn't make any appearances. Yeah. Okay. Now Pete was Pete, so I had to do all the appearances. So I had to do a million appearances. I'm the little old guy on the totem pole. I'm in with Axelm, who was at the time a huge star, you know, at the yeah. time, a big one of the top writers in the country. So I'm the guy who had to do the appearances. So I do the radio shows, and I had to do a bunch of radio shows. So I come out of the radio shows, and if I was traveling with CBS, I'd do the radio show in that city, or I'd do them here in New York. And, you know, other ones I'd do by phone. But I came away a couple of times, more than a couple, and said, boy, you know what? Man, that guy, I'm better than that guy who's doing, you know, who was right. doing a radio. Well, then I had thought about that. Boy, you know, I think I could do that, you know, pretty well. And, you know, I ran into a bunch of different people, some of which I still know, uh, who were working in the, as producers at that time or working at talent at that time. So, uh, that's, and so make a long story short, I was on a plane and, uh, with our regular CBS crew and we were going to Dallas and, I read in the paper, I said, look at this, sports talk in New York. 24-7 station. And I showed Pete it Franklin. to Brent Musburger. He was sitting next to me, and I said, he said, you would be perfect doing that. And I said, it's funny you say that, because I went and did this with the books, and I really thought that I could, I could really do that. I thought yeah. it really fit in who I am. And so that's how it started. That's when I... Were you on in the first day, or were like in the not. first year? I was on... Uh, I, I, they wouldn't give me a show because they said they were bringing in the biggest guys in the country who were established. Jim Lampley. Lampley, Pete Franklin, et yeah. cetera. Uh, they Pete gave Franklin me a weekend work. show starting in... It, it, the first month it was ever started, they, started I, they gave me a weekend show. And then they let me sit in for Pete on Thanksgiving. And after that, Pete was out a lot, Lampley was out a lot, a couple other guys were out a lot, and I wound up getting a lot of fill-in work and the rest is history. But the point is... The reason I got into it was doing the book with John Walsh and Pete Axelm. That's so the a, book tour, when you realized you were better than some of the bingo, schmucks that were interviewing you, that's true you story. knew it. True so story. now come full circle, yes. do a book, do so one last book tour, and you can if, still keep If advice. I can get Axelm back to write it, and I can get Walsh to edit it, I'll do it. <laughs> uh, let me get these two spots out of the way, right. then we'll finish up with Bill. It's finally getting warmer outside, uh, but the 2016 Hondas from Bay Ridge Honda have been super hot from the moment they were introduced. Like the all-new, aggressively styled 2016 Honda Civic, sporting a fierce new shape and distinctive cut lines, the 10th generation Civic has never looked better or created more customer excitement. And then there's the, there's the 2016 Honda Accord named Car and Drivers, 10 best lists 
30 times based on car and drive in November 2015. The Honda Accord is also the Insurance Institute for Highway Safety pick for 2016. Bay Ridge Honda complements these great Honda vehicles with their award-winning night owl service. Open the customers till midnight, Monday through Friday, 9 to 3 on Saturday. Bay Ridge Honda located at 4th Avenue and 88th Street, Bay Ridge, Brooklyn. Or you can visit them online at bayridge.com. Come on in and find out what excitement is all about at Bay Ridge Honda, where they've been providing customers with the ultimate car buying experience for over half a century. Bay Ridge Honda. Now, Green, pa Green Path Electric Bikes, number one electric bike company in the tri-state area, has the largest selection of uh, legal electric bikes. Green Path has over 15 different brands, dozens of vehicles. They have uh, folding bikes, street bikes, mountain bikes, cruisers. Visit their store at 4202 Third Avenue in Brooklyn, right across from the BQE. Near the subway, go to GreenPathBikes.com. That's GreenPathElectricBikes.com. Mention this ad and get a free extended service contract for three years. Back Here's after, the, wait a second. We'll be right back right okay. after this. There has never been a better time to experience a new Buick, and right now, you can get great deals on 2016 Buick models in stock, like a 39-month lease on a 2016 Buick Encore for $179 per month with only $819 due at signing. That's right, a luxurious Buick Encore crossover for just $179 per month. Visit TristateBuick.com for details. One SB model for well-qualified lessees with a non-GM lease vehicle with participating dealers. Must show proof of current lease. Your payments may vary. Tax title license and dealer fees extra. Mileage charge of $0.25 cents per mile over 32,500 miles. Getting engaged will be one of the most exciting times of your life, and the winning team at 2 by London is there to help you pop the big question. The trained professionals in cutting-edge technology at 2 by London can help you pick or design the absolute perfect ring. So whether you're starting out or starting over, let 2 by London help you out. Visit 2 by London today at the Americana Manhasset or at their brand new location in East Hampton. Get off the highways this summer and check out the best detour in Texas. Bass Trop in the Lost Pines region is the no-hassle summer trip you need. Whether you're looking for excitement or just a place to fish, you'll find plenty of riverfront spots to fit your mood, along with some of the most beautiful nature in the country. And when a little civilization sounds good, drive downtown for unique shops, down-home eateries, and lively music venues. You don't have to go very far to get away. Just head down the road to the state's best detour. Bass Trop in the Lost Pines region. Attention taxpayers, if you've received a notice from the IRS or state, do not ignore it. It's also a big mistake to try and handle your tax problem on your own. If you owe back taxes, it's a fact the government has the power to take everything you own, including your home, business, wages, savings, and your freedom. But here's the good news. There are now government programs available to help you settle, reduce, or eliminate what you owe. But these may be limited time programs, so you have to call now. Take down this number or put it in your cell phone. 1-800-294-2339. That's 1-800-294-2339. When you call, you'll get free information from Federal Tax Relief. This free info can even help you if you have penalties, unfiled returns, a tax lien, wage garnishment, bank levy, or if you've entered into a payment plan but can't make the payments. Don't make the big mistake in thinking you can ignore or handle your tax problem on your own. Stop the collection process immediately. Call Federal Tax Relief today for free info at 1-800-294-2339. That's 1-800-294-2339. Call now. 1-800-294-2339. Diabetes, high blood pressure, anxiety meds, everyone's on them. If you're a 50-year-old male, maybe a bit porky, and you may even have type 2 diabetes, a million dollars of term insurance may only cost you about 200 bucks a month. Call Term Provider. Speak with Big Lou at 800-214-1432. Big Lou will find a term life policy for you even if you have type 2 diabetes, are overweight, or have high blood pressure. Term Provider has helped thousands of people like you who think they can't afford term life insurance. To buy a million dollars of affordable term life for you, all you need to do is call Big Lou at 800-214-1432. Lou is one of you and will make sure the scales are tipped in your favor. Call 800-214-1432. Big Lou will answer your call and work to fit you into a term life policy that you can afford. Remember, Big Lou is like you. He's on meds too. Call 800-214-1432. 800-214-1432. Either. All right, we're back finishing up with uh, Bill Simmons, who his show will begin uh, on a Wednesday night because that makes sense since it's in the title, and it will begin on June the twenty second. We'll be looking for you. Want to give me any little tidbits about the first guest? Who's it going to be? I can't say that yet. Do you know who it is? Um, Have you decided? We decided. Truth. Yes. You? Who's we? 
with uh, my, me and my whole team. You don't live there. Listen, let's be honest. I have this, a whole team. This is a monarchy. No, it's like me and I don't my whole team. Way. There's only no. one decision. No, no, I, I like to. You I make like decisions. I like consensus. That's what Grantland was built. The Ringers like that. This TV show. You would make like this that. by yourself. No, I I try I I trust people with stuff like this. See, I'm a little different. I'd make I'm, I'm I like to make my decisions. That's it. I'm just gonna go with my. I'll take all the blame too, though. I take all the blame, but I like to make my. I'm decisions. like that in some ways, but with something like this, I'd want everybody to agree on it. So, Wait, we never talked about Phil Jackson. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. So, the question is: Do you like is, Phil Jackson? I like him. I I wrote a column that I really liked about him once. Like, you, I, have you the last been around Phil Jackson? Yeah, I had at all? lunch with them. Okay. I, I think I like the way his brain works. And I genuinely think he didn't want to do, I don't think he want to work anymore. And I think Dolan went to him and just offered him a crazy deal for a crazy amount of money and took it. And the fact that well, there could, was, a, I think there was some, you know, uh, intermediaries who may have set it up. Oh, you know there definitely mean? was. I, I've talked about it. It was Irving Azoff. He set him up. He brokered it, the whole thing. Okay. But, well, that's, yeah. And I think Dolan and needed the true. credibility and Dolan and thought true. he was getting Phil he Jackson. He put two guys together and thought it was a good deal. Yeah. And you're not just getting Phil Jackson. You're getting the history of the Knicks. You're getting Bill Bradley and Willis Reed and all this. And that people. goes back to Red Holtzman, which is his beloved coach who really he's had a tie to his whole life. He loves Red Holtzman. Right. Right. So. I'm not positive Phil works that hard, and um, well, but with that, is that, GM, isn't that a knock on Phil? If he came here, why did he come here if he didn't want to work? Well, hard? I think he talked himself See, into it. One thing it. about Pat Riley, he still works his rear. Pat end Riley off. works his butt off. He does. Pat he Riley cares. has opinions. He cares. Yeah. He goes to college games and he does stuff. And See, I, I'm afraid, and I agree with you. And this is where I got a. I have a bit. I admit this. Phil Jackson hasn't given me the right time since he's been here. I'll be the first to admit that. So, right. so, and I'm not holding a grudge. I didn't ask him to, so I'm not holding any grudge. But what I'm saying from a distance, and this is from a distance, because people think, oh, because I have some friends at the garden, you know, uh, that people I know at the garden that they think, oh, you know what's going on. First of all, I don't know what's going on. Secondly, when I've been around Phil Jackson, he hasn't said boo to me. So that doesn't bother me at all. But what I want to see is I want to get the feeling that he cares and I'm having trouble right now, from my vantage point, thinking that Phil cares a whole lot. Well, I don't understand how you could even consider making Kurt Rambis your coach. I don't th Kurt Rambis I, was I, I think atrocious it's a in Minnesota. It's, it's like a non-starter, and he hasn't done it yet, so I haven't gone off on it. But I'm telling you, it's a non-starter. I don't understand be. why they gave Carmelo a no-trade clause. I never would have done I that I wouldn't in even a million have years. Him, so I already said that. I'm already um, in record. I was on record at the time. Not to, I did not want to sign him. And the reality is, if Philly took Porzingis at three... And Okafor dropped to four, and the Knicks took Okafor, who would have been okay, but not Porzingis. I think the Knicks fans would be freaking out. I think Porzingis bought Phil like hey, three years. Porzingis, the Knicks fans love Porzingis, and they should. They He's should. awesome. He's going to be tremendous. Yeah. Porzingis has a chance to be a great player, an absolute stone great player. I mean, an all-league player. He has a chance to be that if he stays healthy and he grows as we think he will. And you're right. Phil got the right guy. And give him credit for that because you know what? You know, he could have screwed it up. Could have screwed he, it up. It was right. a great pick. He didn't. But kudos to him. That's not enough for five. That's no, not enough. My thing is. And he's already messed up on a coach once. Now, he wanted Steve Kerr. And for whatever reason, and I know you're close to Steve Kerr. I'm not. I know Steve Kerr since he was in college, but I wouldn't call myself close to him. But, I, I wouldn't. I'm okay. friends with him. I'm okay. not close to them. Yeah. So I don't know why he chose not to come. I well, mean, the Knicks didn't have enough assets, and he was smart. Is that why? And he looked at the well, Warriors. That's really smart. And that, he looked at Steph Curry and Clay idea. Thompson and great owners. And that the was whole a smart thing. idea. I think if the Knicks don't trade Carmelo and tank 2017 and try to rebuild around cap space and young guys, I think that would be insane not to do that. You just have to. What do you? By the time they turn all this around, Carmelo is going to be past his prime, and then what happens? It, but it, they it, don't have a choice because they give him a no trade clause. So unless well, let me start with the first thing. They cannot make he cannot make Kurt Rambis the coach. It cannot. Well, that's that is just telling everybody we're tanking. Carmelo right. is going to basically play twenty games this year, and you can't say anything because we have your season ticket money already. They can't do that. <sighs> And I think there's a feeling, and I, I, I can't dismiss it, nor do I condone it yet, the, the the prevailing wisdom that he just basically is mailing it in. And frankly, I, I don't know if he is or he isn't, but I can see why people think he is. It made me nervous that he went on vacation yeah. when he didn't have a coach, and then all of a sudden some good coaches, like Frank Vogel's a good coach, Dave well, Yeager was a good coach. Yeah, there, I, there were reports he met with him, and I don't even know if those are accurate or not. There were people reporting that they know he met with him. I don't know if they've confirmed it. I don't think they have yet that, that they met with him, but it sounds like people know he met with him. 
the, you know what? That's a step in the right direction. They need a real coach here. That, that's it. They need a real coach. They cannot bring a Rambus in here. I, I think it's a disaster. And if you if were the that. new coach, would you be confident? Wouldn't you tell Phil Jackson, I'll do this, but are you going to be here in a year? Are you going to be here in two years? Like, how do I have any assurances that there's not some new GM well, a year from now? Uh, uh, that's what, what about Carmelo? Can yeah. we get him out of his no trade clause? Like, there's a lot of what questions. team am I taking over? I agree. But you know what? It's a Knicks. And you got Porzingis. I take that job because I got Nixon. And Por- I got Madison Square Garden and Porzingis. That's a start. And Porzingis literally is the all-time best stretch five that's oh, ever been created. He's got a, a seven-foot-three guy who could shoot twenty-five footers and protect the rim. It's like God put him on earth hey, for basketball. This right guy now, guy can do anything, and he's tough. Uh, he, he's, he's like a tough. little bit of a badass. Hey, he can. He fits the city. He's got the right personality. He could be. He could own. He could own oh, the city. He, if but he, you got to put a team around him. He's Agreed. He's and a, you got to put a decent point guard. I mean, the real story of the Knicks last year was they had no, the most atrocious guards. guards. That's a joke. They've been beat <laughs> of off the time. dribble by every guard in the history. Oh, my God. Of, Sasha guard. Abused. Abused. It abused. was abused. terrible. Like, get a real point guard. New York is a city that loves its point guards. Get somebody who's competent. See, here it is. We didn't get it all in in five and a half hours. I know. We're done and we didn't get it all in. I know. Well, well then we left some stuff on the table during the breaks, too. Right. Well, listen, maybe you'll have to come on before, you know, in June and promote one more time. When you know who the show is, you have to come back and tell us about the first show. I want to come in during football season anytime. after when I have a break. Hey, anytime. I would love to do it. Anytime. This was so much fun. Thanks. And honestly, I knew it was going to be great. I knew we'd Thanks. have a good time, but this was a, a barrel Pleasure. Less. Thanks for Dog's coming in. still the best. That's it. Thanks for coming in, though. I appreciate it. You did a great job. I appreciate job. it, Thank you. Thank you. Bill Simmons, we'll see you tomorrow. Yankee baseball tonight. They play at 940. Pre-game will start a half hour before.